recently, uh, a couple of times actually in his uh, uh, fights against Anthony Joshua. He did uh, a fantastic job. Um, I mean, he is one of the pound for pound best boxers in the world. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, he deserved those victories. He beat Joshua. Um, I think he is a real problem for Tyson Fury, even if Tyson Fury doesn't want to admit that. Uh, I think he is a problem. I, I don't know. It's hard to know quite what would happen if Fury and Usyk were to face each other. It's a fight that I definitely hope to see. Um, and, you know, uh, there was uh, big talks that that could have happened uh, at the end of this year. Um, Usyk wants some time away, which I think is really understandable considering uh, how intensive he had to train for Anthony Joshua. But not only that, um, everything that's going on in the Ukraine as well. So we know that we're not going to see Usyk until next year. The winner of this fight, as a result, becomes the interim WBO champion. And uh, they will be next in line to face Usyk when he is ready to return. Now, it might not be immediate. Uh, these kind of interim belts and mandatory challenges, they can get kicked into the long grass uh, quite often. So it's not as if as soon as he comes back, he will immediately have to face the winner of this. But the winner of this is right in the title picture. And um, yeah, that, that's why this matters. So it's quite a big fight, this one. Um, and it's uh, a British guy taking on um, uh, Joseph Parker from uh, New Zealand and uh, Joe Joyce from uh, the UK, still undefeated. Um, he is actually 37 now. He turned 37 a couple of uh, days ago. He's 14 and 0. He's got uh, 13 knockouts, but there's quite a few question marks around him. This is his biggest test. Um, the thing with Joe Joyce is he's just a big lump of a man, basically. Uh, from a boxing point of view, he's not the most technical. He's not the most skilled. Um, what he is, is he's someone that can take a punch and throw a punch. Uh, he is a real back-to-basics kind of a guy. He likes to, his conditioning is insane. Likes to keep moving forwards, um, putting pressure on people. He also relies a lot on his chin. So we should see some big shots in our main event, Joe Joyce will be hoping that he can absorb those. Basically, give me the best that you've got. I will take it, and then I'm going to demoralize you, basically. You will you will start to doubt yourself. If you throw everything you've got at Joe Joyce, and he just keeps moving forwards, uh, that is how he really gets into the head of a lot of his opponents. Um, and that's what I think we could see. We could see uh, Joseph Parker throw in, land in, not getting any success. As the rounds go by, we've seen that Joe Joyce, his conditioning is fantastic. He doesn't slow down. He just keeps coming. And so um, I could see uh, Joseph Parker doing really well in the early stages of the fight. And then as things continue, I think you will start to see Joe Joyce start to come through. Um, now, how, when that change happens, I don't know. Could it be six rounds each? Could it go decision? Could it be a draw? The only thing I would say is that this is taking place um, in Manchester. And, um, well, you we have to be honest, the judges are the judges. You know, home advantage is a very real thing. Um, if this was taking place in New Zealand, I would say the same thing. I think um, where you uh, have a fight uh, being staged, I think that's really important. So if it does go the distance... I have to think that's a big advantage for Joe Joyce. So my official prediction is that I'm going to go with Joe Joyce. I think Joe Joyce is going to win it. I don't know if he gets a late stoppage or if it's going to be that he wins by decision. But my my pick is I think Joe Joyce is going to get it done. Um, the only thing I would say is that uh, Joseph Parker has obviously been training with Tyson Fury. And that's really interesting. He's been doing that for a little while now. I mean, if you've got the opportunity to train with arguably, probably the best heavyweight in the world right now, um, that's got to be an advantage. So what little tricks, what little skills, what are we going to be seeing from Joseph Parker that, uh, you know, we maybe haven't seen before? So uh, just a few things to keep uh, your eyes on there. Just a few things for you to be aware of. Uh, we will jump into the chat. 
and uh, chat with uh, you guys. The show doesn't start for another 10 minutes. Then there's quite a few undercard fights, and uh, we will be paying those attention because as well tonight, it's a good card, actually. It's a really good card. We've got Amanda Serrano, um, big fan of Amanda Serrano. My favorite fight of the year is still Serrano against Taylor. So we've got her on the uh, co-main. Uh, we've got uh, Esuman. Uh, we've seen Esuman fighting before. Um, I believe he was on the undercard to Fury against Dillian White. So uh, we are going to be seeing uh, Eku Esuman. So uh, someone that we have watched before. Um, and there's a couple of uh, fights that look kind of interesting on the undercard. So, yeah, we are going to be paying attention to those. Obviously, it's Joe Joyce, Joseph Parker, where the main topic of conversation is going to be. But, um, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll go wherever we need to go. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. And uh, if you want to talk UFC, if you want to talk WWE, if you want to talk other boxers, uh, we can uh, cover all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be a, f a different evening. Uh, no UFC this week. So it is literally just all aboard the boxing train. So uh, it's nice. I do like these Saturday streams. They are a different flavor. And it is nice when you do wrestling, 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 wrestling all week to kind of get to a Saturday and then go, oh, okay, a bit of cage fighting or, oh, some boxing or whatever it might be. So, yeah, I am looking forward to this. This is going to be good. This is a fight that I must admit I was a bit worried I was going to miss because we are also doing the Mayweather fight tonight, So, uh, which is going to be an absolute disgrace. Uh, I believe it's three rounds and he's taking on an MMA fighter in a boxing uh, contest. Um, and we're going to watch it. I don't really know why. I think it's just because it's Mayweather and I'm just, it's something to do. So, yeah, we're going to uh, watch that. But I expect it to be a disgrace. I expect at the end to feel like I've been ripped off. Um, but there's big talk. And actually, even Mayweather himself has said that Deji is next. So there might be some eyes on this as a lot of Deji fans want to watch Mayweather, maybe for the first time. You have to remember there's a lot of people that, um, you know, weren't around when uh, Mayweather was actually in his prime. A lot of youngsters that, uh, you know, might have heard of the name but never actually seen him compete. So uh, who knows? There might be some people checking him out to see what Deji has got coming his way. And, um, yeah, um, you know, again, some up fun to do later. So we're going to do uh, this. And then as soon as this is done, I think there's a couple of hours uh, in between, which is good. Uh, I might try and get a little nap. And then uh, we'll come back and do uh, Mayweather. So there we go. Uh, Mr. Meme said, did you see there's a 17 year old that hacked Rockstar Games and leaked GTA 6 and he is now in jail? Wow, I didn't see he was in jail. I didn't see he was in jail, but I did hear that it was like a 16 year old from the UK. So uh, I did hear about it. Um, it's pretty wild, isn't it? Pretty wild. Uh, I don't know quite how he managed to achieve that. You say he hacked in. So it's not like he was like working there as like, you know, a temp, like a colleague, a seasonal colleague or anything like, I, I don't know. It's difficult. I, I, don't, I can't really say that it's the right thing for him to have done, but I can understand people like having like lost their patience, if you will. There's not really too much to distract people. Is there if you're into Grand Theft Auto? Because I can't even remember when Grand Theft Auto 5 came out. I mean, it must be about seven years ago or so. I know there's an online game, but who, who gives a flip about that? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a long time since the fifth one. So, yeah, I mean, look, I can understand why someone would be poking around, uh, seeing what they could find. I'm not saying it's correct or the right thing to do. I'm just saying I can understand why they'd be looking. Uh, David Paul said, I want to talk about the debut on Rampage last night. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know what I don't know what it is, but uh, tell me what what is it, and uh, uh, we can talk about it. Um, White Rabbit video says uh, Jaden. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I, I, there's been a few theories that have come out, but actually not as many as I thought. What I thought was that I would wake up today and I'd be like bombarded with like loads of theories about this new one, but. To be honest, uh, there's not been as many theories around this new clue as what I saw for the last one. 
So um, I then started to think like, okay, what could I do white rabbit wise today? Because I did want to do a video today. Uh, and then I thought, well, I could do a video talking about who I think the suspects are. And so I wrote down a load of names and I wrote down reasons as to why. And that's kind of as far as I got. So there is a chance that I could finish that, flesh that out in between the two streams. Uh, there is uh, definitely a chance that I could do that. But I think at the moment, what I'm going to do as well is just gather up any good theories that are out there and just chuck them all into tomorrow's stream. So there is a white rabbit stream tomorrow. Uh, that has not changed. As I said, it will be around about six Eastern um, kind of time which is going to be about 11 UK time and we'll do a good hour on it. So that's, that's my plan for that. Uh, James said it was a great mooter and he saved Sting from a beatdown. Oh, I did see that. Uh, David said great mooter debut during Sting's match. I did see, I saw the announcement actually of that, that he was going to be on the retirement. He's, he's going to do his retirement match, isn't he? So, um, yeah, that one, unfortunately, did get a little spoilt. But, um, yeah, fun. Good. Fun. I mean, great. Um, it's just a shame it was taped, to be honest. Um, I, did, I didn't see any results, but I did see Great Muta was trending, and I saw that Sting was um, involved with his retirement match but i i didn't really look too much into it the right the white rabbit stuff to be honest has just absolutely dominated my week this week and uh, i can imagine that being the case uh, going forward as well uh edward said there are rumors that mayweather mcgregor 2 could happen in 2023 i i i don't think they are i mean connor has come out and said not interested so it's something that floyd wants to do um, he said that he's open to it being professional or an exhibition, but he would want it to be an exhibition. But uh, Connor came out and was like, hashtag not interested. Connor seemingly doesn't want to do it. Now, money talks. Money definitely talks. So could that change? Absolutely. I mean, how many times has uh, McGregor retired and then come back out of retirement? So, um, yeah, McGregor changing his mind is, you know, that that happens all the time. So I, I, I'm i certainly not ruling it out. But by the sounds of it, we've got the fight tonight with um, uh, Asakura, I believe his name is. Uh, so he is an MMA fighter who fights over in Japan. He's Japanese. Uh, he's got a record of like 16 and 3 in MMA, but he's never had a boxing, professional boxing, or even an exhibition uh, boxing contest. So this is going to be a massacre, basically. It's it's arguably the greatest or one of the greatest boxers of all time taking on someone that has never had a boxing contest. So, uh, I mean, obviously, he's got a bit of boxing training that he uses in MMA, but MMA boxing is very different to boxing boxing. So it's going to be a flipping massacre. So um, it could be quite beautiful, actually. I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm quite looking forward to the destruction I'm quite looking forward to seeing he's got three rounds to go in there and, you know, do whatever he wants to do. I, I don't know if he's just going to carry the kid for three rounds, just like he did really with Logan Paul, or if he is going to really put his foot down and, you know, he just keeps saying this is easy money. He just keeps bragging about how easy this is. Um, and he said it's legalized bank robbery. That's how uh, Mayweather has called it. So... Yeah, I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like tonight is just a sham. I will be the first to admit that, right? I'll be the first to admit that it's a sham, right? But I'm not too worried about it because it's just so much fun on a Saturday night. And then we uh, are going to get Mayweather and Deji. He, apparently, it's going to happen in Dubai, and it's going to happen in November. And uh, Mayweather actually said that in an interview the other day. So even though it's not been announced, announced... He has pretty much confirmed it. So, yeah, uh, that's 2022 done for Mayweather. Uh, and we will definitely do that fight. Definitely do that fight. Some, I mean, there's some really, really big contests coming up. Massive contests coming up. I mean, it looks like uh, Spence Crawford is on the horizon. 
it looks like um, Fury Joshua is on the horizon. Uh, it looks like uh, Deji against Mayweather, which, I mean, look, I know Deji is just not a boxer or, you know, I mean, he's not uh, someone that people are going to take too seriously, but it's a massive contest. I mean, actual numbers wise, that, that could be like one of the biggest of the year. It's 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 a massive contest. Deji's got a massive following. All the KSI fans will tune in to support Deji. Deji's got his own fans as well. Mayweather's obviously got his own fans. Like, it's, that's a big deal. That is a big, big deal. And then obviously, you know, you've got some real juicy UFC stuff as well that's happening. So there's there's quite a few things coming up uh, till the end of the year. It's pretty hectic. And, you know, for lols, let's chuck a World Cup in there as well, shall we? There's a, a World Cup that's going on also. So who knows? I mean, when England win that, the final, the stream of the final that we'll do, we'll just do like record breaking numbers. Imagine that England winning the World Cup and we stream it like it's going to be amazing. Can't wait for uh, can't wait for the end of the year. Uh, they are putting the best fighter in the world against Floyd Mayweather, says uh, Lord Doo Man. Kevin said, at what point do we expect Ric Flair to fight in one of these gimmick boxing pay-per-views? since he obviously can't retire from competition. I don't think he'd do that, to be honest. I don't think he would do that. Um, I don't think he should do anything anymore. I mean, that last fight was a mess. It was a mess. There was a couple of moments in there, in that last Ric Flair uh, match that I thought just, there, were, there was just a couple of moments that just, you saw, you saw like the original Ric Flair. You saw the guy you wanted to see. The, the one in particular is when he faked the heart attack. He, he was at ringside and he was like, and he held on to the barricade and like people were genuinely concerned. And uh, Jeff Jarrett came over, he pokes him in the eye. I mean, he's the dirtiest player in the game. And, uh, you know, it's just little things like that were pretty cool. But most of it was him lying on the floor, passing out. That was, and I'm not even exaggerating, like he passed out twice during the match. And I think he was drunk. So, uh, yes, in fact, he was drunk. I know he was drunk. Uh, he said next time he'll drink more water than beer before uh, before starting the, the, the match. So, yeah, I don't think he should go anywhere near uh, any, any competition. Uh, the coverage has started, by the way. If you are just joining us, we are doing Joyce Parker. We're doing the undercard as well. Uh, we've just got David Hay on screen at the moment. Uh, ring walks are expected to be in around about four hours for our main event. So it is a bit of a long road, but actually not as long as usual. Normally on a Saturday, we are here for like six, seven, maybe even eight hours. So the fact that we're sat here and in four hours time, we've got uh, the main event is actually not that long. So, uh, but as I said, you know, I, I'm quite happy going off talking wrestling, talking uh, UFC, talking other boxing, talking whatever you want to talk but. Uh, I will try and keep dragging it back to Joseph and um, uh, Joe Joyce, uh, Joe Joseph Parker and Joe Joyce. Um, but yeah, there's uh, it's a good fight. This it's a it's a big. It matters as well. This isn't just two guys just having a scrap. This is for the WBO interim winner of this will face Usyk and uh, Joe Joyce, fourteen and oh, He's thirty seven years old. Um, he's kind of getting to the point where he's got a couple of years left in the sport. He needs to move now, needs to get this. Don't know how many other opportunities will come his way. Joseph Parker's actually only 30. He's took a lot of damage, though. He's had 32 professional boxing fights. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of wear and tear. He is a former, I think, WBO champion. And, um, yeah, again, he is someone, actually, that even at the age of 30, I don't know how much longer he's got left. I don't know how much longer he's got left. I feel like he's already peaked. I don't think his best years are ahead of him. His best years feel very much like they're behind him. Um, and in fact, a lot of people can't quite believe that Parker's only 30. He's been around for so long and he's achieved so much that it is kind of crazy that he's still only 30 years old. 30 in the heavyweight division is nothing. He he honestly could could, if his body allows him, go another eight years 10 years even if his body allows. So uh, he could still have um, a, a long, long career ahead of him. But 
No, I, I, I think his best years are behind him. I, I think that I, I think that with Parker, it's all about the unknown with Parker. I think with Parker, you sort of know what you're going to get from him. I think that he is, um, you could argue maybe a slightly more technical boxer than what Joe Joyce is. I think he might even have better movement than Joe Joyce. But the problem is that he's just, he can't seem to put it all together and do anything with it. Has, has Tyson Fury helped him with that? Has Tyson Fury like sorted that out for him? Because we have seen uh, Parker have 32 fights, 21 knockouts, but they are normally against pretty low level. Whenever he faces anyone of any significance, he always seems to struggle. And uh, we saw him lose to Anthony Joshua. Uh, we've seen him lose to Dillian White. He struggled against Chisora the first time, did better in the rematch. But it just seems to be that, like, against any kind of name, he always tends to uh, struggle a bit. And Joe Joyce, Joe Joyce is a name. Uh, Joe Joyce is going places, got a good win over Daniel Dubois. And uh, this is a big test for Joe Joyce as well. So uh, this is a fascinating contest. Uh, I, as I said, I really didn't want to miss this one. I really, really didn't want to miss this one. So it's great to be here uh, with you guys on this Saturday night. Um, but, but, but Modern said, I'm going to go off topic, but Extreme Rules ticket prices have skyrocketed three times the price from the last time I went to um, Extreme Rules in Philadelphia. I think everything has, but I don't think it's alone. I think anything, if you want to go to a, a gig, if you want to go to uh, the theater, if you want to go to anything, I think it's all sky high. I think they're trying to claw back a lot of money that went missing during the pandemic and during lockdown and everything. Um, you know, there's a lot of artists that haven't been paid for a long time. There's a lot of venues that haven't had money through the door in a long time. And, you know, the world is trying to recoup uh, some of those losses. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, it was something we discussed the other day, um, like just how expensive it is to actually go to shows and things. Well, certainly here in the UK, um, people were telling me that in America it's it's not quite as bad, but uh, here in the UK it seems like gigs have definitely definitely gone up in price. I mean, I I am a big fan of the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, which is a band from New York, and they kind of burst onto the scene in the early two thousands. Uh, to go and see them like play used to cost about I don't know twenty twenty quid, not that long ago actually, about six years ago, about twenty quid twenty five pound. I think tickets now have like doubled. 45, 50 pounds. So it's it's just a sign of the times, I think. Uh, big Juggernaut, says Sir Cal. Yes, the Juggernaut. Can anyone stop the Juggernaut? Can anyone stop Joe Joyce, Olympic finalist? An incredible chin. And he does rely on that chin. And as we said, he's he doesn't really have much in the way of finesse. He's just got big clubbing punches. He's not like the most technical. He's not the most graceful. Um, in fact, if anything, uh, a lot of people uh, say that he's very, very robotic and uh, can be a bit predictable and just literally all he does is move forward. Um, so against like the uh, more skilled heavyweights, against an Usyk and against the Tyson Fury, he could be in big, big trouble. Against a uh, Joseph Parker... I think he gets the job done. So I do quite fancy Joe Joyce tonight. He does come in as favorite. He comes in as minus 200 favorites. So not the heaviest of favorites. Um, and he's taken on Joseph Parker, who is at plus 160. We should be going over to one of our first contests uh, coming up very, very soon. So uh, just uh, we've got a little video package. It's going to be a female fight that's going to kick off uh the cards uh raven chapman so raven chapman don't know much about this one i believe it is for the vacant wbc international flyweight uh championship and i think raven chapman three and oh is coming in at about a minus 300 favorite Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, this card is pretty good, man. This card is pretty good. 
Um, I'm still upset, says John. Your dong let us down. Um, to be honest, it wasn't your dong, was it? Your dong did his job. It was the doctor that wouldn't allow your dong to continue. So, um, doctor stoppage. So, I don't know. We froze for a moment. Ugh, that was horrible. Don't like that at all. Don't like that at all. Uh, and we've got a little bit of lag as well. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Things are not going well. There we go. We're back. Um, right. I rewatched Bray Wyatt, John Cena. He's got the whole world in his hands segment. It was pretty cool, says Kevin. Dark Knight said, I know I'm controversial and a divisive figure in the community with my outlandish behavior, but don't ever, don't ever, hang on, let's have a, let's have a look, see if I can uh, see what you're telling me to not ever, but don't ever let it be said I'm not a fan of the content. I, I don't think anyone's saying that. Uh, Timothy said, Bray Wyatt is charismatic character. Would be fun to have him back, says Timothy. Uh, Jaden says, MJF and Liv spotted together. Bunker said, lag. Horrible lag. Just actually, did, just had lag where everything froze, which is very exciting. That's what happened to the old computer as well. So I would definitely uh, not want to see that return. Right, we've got uh, both boxers inside the ring, and we're going to be uh, underway with our first female fight. So uh, Chapman, two knockouts, three and O oh is the record, minus 300. Eight, eight two-minute rounds is what we've got here. Have I got, a, I don't even you know what, I don't even know if I've got a two-minute countdown clock by the, let me see if I can find one quickly. Uh, three minutes, two minutes, there we go. Boom. Thankfully, I've got one on standby. So uh, I do have a two-minute round clock. So eight two-minute rounds. Just going down. Um, there's no one actually in this. This is at the AO Arena in Manchester. Manchester, England. Victor Lachlan of Scotland is overseeing this one. Legend. Let's have a look at uh, Tapology and see where we are with uh, this contest. So from Argentina, Guinini, is it? Guanini, Guanini, 10 wins, four losses, two draws, one knockout from Argentina. Uh, here's uh, High Wickham. I know High Wickham. High Wickham, Chapman from uh, High Wickham. Uh, Guanini from Argentina. Right, we will be uh, underway with that first fight very, very soon. Just getting the few uh, final instructions. Uh, female fight. We are working our way towards the main event. Main event in around about three hours, 45. About three hours, 45. Here we go. We are uh, underway. Apparently, 58 seconds. Uh, Chapman won last time. So uh, saying like she's a very impressive uh, fighter. She's got Guanini backed up already. Lunging uh, to the body. Both women in black uh, and gold already going to the body uh, by Chapman. Guanini uh, backed up against the ropes. Guanini has got blue and white gloves, the colors of Argentina. Fast hands here by Chapman. And um, 
Can't quite land, but a couple of jabs coming in. Yeah, it seems like she's not uh, uh, going to be messing around tonight. Doesn't seem like she wants to be in there for too long. She's already, uh, I mean, pretty much for the first 40 odd seconds, she's had Guanini backed up against the ropes, throwing out a lovely uh, left jab. Shot to the body coming in here by uh, Guanini. A couple of uh, doubling up on the jabs, actually. Chapman, as uh, Guanini comes into the center. Guanini seems to have grown uh, a little bit in confidence here as she's managed to uh, gain some ground, step into the center, tries to throw a big hook into uh, a clinch. Referee comes in, separates them apart. 44 uh, seconds or so left in this uh, very much a Chapman round. Trying to uh, use that uh, left-hand jab. Big overhand coming in there by uh, Guanini. Doesn't uh, actually uh, land with it, though. A couple of jabs coming in by Chapman, driving Guanini back again. A lot being thrown, but not much actually finding its way through. Not much actually connecting. Nice uh, shot there by Guanini. Nice right hand. Tries for a hook to the body as well. Left hand jab coming in upstairs. Couple of body shots coming in. Peppering each other with shots. The two break away and they go back to their corners. I would say that was a Chapman round. I would say that was a Chapman round. But um, she probably could have uh, increased her accuracy. There was a lot being thrown. Didn't feel like there was loads that was landing. Didn't feel like there was tons that was getting through. Certainly more the aggressor there, though. Uh, Dort Knight said Argentina might win the World Cup. It's hard to call, but they do have a solid team. Brazil stacked with talent. Uh, France are going to be super dangerous. Germany could play 11 civilians and still win it. Uh, Edward said, AJ versus Fury looks like it happens on December 3rd, uh, either in Wembley or Cardiff Thoughts. Yeah, I think the match will happen. I think Cardiff is what I've heard. Um, I've heard that they've got Cardiff date booked. Um, I, don't, I don't know that Wembley is available. I don't know that Wembley isn't available, but Cardiff is definitely what I've heard. Um, do I think it'll happen? It's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I keep watching interviews with Eddie Hearn, and he keeps saying that uh, he's not going to believe it until, you know, things are up and running. But contracts have uh, come through. Things are looking pretty good. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, obviously, we do that if it happens. One of the biggest fights of all time. And uh, Chapman getting through. She can sense blood now. She uh, clipped, clipped Guanini on the chin. Guanini backed up against the ropes. She's having to weather a, a real storm here. Shots coming into the side of the body. Her face is uh, bright red, Guanini. Oh, big right hand. And again, she's got her up against the ropes. She Again, she still cannot land. Those kill shots, though. Big left hook there by Chapman. Big left hook. Minute gone in this second round. Uppercut comes back by Guanini. Couldn't land it, though. Chapman uh, again trying to pour the pressure on as Guanini steps away from the ropes. Chapman in the center. Feels like there's probably been enough time for Guanini to have recovered by now, but that was, uh, that was a real good moment in this fight for Chapman, and it definitely gives Chapman this second round. Shot to the back of the head there. And uh, we've got uh, Guanini up against the ropes. Referee coming in, looking to uh, separate these two apart. A couple of uh, jabs coming in, and it feels like we're getting towards the end of the round. It's going to be a Chapman round. Guanini is going to survive, but uh, I'm not sure she's going to make it all the way through to the end of the fight as a couple of shots come in at the end towards the body. Oof. Uh, I really want the burnt version of the Bray Wyatt action figure, says Timothy. Uh, you missed the Steve Sun fight. I did, yeah. There was there was no way of doing it, unfortunately. I believe the main event started at three, so we would have to have skipped a review. And um, I didn't want to skip. I didn't want to skip the SmackDown review. 
I think I think it's really important that people know that 15 minutes after Raw, we're, we're doing the review. 15 minutes after NXT, we're live with the review. 15 minutes after SmackDown, we're live with the review. So, yeah, I wanted to do the Shakur Stevenson one, but always got to prioritize. Uh, Bob's the course that I just watched another women's boxing match. It was Dixon versus Kiss on the Galahad undercard, and it was a good win. For Dixton, that's interesting. There's there's some good fights that are happening tonight. Right, we are uh, underway. Good second round for uh, Chapman. Quite a close first round. Um, lots being thrown, not loads getting through, but uh, Chapman definitely the aggressor, and I think she did land uh, more. Uh, we're underway uh, 30 seconds into this uh, second, no, third round. And uh, again, Chapman is the one going to the body, driving uh, Guanini back against the ropes again. Guanini having to throw some counters. Little dig to the body there by Guanini as uh, Chapman comes in. She's trying to uh, go to the head a lot, actually. Seeing a lot of uh, work upstairs, big hook shots. She is trying to mix in some body shots. A lot of stuff being started upstairs, though. As uh, she uh, tries to get in a hook to the body. Again, going up top. One, two, straight down the middle by Chapman. Guanini up against the ropes. Guanini trying to step into the center if she can. But uh, she's just really struggling to make much progress. But she does make it into the center. Lunges forward with a big straight left. These two uh, really going at it. It's a good little contest. They're, they're really not holding much back. It's uh, certainly not a tentative fight. Uh, and Chapman is the one that's really engaging the pace, really pushing the pace. And um, the one that's probably finding more joy. You can see uh, marks on the face of Guanini. Oh, little dig to the body there by Chapman. That was good. Lovely straight left. Follows it up with a right. Overhand comes in by Guanini, but she stumbles back. Oh, that was a big right hand. That was a beautiful right hand by uh, Chapman. She is she is schooling her, man. She is schooling her. She's putting the pressure on. She's she's definitely missing with a fair bit, but um, what what she's getting through with does look quite good. Actually, a round of applause from the people in the crowd there for a beautiful right hand that connected lovely uh i like the review format says kevin it lets me catch up with what i've missed yeah i, I i'm really pleased about that I, i'm really pleased that uh people are enjoying those um for the longest time i mean years and years and years we were just doing like a quick 15 minutes that was it we would do a quick 15 minutes at the end of the stream and uh, we didn't have any pictures. It was not the best of recaps either, to be honest. It was just like, oh, I like this. I didn't like this. And I think having like this structure um, has been really good and has been something that seemingly people have enjoyed. So, yeah, it's definitely been a positive, which is why uh, I don't want to be messing around with it. If something's working and this seems to be working, uh, then, you know, don't mess around with it. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, more people um, find them useful, enjoy them. I think it's quite good that we're able to get them up so quickly afterwards with pictures uh, as well. I'm not aware of, I don't know, I mean, I don't really look, see what's out there, but I don't know if there's really other channels that are doing that. But um, if there are, fair play to them. It's no shade whatsoever, but uh, uh, yeah, I think I think they're pretty good. I do like them. Right, we are underway round number four. And uh, again, we're seeing Chapman putting the pressure on. Counter shots coming back here by Guanini. Step back by uh, Chapman. Lunging forward with a straight left. Trying to find a way through as uh, Guanini is the one that's putting a bit of pressure on now. I wonder if her corner has just said, you're going to have to really turn up the tempo here. Like just doing what you're doing is not, not going to get you anywhere. Um, because she has, in my opinion, lost uh, the first three rounds. Uh, we are seeing a bit more come in uh, from Guanini, but still she's getting backed up. Oh, 
My God, she's getting tagged with a couple of shots there by Chapman. Chapman is so good. So, so good. Really, really good. Um, I think they're saying uh, never been stopped, uh, Guanini. So uh, Chapman is in there with a tough little opponent. I mean, she is showing that she can take shots. She has taken some big shots. A uh, little uh, uppercut there by Chapman. Referee coming in, trying to separate them apart again. And uh, that was, the, oh, my God, the, these rounds are just absolutely flying by. Eight, eight rounds is what we've got. Uh, eight five-minute rounds. And uh, the action has been brilliant in this one. It's really fun. Um, who are you edging in the main event, says Pickle Chips. Uh, I have definitely got uh, Joe Joyce. I'm feeling pretty good about it. To be honest, I think that uh, Joe Joyce against uh, Joseph Parker is a really close fight, but I don't know how close in England. I mean, I'm just going to be straight up honest. I think that I, I think there could be a stoppage late on for Joe Joyce, but it's probably going to go to the judges. And we all know what the judges are like. Certainly the judges in England, they're biased. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. So if it goes to the judges... I've, I've just got to think it's going to look really, really good for Joe Joyce. So late stoppage or uh, a decision win for Joe Joyce. Uh, it's uh, the problem is. I think we're up to speed. We're up to speed with everyone in the chat. We've had 221 votes. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, uh, to be honest, I don't really know how many people are going to join us. So this is obviously. Uh, not the highest profile boxing uh, match worldwide. Uh, it's a pretty big deal here in the UK. But uh, around the world, uh, I don't know how many people will join us. We've started nice and early. We're covering the undercard. Um, at this point now, I think Chapman, uh, if it goes to the uh, judges, is going to win it. That's a lovely uh, hook shot there. A right hook shot by Chapman. So straight left, hook shot comes through. Uh, clinches up again, good head movement, getting underneath those strikes and uh, a couple of shots coming in by Chapman, but couldn't quite land them. Guanini up against the ropes again, trying to counter punch. Great jab there by Chapman getting through 50 odd seconds. That was a lovely hook shot by Guanini, though. I tell you what, this fight just proper sucks you in. Like uh, I was just going to be talking a little bit about Joyce and Parker and bits and bobs, but um, yeah, I can't, can't take my eyes off this one. It's a good little contest. This little uh, shot to the body there by Guanini. Dig to the side. Lovely. Uh, just the work rate here is very impressive. Nice uh, right hand there by uh, Guanini. Up top lands. Oh, good. Good work by Guanini. There's some good stuff here, but I still think she's probably trailing Chapman. Nice little digs to the body there by uh, Guanini. Again, constant output by both women. Lots of uh, combos. Lots of, like, hook shots followed up with, uh, you know, hook upstairs going to a hook to the body. There's Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is in the house. And, of course, he would be. Tyson Fury supporting uh, Joseph Parker. So uh, Fury is in the house. Fury has arrived. I don't know if these are live images, but uh, Tyson Fury is there. We're in uh, uh, quite a wild suit as usual. It's kind of uh, a gray uh, and white suit, like a skyline in a way, like clouds. That's the vibe I'm getting. And then it's got paint splatters all over it. It's pretty wild. So, uh, yeah, Tyson Fury has arrived. We're just seeing inside the uh, arena, and it's still uh, very, very empty, as you can imagine. Our main event's still a good number of hours away. Let's get uh, the clock going again. There we go. Uh, wrestling, Dave, getting sucked into the action. Absolutely. Dort Knight said, I've been a bit skeptical about the Bray stuff because I thought it was overshadowing a lot of other interesting stuff and was being spoilt a little. I'm going to get 
in elvested. What does that mean? What's in elvested? I don't know what that means. Uh, swinging away there by uh, Guinini. Lunge into the body. Oh, yeah. I was going to have a look. 240 votes is what we've had. I was going to have a look at this, wasn't I? Uh, so 55% of you think that Joe Joyce is going to be picking up the victory. 40% of you think it's going to be uh, Joseph Parker. And 5% of you think it'll be a draw. So um, Joe Joyce uh, definitely leading. It's not the biggest lead. It's a nice, close little contest. Certainly not saying um, Joe Joyce is going to uh, storm it, dominate it. I think actually Joseph Parker does well in the early stages. And then Joe Joyce comes through in the later rounds. Uh, I'm I'm saying late stoppage or decision win for Joe Joyce. That's That's kind of what I'm feeling. Uh, right, uh, I've got Chapman dominating this. As we said, we're at the point now where I really think that Chapman has got it won and it's going to need to be a stoppage for uh, Guanini. And uh, Guanini not looking as stable on her feet anymore. Big body shots. Oh, little digs to the body there. It's actually Guanini, though, that then drives Chapman back. Again, uh, digs coming into the body, shots coming into the side of the head. These two uh, have really uh, gone at it. So uh, there we go. End of the round. Round number seven coming up. Uh, apparently 923 times SmackDown tease was for the White Rabbit be song being played in the arena for the live audience, not for the TV audience. I also heard, though, that at 923 on the West Coast, that's when they got to see uh, the fireball being thrown, which I thought was interesting also. So, I, I don't know, 9.23 Eastern, 9.23 Pacific. I don't know what the 9.23 was in relation to. So, could have been, could have been the uh, song playing in the arena. Or, um, I did get someone tell me that, yeah, that, that at 9.23, that is when the fireball was thrown by by Scarlet. So I don't know, is, is the answer. I don't know. The whole thing was very strange. I, I, would have, I would have expected them to have gone with Eastern time. Eastern time seems to be the time that, I, I don't know, kind of uh, things get set by in a way in America. Uh, right, we are underway with uh, round number seven. Uh, Kevin said, AEW pressers are the best. Watching Tony Khan is like seeing your friend on a bad trip, not knowing what's going to happen next. Uh, Awaken Bozo said, I love getting sucked into the action. That's what she said. Callum said, Parker on points for me. That's fair play. That's fair play. I, I think uh, the only reason I say Joe Joyce, if it goes uh, distance, is um, I just think the judges could be biased. I think uh, we've seen plenty of questionable decisions uh, in the UK in the past. And uh, I think there's uh, a chance that we could see uh, more tonight. I also think Joe Joyce will come through in the later rounds. It's just at what point does he start coming through? At what point does he start looking good? But it could be, yeah, uh, yeah, it could be. It could be Joe Joyce by decision. Uh, right, we've uh, got, we're getting towards the end of this round. We're going to have one more round to go in this one. James said we can at least say summer happened at 9.23. That is true. Um, Joyce is underrated. Look how he played with Daniel Dubois. Yeah, the, the only thing is, I think Joe Joyce might have been down on the judges' scorecards by the time the finish came. So even though he looked mm, all right in that fight, um, he didn't absolutely destroy Daniel Dubois. Uh, I think there was, on judges' scorecards, um, Dubois actually in the mix or even in the lead. So, I mean, that was a, that was a tough contest. It was a tough fight. Um, and I do think that Joe Joyce is a, a very, very good fighter. I do think he's going to reach a ceiling. I don't know that that's tonight, but can I see him beating Tyson Fury or Usyk? I, I, I can't. I can't see that. 
So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where his ceiling is. Is it tonight? Will Will he lose? Will he fall to uh, Joseph Parker at the moment? Joe Joyce, 14 and 0. You know, is his O about to go? Right, we are going to uh, round number eight on this one. This, uh, as we said, is our uh, first fight, our uh, first female fight, first fight on the main card as well. And uh, we've got around about uh, just under three and a half hours to go, which, as I said, isn't that bad, actually. Considering we're normally sat here for about eight hours or so on a Saturday, the fact that we've got like three and a half hours to go till we get to Joe Joyce against uh, Joseph Parker, it's not that bad at all. Um, I'm not going to be around after Tuesday. I've got a hurricane on Wednesday, says uh, Zachary. I'm sorry to hear that, dude. I've heard that they're doing the rounds. Is it like hurricane season, is it? Stay safe. Nice. Good work. Good jab there by Chapman. Good uh, left hand. Um, Guanini coming in, trying to get a shot to the body. Looks like both women are uh, going to be making it to the end of this one. They clinch up as the referee comes in. Looks to separate the two fighters. Big overhand coming in by uh, Guanini. She's just throwing haymakers in a hope that she can connect and uh, put Chapman down. Chapman surely leading on the scorecards. And uh, with less than a minute to go, uh, she really just needs to play it safe. Uh, Tyson Fury is ringside right now. Tyson Fury is uh, ringside, sat right in the center. Uh, ringside. I wonder if that, oh, I don't know. I wonder if that would be intimidating. Is, would that be intimidating to Joe Joyce? To look over and have Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury's dad sat uh, right in the center at ringside. 20 odd seconds to go on this one. And uh, Guanini is uh, doing all right, you know. She's uh, giving as good as she's getting in these final stages, showing that she's got really good heart conditioning. Decent chin as well. She took some big, big shots. I'll be really interested to see what the judges score this. I reckon you could give a round or two to uh, Guanini. But um, the, it wouldn't be any more than that. For me, this is a clear win for Chapman. Yeah, it was. It was good. It was entertaining. Uh, good to see Amanda Serrano on the cards. Any news on the next Katie Taylor match? Katie Taylor fights in London later this year against her mandatory or a mandatory challenger. I forget the name. Um, it shouldn't be a problem, to be honest. Uh, yeah, shouldn't really be a problem. I think they want to try and get, uh, is it Croke Park in Ireland? And there's been a lot of talk about Holly Holm. There's been a lot of talk about Cyborg. Um, there's been a lot of talk about about uh, those uh, fights. Um, obviously, they wanted to do Amanda Serrano rematch, but Serrano uh, wasn't interested at this stage in going over to Ireland. I can sort of understand it, to be honest. I mean, you've just lost. Do you want to now go and face the person you lost to in their country? I mean, like that. I could understand her wanting to like pursue a few other fights first because tonight is actually a unification match. So it's quite a big deal tonight's uh, co-main event for Serrano. It should be easy for it won't be a challenge. She should be able to get the job done quite comfortably, but uh, still means something. Right, we're waiting for the decisions on this one. Uh, we've gone to the judges; they're about to get uh, read out. Here we go. He's ready to give us uh, the scores. Scores on the doors. If you are watching and you haven't hit that like, hit the like. Makes a big difference. And it is appreciated as we're about to get the scores. 78, 74. 79, 73. 77 75. God, that's way closer than I thought. So there we go. It is uh, Chapman that gets the victory. Chapman wins. 
Raven Chapman getting the victory and a, a couple of scorecards there, a lot closer than I was uh, expecting. But she is the new WBC International Featherweight Champion. So uh, there we go, uh, Chapman victorious. And uh, Guanini comes over and uh, congratulates her. It's good uh, sportsmanship. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Thug Rose, says Bob. Thug Rose. Thug Rose. So uh, there we go. Uh, one uh, fight down, and uh, it's pretty fun. Chapman was minus 300 favorite, and uh, she looked it as well. Uh, Savannah Marshall would put her fist through Katie's face. Uh, that's a fight that's coming up, which uh, sadly I don't think we're going to be able to do. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's on, what, October 15th? Uh, the Marshall against Clarissa Shields fight. I really, really, really wanted to do that one. Um, I've done the research for it and everything, so it was meant to happen uh, the other week. And then the flipping queen went and died. <sighs> Thanks. So, uh, yeah, she went and died. And now that means that um, it's been moved to October 15th. And October 15th, uh, I've got in my calendar as uh, Ratman Jr. against Vitor Belfort, which is not uh, the biggest contest in the world. So I'm all right missing that. Shields Marshall. Okay, I'd love to watch that. Deontay Wilder against uh, Hellenius. That is on October 15th, which is going to be a massive fight. I mean, um, uh, Wilder's got such a passionate following in America. And, uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see can he bounce back from you know, what's left, what's left in the tank for him, basically, after those uh, Tyson Fury uh, wars. I mean, no other way to put it, wars. So, I mean, that's going to be super interesting. So I feel like Wilder is the fight to do on that day. But we've also got Cambosis Jr. against Devin Haney. And you might remember we did that fight before, that fight coming from Australia. And, um, you know, Cambosis Jr. was the, the champ, Devin Haney picking up the belts, getting the victory in convincing fashion as well. Uh, well, the rematch is happening now. So uh, that, I mean, Devin Haney is a big name. That feels like a big deal as well. I still feel like Wilder is probably the big fight to do. Then maybe, uh, maybe Devin Haney and then Shields Marshall. I'm not, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's pretty stacked on October 15th. Pretty stacked. So, uh, and then I think the week before that is Extreme Rules. It's also Eubank versus Ben. Uh, week before that uh, is next week. We don't actually have loads. I think it might just be the UFC fight night. I need to see if there's anything else next weekend. It might just be UFC. But yeah, week after that, Eubank, Ben and Extreme Rules. Week after that is the 15th. Week after that is UFC 2 280. Week after that is Jake Paul against Anderson Silva. Week after that is uh, Bivol. Bivol in, uh, back in action. Uh, week after that is UFC 281. Week after that is Crawford versus Spence. Week after that is Survivor Series. Week after that is Fury versus Joshua. Oh, busy. Busy, busy. Uh, Awakened Bozo said, my fight is on October 15th. Well, I stand corrected, uh, Awakened uh, Bozo. Your fight is clearly the biggest of October 15th. So shout out to you. Uh, Dawn Knight said, my friend just edited my face and put it on Bray Wyatt's body. Uh, and has WhatsApped it over to me, says uh, Dawn Knight. Uh, uh, Botra said, uh, rest in peace. I love the queen. I did watch the uh, the funeral. I actually watched more of the funeral than I was expecting to watch. Um, I thought it was really good. Yeah, I thought it was really, really good. Apparently, 4 billion watched it around the world, which is amazing, isn't it? Uh, Awaken Bozo said, Ratman Jr. Belfort's now been moved to November 19th. Has it? Has it? That's interesting. Thank you. What's on November? What's on November 19th? Oh, Crawford Spence. I don't know. Has Crawford Spence actually been announced? Has it actually been confirmed? Crawford Spence is what we're watching on that weekend. 
Crawford versus Spence is uh, two of the absolute best pound for pound uh, fighters. Uh, a week ago, Spence Crawford agreed to terms in principle for undisputed welterweight championship. A fight to decide the first undisputed welterweight champion in more than a decade is finally within reach. Talks between Errol Spence and Terence Crawford have resulted in both fighters agreeing terms in principle. The matter is now uh, with the legal teams. Uh, once finalized, the welterweight super fight is expected to headline November 19th from MGM Grand Garden Arena, according to multiple sources. Uh, Crawford 38 and 0 with 29 knockouts. Spence 28 and 0 with 22 knockouts. Someone's O has got to go. And uh, we will be getting a undisputed welterweight champion. I mean, that is a mega fight, man. That is huge. That is huge. That is, that is, I, I, I can't say it's bigger than Fury Joshua. I can't say it's bigger than Fury Joshua, but I feel like it, it deserves to be at least in the same conversation. That is huge. So, yeah, we're definitely doing that. Um, hasn't Crawford picked up an injury? I've not, I've not seen that he's picked up an injury. Uh, if he has, it doesn't seem to be derailing talks. Let's have a look, Craw Crawford. Let's have a look, Crawford news. Crawford to defeat a couple of days ago. Nope. Uh, nothing, nothing that I can see being reported through Google anyway. Uh, right, we're going to our second fight now. Second fight coming up. Second fight, this is... I don't even know who we've got in there, to be honest. Uh, people love these. Charity fight in my back garden. Days 4 billion watched it. It's overinflated. Apparently it was way less, says uh, Retribution. To be honest, I don't know how they would ever know that stuff. I, I don't really know how they ever know these things. I mean, all the people that watch things in pubs and whatever, how are you how are you how are you how are you working that out? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I think it's just a ballpark in it. Uh Balasio, I d I I don't you know what? I don't even know if I've got this fight written down. So uh Balasio. Twenty-eight wins, two defeats. Mark Heffron. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't have this one written down. Uh, but, but I had these fights this week and have been knocked out. If I had three fights this week and had been knocked out in the first round, I would. I can't. I would show the footage. Okay. Uh, do you get boxing pay per views for free? No. Not all of them. Well, actually, no. It depends what they are. I mean, if it's a pretty low key sort of uh, boxing thing, then uh, it might be on TV just normally. But this this one today was like twenty twenty dollars twenty pounds. Right, we are underway with uh, Mark Heffron against Martin Bulasio. So uh, this can go uh, eight rounds in this one. So uh, going to keep an eye on this. Shiran said, "What on earth are you playing at? Where are your Extreme Rules predictions?" Uh, we tend to do it like the Sunday before. So they will be done. When is Extreme Rules? It's Extreme Rules. When is it? Extreme Rules is... Extreme Rules is the 8th. So uh, we'll probably get a stream 
Prediction stream done on the second. Nice uh, shots there by uh, Heffron. He, uh... Yeah, he's managed to get so, oh, some big uh, body shots, some lovely hook shots coming in. Oh, and again, going, uh, he's going after the body here, Heffron. Oh, lovely. Lovely right straight. Oh, and again, he's turning up the intensity. Palacio is in trouble and it's done. It is done. Referee has uh, stepped in. Palacio uh, has got a smile on his face. He doesn't seem, he doesn't seem uh, happy that uh, that got uh, stopped. He's got a smile on his face, but he is protesting with the referee. But uh, that is quite the performance from uh, Hefram. Hefram with some big, big body shots. You could see that uh, Balasio was in pain. And um, he got backed up against the ropes. He wasn't uh, really uh, being able to defend himself fully. And uh, referee was like, nah, mate, you're done. So, uh, wow, I, I, I didn't even need to write down the names, really. That's why I didn't bother jotting it down. I knew this one was going to be so quick. Yeah, good performance, that. Good performance. Uh, this pay-per-view is nowhere near worth $19.95. Should have been a tenner. However, I'm still going to buy it anyway, says Retribution. Yeah, uh, the point I was making is that some pay-per-views, I think most pay-per-views uh, you do have to pay for here in the UK for boxing. We are very fortunate with UFC. UFC uh, tends to just be shown on BT. Uh, so if it's a fight night, it just gets shown. If it is a pay-per-view, it tends to just get shown. If it is like Connor, that would be one you would pay for. If it's got like um, big fanfare, like uh, Fight Island, that was another one we had to pay for. But to be honest, I don't, I don't know that Makachev against Oliveira is a paid one. I don't, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Um, ninety nine percent of them are not basically. So yeah, we're very fortunate with uh, UFC pay per views, boxing pay per views, not as fortunate, and certainly uh, ones that involve like British fighters, you you're paying for those. So as we said tonight, nineteen ninety five. Um, I don't I don't begrudge it. I mean, for me, it's worth it because I really like Amanda Serrano. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for her. And uh, I think that's a really, really good co-main uh, with her being in it. I think it's very one-sided, but um, I, at least I feel like, you know, I'm going to be seeing uh, a bit of a superstar. I see her as a bit of a superstar now. And then uh, the main event is just super fascinating. So. Uh, Northern Ireland is a magical place, said Dork Knight. Uh, just Nick said, thank you, Days." for taking the time to write down the names. Uh, you're welcome, mate. You're welcome. You know me. I'm all about the admin. I'm all about making sure that uh, we've got the right names on screens and things along those lines. So uh, there we go. Uh, victory for Heffron as we uh, continue to move towards our main event. Main event coming in around about three hours time. Uh, my stomach is sore again, says Sam, a.k.a. Other Mother. I am sorry to hear that, Sam. Have some warm honey. That'll sort it. I also don't know if that's true. Uh, Kitson said, do you think Bray Wyatt will return on Raw? No. Um, I think if Bray comes back, it would be at Extreme Rules, maybe Crown Jewel. But uh, I can't even sit here and tell you that these teases are Bray. Uh, there's uh, a fun theory that's doing the rounds that it could be Edge. Don't. It's just a fun theory. Don't get upset, Bray fans, right? It's just a fun theory. But uh, I did tweet it out, and I, I do like it. I do like it because it could be that each clue points to a victim. So the first clue points to Finn Balor because the question was, uh, who killed the world? And uh, the rabbit guessed demon, which uh, obviously the demon king, uh, Finn Balor. And also the crosses were purple and they were the purple crosses that marked the letters off that, that Finn Balor is using at the moment, the purple crosses. 
So there are a couple of links to Finn in that first one. And uh, obviously he kind of did ruin everything. Uh, he came in, turned uh, Judgment Day against Edge. So, you know, uh, he kind of destroyed Edge's world at that time, at that moment in time. So I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that first one hinting towards Finn Balor. And then the second one, obviously, is about uh, killing your father. And that could hint to Dominic Mysterio. So Dominic, uh, even though he didn't actually kill his father, uh, I you could make the argument that Ray is pretty much dead to Dominic right now. He, Dominic has turned his back on his father. And I think anything that's got to do with like a father-son relationship, probably it, like right now will make you think of will make you think of Ray and Dominic. Um, and I know about the Bray promo. I'm fully aware of the FCW Bray promo. But um, I don't know, like, is a is is a Bray promo from like over seven years ago in FCW? Like, is that I don't know, is that is that really what like we're saying that this is all about? I mean, I do think it's a good theory, but I don't know that I can go as far as to say, like, yeah, that proves that it's Bray. So, you know, uh, this one being about killing your father uh, and we've just seen like this massive betrayal of Dominic and Ray. Like I could definitely see that link. I could definitely see that link. So uh, the third clue might hint towards Rhea Ripley or it could hint towards Damian Priest. And each one could be a victim and it could lead to extreme rules when Edge returns. Um, because don't forget Edge was behind those vignettes. And a lot of people thought they were quite spooky. And a lot of people thought they were cryptic. And there was a lot of people reading stuff into those. And then it turned out to just be Edge. So just a fun theory, right? I'm not booking anything. Don't worry, Bray fans. Um, I'm not behind anything. I'm just saying. Keep an open mind. So, yeah, that's. Uh, I thought that was pretty good. I like that one. Uh, if it's Bray who returns, would you mind him being the one that dethrones Roman? No, not if it's as long as it's not um, supernatural. That's that's my line. Everyone, I think anyone that's watched this channel for any amount of time knows that's my line. That's where I that's where I draw my line. I don't care if you are Undertaker. I don't care if you are Kane. I don't care if you are Papa Shango. I don't care if you are Mankind. I don't care if you are Gunther. I don't care if you are Asuka. Uh, I don't care if you are Bray. Uh, for me, my, that that's where I draw my line. So if Bray comes back, has a good competitive match, a proper match uh, with Roman and picks up the victory, um, nope, no problems whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, I, I, in fact, it could make sense because it was Bray that uh, had that belt and dropped that belt. And then if Bray wins it back from Roman, that would be like the full circle, which people like. So, uh, and Bray obviously talks about that a lot as well. So, yeah, you know, it could be cool. Uh, I'm also not against this faction idea. I think the faction idea is very interesting. So uh, I'm not against that either. Um, I don't know that uh, like things are necessarily pointing in that direction. You, there's definitely things in there that link Carrion and link a few other people, but I don't know that I can find any links to, say, Dexter Loomis. I don't know there's any links to Braun, but Braun is someone that's already got links to Bray. There are some links to Carrion, but, yeah, at the moment, it feels more like a cool idea than something that's actually got a lot of, like, links pointing that were going in that direction. But I, I wouldn't be against that. I wouldn't be against that at all. So yeah, a new uh, a new white family could be fun. I'm just very uh, conscious though that we don't get too sucked into just like talking about when do you think Bray's coming back? Who do you think Bray's going to be attacking? Because we are skipping ahead here. We still do not know that this is Bray. So yeah, it's um, just something worth keeping in mind. Uh, right, right now uh, there's nothing to tell you about. We uh, that last fight ended super early. So, in fact, first round. So they're just showing video uh, packages at the moment. They've literally just got video packages showing. 
uh, like the weigh-in and things along those lines. So uh, Joyce against um, Parker coming up in just under now three hours time. If you are watching and you haven't left a like, leave a like. Uh, it is uh, greatly appreciated. So we're not even at 100 likes yet. So if you are watching and you've not left a like, leave a like. We've got to smash through as many likes as possible. I don't think this stream is going to be getting anywhere near uh, a thousand likes. I, I don't have those kind of expectations. Uh, really, it would be nice if this could just replace what we normally do with UFC. That's my only hope. If this can just do the same kind of views that we would normally get for UFC, the same kind of likes that we would normally get for UFC. Uh, if we could pick that up for this, then uh, I will be a very, very happy boy. So uh, yeah, just yep, keep liking, keep uh, sharing doing whatever it is that you have to do. I don't know. But um, it is appreciated people joining us on this Saturday night. And as I said, uh, I certainly don't mind going wherever the conversation goes. So we are doing uh, this uh, tonight and also the Mayweather fight afterwards. Uh, Asib said, have you watched any Joyce fights? If so, I'd like a summary of his fighting style as I have never watched him. Um, I, I've seen, I saw the Dubois uh, fight and I... I, can't, I don't know if I've seen any others or if I've just seen highlights, but um, his fighting style is a bit robotic, a bit predictable. Um, he moves forwards. He uh, has got a very good uh, jab. He's got big clubbing blows. Um, he can be a bit awkward. Um, I, I would say that he's not the most technically gifted boxer. Um, I would say that he is someone that likes to come forward and throw he's not someone that's got like quick hand speed joseph parker will be quicker so in a way like he there's a lot about uh joe joyce that i don't think is that exceptional like his movement is not that great his shots are quite predictable his movement is a bit robotic his um the shots that he throws are kind of like you know he does jab obviously everyone uses the jab but um his shots can be a bit clubbing like, there's not, like, nice little slips and things like this. You just don't get that kind of silky skill from Joe Joyce. He's just a big lump of a man who, like, moves forwards and keeps moving forwards. His strengths are his chin and his conditioning. His chin can take real punishment, and uh, he's got an excellent chin. He is someone that likes... Oh, I can't say he likes to take punishment, but... I think he does get a lot of confidence from being hit and absorbing those strikes. And basically just like, is that all you've got? Because, you know, it's very demoralizing if you're in there and someone's throwing shots on you and you're just eating them and you're still moving forward. Like that's Joe Joyce and he will keep coming forward. He'll keep coming forward round after round after round. And what we, what you tend to find with Joe Joyce fights is his opponents obviously are fresh at the start and they're, you know, moving, slipping, getting their shots off. And Joe Joyce is just kind of moving forward and losing rounds, to be honest, losing early rounds because uh, his opponents are fresh and they're getting their shots off and they're landing a little bit more. And so they take the early rounds. But the problem is as they tire as they tire and as they get maybe even demoralized because they've thrown their best shots and they've done no damage, uh, that's when Joyce starts coming in. That's when he starts, you know, getting his shots through and that's when he starts picking up rounds. And what you tend to see with Joe Joyce is that not the quickest starter and uh, he really grows into fights. So my expectation is that's what you'll see tonight. You'll see uh, Parker, uh, tonight, uh, coming in and having success in the early stages. And then you will see Joe Joyce starting to really come through towards the end. Um, Parker's conditioning will not be as good as Joe Joyce's. Um, he has just got an incredible engine. A lot of people talk about Joe Joyce's engine and how impressive his engine is. And um, I think that's something that he relies a lot on, as well as his chin. So... That's just a bit of an overview, uh, to be honest. Um, I, I, I imagine that he'll use his size advantage because he's going to be the bigger guy, uh, Joe Joyce. 
Um, he is just a monster of a man. He's going to use that to really be driving Parker back. And um, he's going to be constantly on the front foot. So, yeah, I mean, make no mistake about it. You know, he is a problem for a lot of people. He is a problem. He is a problem that it's hard to solve because you just can't seem to land anything on him that's going to cause any real damage. And he just keeps coming forwards. So he is a problem. But I do think against someone that's got the head movement, the um, skill set, the footwork of Usyk, I think that could be a problem. Usyk comes in, pop, 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 gets back out again, comes in again, pop, pop, pop. And Usyk's not, he's, you know, conditioning is going to be absolutely fine, isn't it? I mean, we've just seen him do uh, two fights against Anthony Joshua, and I'd say Joshua's a better heavyweight than Joe Joyce. So, yeah, I, 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 there's a ceiling for Joe Joyce. And we said earlier, I don't know if that ceiling is tonight. This is the biggest fight Joe Joyce has ever had. Um, Joseph Parker is the, the hardest opponent he's ever faced. Joseph Parker is a former world champion. So this is going to be a real, real challenge, a real, real challenge for uh, Joe Joyce tonight. But a good challenge, and I would say the right challenge, the right challenge for him right now. This is a good test, and he needs this. He's 37. He's 37 now. I mean, there's only a few more years left to go. He's running out of time. Believe it or not, Joe Joyce is 14 and 0, and he is running out of time. So a few more years uh, left. Uh, so he really does need to get this win tonight. I don't know. I don't know if there will be another opportunity. I don't know if he loses tonight. Like how he's going to get back into contention because whoever wins tonight is going to become the mandatory for Usyk. But those mandatories can take a long time to come through. So even if you win tonight, there's, you know, it's going to be at some point next year, could even be the end of next year uh, before you actually get like the fight. And honestly, if Joyce wins tonight, he could be 38 by the time he actually gets the his fight. And, you know, time time could be running out for him. So. Uh, oh, is this Echo Essaman? Uh, we might be going to Echo Essaman. Uh, this is a fight I was looking forward to. Uh, Dalwin said, evening days. I'm watching the boxing in the pub. There's a few people, not a lot, but it is decent. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to heat up, man. As we get closer and closer to the uh, main event, more and more people are going to keep uh, joining. So uh, it will get busy. I think the thing with boxing is that um, it's ve it's nothing like wrestling or anything like that. It's very much about the co-main and the, the main event, really. Most of the time, it's um, it's just the main event people go for. But I am excited for this. I I, I really like Eku uh, Essaman. So uh, Eku Essaman is the British Commonwealth IBF European welterweight champion. He's 17 and 0. He's got really good conditioning, big body shots, good counters, likes to move forwards, does need to show a little more urgency at times. Um, and his jab can lack a little bit of accuracy. Uh, we did watch him on the Fury White undercard. And actually, in preparation for this, I went back and rewatched that fight. And um, it was it was interesting. It was good. Yeah, I remember watching it at the time. Uh, he is taking on Samuel Antwi, who is 14 and 1. Um, this is quite close. Essamon at minus 200. And we at plus 170. And we has got uh, a mask on as well at the moment. Kind of uh, quite the showman. It's going to be uh, it's going to be good. This is. Echo Essamon. <clears throat> Joe Joyce has it faced a challenge until his box. My mom said Ernest on purpose. Joe said, who would be Joyce's next opponent after these Parker fights? So it depends if he wins or loses. So it really depends uh, where we go from here. If he wins, the next fight might be uh, against uh, Usyk. Uh, I don't know if they would put another uh, fight in there in between. But um, yeah, he would be the mandatory. And to be honest, I think they, they probably would just be fully focused on the Usyk fight. I think you'd need time to prepare for Usyk. 
So uh, I think if he wins, he'll go after Usyk. If he loses, I don't know. I mean, uh, could it be someone like Wallin? Um, Sanchez? There's a couple of fighters that are in the uh, WBO ranking. Uh, Zhang? I mean, uh, Joshua? I don't know. Would you would you go after Joshua? I mean, like, what's Joshua going to do next year? I mean, if Joshua loses to Fury, like, what does Joshua do? Does Joshua go after Deontay Wilder next year? If if Wilder's not an option, he can't fight Usyk, that's done. If he's lost to Fury, then that'll be done. Like, Joshua would have to go after Wilder, but a, a fight against Joe Joyce would make a lot of sense. So if Joyce loses and Joshua loses, there's maybe an argument that they could be on a collision course. So it's quite exciting in the heavyweight division at the moment. Uh, right, here we go. We are underway with uh, round number one of Echo Esserman against Samuel Antwi for the British IBF European Commonwealth uh, Welterweight Championships. Um, I like Echo Esserman's shorts. They are uh, black with uh, like African uh, patterns down the side. Trying to go uh, to the body there, Echo Esserman. I expect uh, Esserman to get the win here, but it is quite a close little contest, this one. Nice uh, jab coming in there by uh, Antwi. Again, uh, another couple of little uh, jabs coming in. 17-0 and 0 is uh, Esserman's record. He's got seven knockouts uh, from those 17 victories. Coming into range and uh, stepping back out again. Little dig to the body by uh, Esserman. Both guys uh, in the center at the moment. Again, uh, jab coming in there by... Oh, lovely hand speed by uh, Esserman. Yeah, very fast jab. Very, very fast jab. Follows it up with a lovely right hand. Esserman coming in, going to uh, the body. It's looking quite sharp here, you know. It's looking quite good. Uh, Warren is... Uh, Frank Warren is, of course, ringside. Uh, sat next to Tyson Fury. If you are just joining us, Tyson Fury is in the house. He is there because, of course, he trains and has trained with Joseph Parker. So he's there to support Parker tonight. Both of these fighters uh, in the center. I think Esserman's look the better here. Some lovely jabs. Three jabs in a row there by Echo Esserman. As uh, both fighters in the uh, center at the moment. Uh, Joshua can't even bait snow off the rope. Uh, I've got Parker winning. He's got a great chin, says Edwards. Nice uh, hook shot coming in there by Antwi. Jab coming into the uh, body by Esserman. Another uh, shot coming in there by Esserman. Not a bad little uh, start to this one, actually. Uh, this could go 12 rounds. So uh, it's got the ability to go 12 rounds. And as we said, uh, Esserman uh, has had 10 of his fights go the distance. So uh, we could be in for a, a long one here. Some shots coming in. Nice by uh, Antwi. A couple of jabs coming back. Body shots coming back there by uh, Esman. Just driving Antwi back. Yeah, nice uh, right hand. Big uh, overhand right coming in by Antwi as we get to the end of the round. It was uh, quite competitive in the end, but I would still give the nod to uh, Esserman. Um, he's never been knocked out. He's only lost decision, so I think Parker can get it done, says uh, Edwards. Uh, Summit, hello. Hope you are well. Shout out to you. Dot Knight said, there's not as many bots these days. Did they get bored or are they just hidden? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I really don't know. I don't know. It could be that our mods have done a fantastic job with all of that. So uh, I know there's been a lot of shooting bots down, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, we do get some sex bots still every now and again. 
but to be honest, they're they're more than welcome to join us. I've got no issues with those guys. Here we go. We are underway with uh, round number two then. Essamon against uh, Antwi. If you are just joining us, uh, I think Essamon just edged that first round, but I don't think there was much in it. Both fighters uh, in the center right now. We've got a couple of jabs coming in. Doubling up the jabs there by Antwi. Nice as well to the body by Antwi. And uh, goes upstairs as well. So uh, Antwi uh, really setting out his stall in the early stages of this second round as uh, Esmond is uh, edging forwards. Nice uh, jab coming in. Good uh, evasive head movement by uh, Antwi. He's keeping his hands really low. Look at that. He's just really relying on his head movement. His hands are actually down by his side, constantly moving his head around. He's really goading uh, Echo Esmond on to him there. And um, he's looking to... Flick out the jab. Body shot coming in there by uh, Esserman. Bit of real showmanship here by uh, Antwi. And uh, it's certainly grabbing the attention of Tyson Fury and uh, Frank Warren. They're uh, uh, pointing out a few things that they're noticing. Antwi has got his hands up now, though. I think he's been clipped a couple of times. But uh, he did well in the early stages of this round. And uh, right now, he's got his hands back up. Both guys are in the center. They're uh, exchanging shots back and forth. A couple of uh, jabs coming in here by Antwi. Esserman coming forward. Just keeping things tidy, uh, Esserman. And uh, some nice shots there. Esserman just getting a few things through. Oh, tried for a big right hand. Tried for a big right hand. And he goes to the body. So uh, he is uh, starting to put some stuff together here. Esserman. And uh, swinging away. Shot coming into the side of the head. Shot to the body again there by Esserman. And he's got Antwi up against the ropes. Yeah, this uh, it's looking good, this, for uh, Esserman. Esserman, uh, I gave him the first round. And I think uh, he's looking uh, fairly decent here as well. If you are joining us... Uh, or just joining us, the main event is around about two and a half hours time, which again sounds like a long way off, but uh, it will soon fly. Um, we've had over 400 votes as well, over 400 votes. Keep your votes coming in, keep your likes coming in as well as we're uh, getting towards the end of round number two. Uh, Edward said KSI got dropped two times from a 17-year-old day, a.k.a. speed, in side men charity football match. It was funny. Uh, I don't know. What, what, does he, what do you mean? He got dropped in a charity football match. Right, there we go. End of round two. Uh, I need a finish. Is there a chance? Uh, I would say there was a chance. There was uh, a couple of moments there where Esmond was really pouring it onto Antwi. And um, Antwi still looks all right at this stage, but we've got plenty of time left in this one. We can go 12 rounds. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's a chance. There's a chance. These two have won 31 fights. 13 have, of those have come by finish. So... There's a chance. Um, ba -ba -ba. Fury is already there, says Rod. Yes, 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 yeah. Right, here we go. That gets uh, underway with uh, round number three. A couple of uh, left hands coming in. Both guys uh, in the center right now. Left hand's uh, coming back there by Antwi. This is, uh, as I said, good little contest, this one. Uh, quite close in regards to uh, the odds. And you can see that both guys have got uh, really good boxing skill. It's a good test for uh, Esserman, this one. Coming into, uh, trying to get into the body. He uh, steps out to the side. Both guys in the center. I love that right hand by uh, Esman. A couple of uh, left-hand jabs. It's really starting to fill up now. 
Uh, the ringside area was pretty much completely empty not that long ago. Now we're really starting to see uh, the seats filling up, but uh, that's good work by uh, Esman. Go into the body as well. He slips the jab, ducks underneath, gets a couple of body shots in there, and um, the the cavalier attitude of Antwi, where he had his uh, hands down early, seems to have gone now. And uh, he's having to really, really concentrate at the moment. Esman uh, in the center. Couple of jabs coming in. Nice land and a right follows. Jab into the body, swinging. Big overhand, but fall short by uh, Esman. A lot of defensive work being done here by Antwi. Esman uh, just out of range as uh, Antwi's uh, jab falls short. It, it does really feel to me like Esman is the one that's in control in this one. Antwi is coming forward now, though. And he is trying to drive uh, Esman back a little bit. But again, look, he's just not really, uh, he's not throwing anything. It's uh, it's Esman that's uh, getting some shots through. He gets a little hook to the body. And again, the referee coming in, separating these two apart. We're uh, not too far away from the end of round number three. A couple of jabs coming in there by Esman. And again, shots to the body. Good work there by Esman. Just over 30 seconds left to go. And we uh, trying to come forward, but gets clipped. Ooh, good head movement, though. Great head movement by Antwi. Yeah, really good head movement. So uh, Esman uh, throwing quite a bit of stuff there, and Antwi was able to, like, uh, uh, avoid pretty much all of it. Esman, uh, though, going to the body again, into the clinch, little digs to the side of the body as the referee comes in and separates them apart. End of the round. I just feel like uh, it's just Esman. Esman uh, all day long on these, just looking the better fighter to me. Uh, fair play to Tyson Fury for turning up early, said British Sambo Pranks. Wants to enjoy a full night of boxing. Yeah, good day out, isn't it, really? Some good, there's some good stuff on here. I mean, you know, he's going to be ringside for Amanda Serrano. Uh, Esserman is definitely a, a good fighter. As we said, he was on uh, Fury's undercard. Um, so uh, I would imagine he's uh, very aware. Uh, a lot of these, obviously, I don't know exactly who. It, it might be the vast majority are all on uh, Frank Warren's books. So uh, I would imagine uh, Tyson Fury is uh, looking at uh, people that are on uh, Queensbury's books. And uh, they're kind of like, he, he might even have... Uh, Given some of them advice. I don't know that he would have trained with them, but he's probably seen them around. So yeah, he's probably got quite a bit of an interest in some of these uh, some of these fighters. Right, we are uh, underway with round number four. Uh, we've got Antwi trying to come forward. Uh, lovely check left there by Esserman. Comes in, gets the uh, shot off. Pivots out of the way. Coming in with a lovely uh, shot to the body as well. C a couple of jabs, doubling up the jabs there by uh, Antwi. And again, and Antwi looking for a right to the body. It's Esserman that's showing his uh, head movement now. Esserman coming into uh, the body. A couple of uh, jabs coming in. It's always hard from uh, some of these angles to see if they're landing. But I don't think those uh, jabs did land there by Antwi. Esserman in the center. And we coming in as well. They both throw uh, jabs at the same time. Both landing into the clinch. Referee coming in, separating them. And uh, they get pulled apart. Right now we've got uh, Esserman on the, uh, up against the ropes. That was a big left hook there by Antwi though. That one, uh, a big clubbing blow. Looked like it landed. And uh, Esman trying to step in, uh, trying to uh, dig into the body. And uh, steps back, bounces around into the center. He needs to get going here a little bit, Esman, because I feel like this round might be a round that's kind of leaning more to uh, Antwi. That's nice. That's nice. That was a lovely left hand 
And we're seeing some uh, arrogance coming back here into Antwi. His hands have gone back down again. That's a big uh, right hand that uh, goes over from Esserman. He didn't land it. So, uh, yeah, definitely seeing more confidence from uh, Antwi in this round. Esman, though, love that. There was a lovely right to the body and then this big glancing uh, shot that came up. Don't think he got uh, all of it, but uh, he was certainly looking for like an uppercut there. Both guys in the center, I feel like this is probably an Antwi uh, round. Again, uh, he's got Esselman backed up. Good head move, but head the head move, the evasive work of Antwi at times is absolutely brilliant. Coming in, uh, grabbing a hold of his head. Referee's coming in, going to separate them apart. Frank Warren was shouting something there. Closes stages. Uh, body shots coming in by Esman. And we getting backed up against the ropes. Oh, that was a big overhand right there by Esman. Big, big overhand. I think that's an Antwi round. That was good, though. I tell you what, these fights have been very entertaining. The women's fight was really good. The second fight we watched was over in the first round. This fight is uh, good. And here is Amanda Serrano. Amanda Serrano has arrived. I don't believe Jake Paul is there. Um, so uh, Sarah Mafford is uh, there. Amanda Serrano is there. The uh, co-main event. That is for the WBO, WBC, IBF, and IBO Women's Featherweight Championships of the World. Um, yeah, good. A lot at stake in our co-main event. It's just quite one-sided. Amanda Serrano, heavy, heavy favorite for that one. Uh, right, we are underway with uh, round number five. Esselman coming out. And uh, letting his uh, hands go. Go, he's got to be, he's backing up. Uh, and we up against the ropes, digging into the body. And referee coming in, just separating them apart. Jab coming in by uh, and we. Uh, Summit said, Do you know about Chimaev's move to middleweight? I think it's only for the next fight so that he can fight at the year end and he just can't do 170 at the year end. Uh, I, I haven't heard anything about it. No, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, if he did, um, obviously, uh, weight is a massive issue. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they did just move him to uh, a, a, a higher weight. Certainly if he wants to fight for the end of the year. But I haven't heard anything on uh, who his uh, potential next opponent is. Uh, Esselman looking good in round number five. Uh, let me know what uh, you're seeing so far. If you are watching, uh, some of you might not be watching. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be uh, tuning in when we get to the main event. Esselman looking good here. Esselman uh, seems to have Antwi up against the ropes at the moment. This is good work by uh, Esselman. Definitely uh, looking better in this round. I actually thought that last round was an Antwi round. But uh, this round feels like Esman is back to uh, where he was in the early stages of this fight. A couple of jabs coming in, tries to get a uh, right hand through as well into the clinch up against the ropes. Referee coming in and separating both fighters. But I've got uh, Esman up probably about three rounds to one. And I think he's definitely taken this one as well. I think you can tell when uh, Antwi is uh, doing well or feels that he's doing well because he gets really, really confident and his hands drop. Right now, his hands are right back up again. And uh, he's up against the ropes. He really relies a lot, Antwi, on his uh, head movement. Uh, he's got really, really great head movement. And he does rely on that a lot to get him out of trouble. Esman's just really tidy with his work. Really, really tidy. Oh, tries to throw a uh, right hand there. Steps into the middle. Little dig to the body. And again. 
It is a really impressive output by uh, Essman. Uh, great conditioning. He can do this. We, we've seen him do this. He can do this for uh, 12 rounds. His uh, output is very impressive. So that's the end of uh, round number five. Um, days, I've got the flu, says Maria. Me and my sister Grace and my friend. Uh, I'm not going to see the box in. Um, and I know Amanda Serrano is on. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, dude. It sucks, though, when you're not feeling brilliant. When you're not feeling a uh, uh, hundred percent, like you got, just look after yourself, haven't you? You know, get rest and whatever. You don't want a bad situation getting worse. So, chicken soup. That's the answer. That's the answer to every problem. Chicken soup. Some nice bread and chicken soup. Beautiful. Uh, right. Yeah. Much better round that by uh, Essman. I've got it uh, five one to Essman at the moment. Again, if you are joining us, I know I keep saying it, but I can see that people are joining us all the time. Uh, we're around about two and a half hours till we get to our main event tonight. Um, really, this, well, I was going to say this whole thing is uh, about Joe Joyce against Joseph Parker, but I do think the Amanda Serrano match uh, definitely is worth a shout as well. So well, we've got that obviously coming up um, probably in around about two hours, if that. For Amanda Serrano. I suppose it depends uh, how these fights go, really. If these fights are going to go uh, long and go the distance, then uh, obviously those other fights will be a bit more delayed. Uh, right, these two in the uh, center and uh, fighting in the pocket. A couple of jabs doubled up there by uh, Esserman. Jabs coming back by uh, Antwi. But uh, falling short, nicely blocked there by Essman. We've had uh, around about a minute of uh, round number six. I, I must admit, at the moment, it doesn't feel like this has got a finish in it, unless Antwi is going to uh, keep his hands low and Essman catch him with something. But uh, at the moment, it feels like these two uh, could be going the distance. Neither really showing any signs of damage. Uh, neither have really been clipped with anything that big. Uh, it's just I feel that Esman's ahead because he's just landed. More simple as that. So uh, jab coming in there by Esman and uh, tries to throw the right hand. Big overhand right comes back by Antwi but uh, misses. Saying that Antwi's going to have to really start putting some rounds together as Antwi's getting backed up against the ropes. Esserman digging into the body. Referee coming in and separating these two apart. Yeah, nice, good uh, hook shot there by Esserman. Antwi, uh, again, throwing out some jabs. Esserman uh, backing up against the ropes a little bit. Misses with a right hand. Jab coming in. Referee coming in and uh, just having a word. 40 uh, odd seconds to go here. This feels like another Esserman round. It's pretty much rinse and repeat. It's pretty much just the same thing again and again and again. Uh, Antwi doesn't seem to really be uh, mixing it up too much. It's just, you know, jabs really, just really uh, working. Some nice body shots as well by Esserman. Esserman coming in and lands to the body. Uh, a real flurry of shots here as he's got Antwi up in the corner. Referee coming in, separating them apart again. And uh, both fighters uh, right back into the center as uh, Antwi is uh, putting that pressure on. Swings with a big hook shot, but can't land it. And uh, Esman again. Nice lands right at the end of the round. So uh, there we go. That's the end of round number six. And uh, as we said, this one looks like, feels like it could be going the distance. Pickle Chips said main event ring walk time. Uh, main event ring walk time is supposed to be about 10. And uh, we are currently UK time. We are currently at about 25 to 8. So rough ballpark, about 2 hours 20. Rough ballpark. So, uh, yeah, that's where we are. Shakim, hello. Hope you are well. Uh, just over 500 votes right now, over 500 votes. And uh, it is, it's getting closer, actually. 
Joe Joyce was ahead in our poll by 55%. Now it's 53%. Uh, Parker, 42%. And a draw, 5%. So, yeah, it's getting closer. There's uh, only 9, 11% difference. 11% difference between uh, Joyce and Parker in our poll. But uh, you lot think that it will be Joe Joyce. I think that as well. But, uh, yeah, if you are just joining us, vote. Uh, vote, 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 vote. It'd be good to get uh, good to get over a thousand votes by the time we get to the main event. I think there's a, a good chance that we could do that. Uh, right, we've got Ant. We uh, coming forward with a couple of uh, jabs. Essamon uh, on the outside. Excitement building as we're getting to the main event, and uh, the seats certainly filling up. As we said, uh, the ringside area looking fairly full now. Tyson Fury ringside, Frank Warren ringside. Uh, I think we're at, oh, I don't know, actually. I was going to say, I think we're at the point where um, and we might need to finish. I don't know. We're quite at that point. We're going to get there, though. Uh, Summit said the Chumayev news is from tomorrow. They've confirmed a tweet in which he put 185 with this emoji. He's going to fight there, and I think Dana is thirsting for Hamzat against Costa. Oh. I would have uh, I would have Chimaev winning that. Oh, that's a lovely right hand there by uh, M uh, Essaman. Good right hand, Echo Essaman landing uh, a lovely shot. He's got he's got uh, Antwi her Antwi up against the ropes. He's trying to rely on his head movement. He's trying to throw some counters back. essaman has got his head on his uh, chest. He's just getting body shots in. Lovely hooks uh, upstairs as well. Oh, missed. Missed with a hook. A counter misses as well. A couple of jabs. We're right back to the bread and butter. But that was a lovely sequence. Yeah, he does seem to be getting more uh, sluggish here, aren't we? And we does seem to be uh, the these shots just seem to be adding up now for uh, Essamon. Uh into uh, the body, little digs into the body here by uh, Essamon as the two break apart. Coming forward, lovely jab there by uh, Ant we, but uh, it's a little bit too little, too late, uh, to be honest. Yeah, commentator saying that Antwi really does need to start landing some telling shots now. Swinging away there, uh, Antwi. And again, trying to get uh, a hook shot through. But uh, yeah, Essamon again, this for me. Uh, I would definitely have MJF as my boxing. Uh, UFC then at the minute wrestling songs are great when they pop up Covington and Kurt Angle what you'd have MJF's wrestling theme as your boxing entrance music is that what you're saying uh I could probably think of better I do like I don't mind MJF's but I don't know that it's the best wrestling theme I like FTR's actually I don't know that I would choose that if I was boxing but I do like FTR's uh, Pickle Chip said, do you think the main event will be a good fight? And do you think there'll be a knockout? Um, I'm not sure there'll be a knockout. It really depends. Uh, I don't think Joyce knocks. I don't think Parker knocks out Joyce. Um, I think there's maybe a chance that Parker could be knocked out. He's never been knocked out, but he has been knocked down. And I think if he's going to... Um, get tired in the later stages because I don't think he'll be able to match Joyce's engine. So uh, if he does tire in the later stages, it will be interesting because Joyce definitely has got some big shots in him. I, I'm probably leaning more towards decision, though, if I'm being honest. So I'm probably leaning more towards decision. And I think Joyce, I, I do think Joyce, I think Joyce is going to get it done. Big, big fight, as we said, you know, the winner will be a mandatory for Alexander Usyk. And uh, I don't know when we'll see that fight, but big fight. Retribution said, how is integrated sports promotion on Fight TV charging us £20 for Mayweather tonight? 
Well, I suppose they've got to, haven't they? Because I suppose that fight has cost them a lot of money. If you want Mayweather, it's going to cost you. Simple as that. Even if it is an absolute sham of a fight. I think, do you know, it, I think it's only three rounds as well. I think it's only three rounds. <laughs> it's a sham. The whole thing's a sham. It's a sham. It, it, it comes to something when either Mayweather is like, the, even Mayweather, when it is like open workout was uh like you know doing like like working on the heavy bag and he was as he was doing it he was even talking to the camera admitting this is daylight robbery he was even saying this is like legalized bank robbery he's getting paid millions every minute every minute i think he's picking up like 15 to 20 million for what is potentially going to be 9 minutes work potentially it might not even go that long he is levels levels and levels and level in fact it's i can't even tell you how far ahead he is of his opponent it's a borderline immeasurable because this guy is facing has never had a boxing contest and he's taken on one of the greatest of all time so it's a sham can't wait looking forward to it we are going to be doing the stream uh, Debar went rounds with him. Do you think Dubois beats Parker? I think it'd be a really interesting fight. That actually, I think it'd be a really interesting fight. I think uh, Daniel Dubois is quite young. I think he's still learning, picking up experience. I think that the experience of Joe Joyce really showed through in that fight, and I think that he was able to get it done in the end. But Dubois caused uh, Joyce problems. Um, that was not like a one-sided massacre by any means. And I think the scorecards actually had uh, Dubois up, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, Dubois was actually looking quite good against Joe Joyce. But this is what Joe Joyce does. Joe Joyce will not look brilliant at the start. And then as the fight proceeds, he'll start to come through and get a late finish or win on decision. Now, I don't know that he would have won a decision, but what's uh, but it didn't matter because obviously the damage was done to Dubois and his eye socket and and that was it wasn't it so uh, do I think Dubois would win against uh, Joseph Parker right now? I honestly don't know. I, I right now I would say that that would be even closer than this fight that we're getting. I feel like Parker might edge it. I, I feel like Parker's experience as a former world champion might just give him the edge over Daniel Dubois. But Daniel Dubois is um, improving all the time. So it's very interesting in the heavyweight division. Very interesting. I, I, I'm going to say that uh, Parker is kind of in between them in a way. I think that uh, I think Parker probably gets past Dubois, but I think just fall short against uh, Joe Joyce. Right, we are underway with round number nine. And uh, this this fight has been largely similar every round. Um, it's uh, Esselman for me that's uh, winning this. And um, I think that you can give a couple of rounds to uh, Antwi, but that's probably about it. It's probably about it. Um, I either have You're the Best by Joan Bean. Or Hearts on Fire by John Cafferty. Uh, Dort Knight said Mayweather is still the biggest name in boxing. He could fight over toilet rolls in Walmart and people would still pay £10 to see it. He is a big name. And I think, uh, as I said, his next uh, fight against Deji, that will do big, big numbers. I don't think tonight does big numbers. But I think what tonight is, is just a bit of a chilled thing, you know. I think people know it's a sham. I think people know that it's just a money grab thing. But also, I think people um, want to watch some and be entertained. And listen, on a Saturday night, if you've got the option to watch a bit of Floyd Mayweather showing his skills off, you know, there's definitely people out there that are always going to be down for seeing that, myself included, actually. Con considering the option is stream it or don't stream anything, might as well stream it. 
So um, yeah, it's 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 a sham, but uh, I'm sure we can have some fun with it. I think uh, I think on the undercard there's like kickboxing matches as well, though. It's a weird card. The whole thing's weird. Um, but yeah, I think there's like a real mixed bag of like boxing and kickboxing. Mm, I don't think there's MMA. I don't think there's MMA. I couldn't find much information on it, actually. I was trying to do my research on that. I mean, I found quite a bit on this card, but I, I, I could find next to nothing on that. I mean, obviously, I know plenty about Mayweather. Um, and I found out bits about his opponent. But yeah, the, the rest of the card was a bit sketchy. I know one of the fights is Mayweather's bodyguard. That's true. Mayweather's bodyguard, who's never had like a professional fight. He's a bodybuilder and a bodyguard. Uh, he issued an open challenge and some one of, some Japanese guy answered it, like a fighter answered it. But I think there's like 50, 60 pounds difference in weight between them. Uh, and we've got that on the undercard. So it's flipping Bonzo Circus. That's what we've got later. So, yeah, this is very much the um, the professional contests that we're watching here. Later is the, the sideshow. Uh, MJF's theme is copyright free, said Dort Knight. I know you don't love it, but it doesn't mean that you could use it as an intro to your AEW streams or am I being thick? How is it YouTube copyright free? How is it YouTube copyright free? I would imagine that um, the algorithm would pick up on it. How is it copyright free? That doesn't re That doesn't make much sense. If I played like uh, a theme, um, there's a good chance that the video would would it probably wouldn't get copyright strike, but what it would would it would get a copyright claim, um, and that means then you couldn't monetize the video, and there might even be restrictions in certain countries. So I'd imagine that probably would still happen with the MJF um, theme. Uh, right here we go, round number ten. This is Essamon. I know I keep saying it, but this is uh, Essamon for me. And uh, we've got a couple of rounds to go, and I think we are going to go the distance. Uh, Edward said, have you heard uh, You're the Best by John Bean Esposition or Hearts on Fire by John Cafferty or Burning Hearts by Survivor? <sighs> Probably, but um, I, without, without hearing them, I, I couldn't tell you. It's one of those where, like, uh, I probably do know it. I probably heard him on the radio or heard him on, like, various compilation uh, things. But, like, off the top of my head, You're the Best. It makes me think of You're the Best Thing by Style Council. So, I don't know. It doesn't ring a bell, that one. Hearts on Fire does ring a bell, but I couldn't sing it. Burning Hearts doesn't ring a bell either by Survivor, but I know the band. So it makes me think that it's probably on a compilation and I probably have heard it. So it's a fun conversation, isn't it? Me just saying songs I think I know and songs I don't think I know. Uh, British Soundball Pank said, I'm charging £20 for people to watch me listen to music later. Bargain. Uh, Enigma says, hello, hello. Hope you are well. Rich Bush said, I don't think I've ever spent £40 on two pay-per-views in one day. That's true. That's That does sting, in all fairness. That does sting. Uh, Summit said, I'd have an entrance in the UFC. It would be Stone Cold theme. That's, yeah, fair play. Fair play. Both guys uh, doing all right here with a minute left in round number 10. Neither guy in any trouble. This really feels like we're going the distance. And we stand in his ground in the center. Essamon on the outside. Trying to uh, work into the body. AD said, what is the main event uh, ring walk? Main event ring walk in around about roughly ballpark two hours time. Two hours time. So uh, roughly two hours time. We will be uh, underway or getting our ring walk. 
Uh, nice uh, little uh, shot to the body there by uh, Essamon. I mean, that is what everyone's waiting for. <laughs> Everyone is just waiting for the main event, really. Or, or Amanda Serrano. And we uh, stand in his ground in the center as the uh, bell sounds. So, uh, right, we are about to go to round number 11. I must, I must admit, I'm kind of ready for this uh, fight to end now. Um, you are the best is in the karate kids. Burning hearts is in Rocky. So is no easy way out, says Edwards. William said, have you heard my love making sounds? And if so, can you share it with the chat? Have you heard my love making sounds? Is that the whole, is that the name of the song? My love making sounds. I've never heard of that. I've heard of, um... My Endless Love. That's a classic. Uh, AD said Joyce is going to take a lot of punches, but his chin is something else. Kevin said Ivan Drago is the best Rocky villain. Uh, right. The commentators are saying that this is going to be another night of success for Echo Essamon. So it uh, seems like they have got Essamon. Uh, winning this quite uh, handily as well. Um, at this stage, he just needs to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid and get caught with anything, to be honest. Um, I am waiting for days to take his hat off so that I can sing, you can leave your hat off. Nice. A classic. Uh, Redemption said, have you ever done classic wrestling pay-per-view watch-alongs yes uh we have we've done quite a few on the channel um i'm not crazy about doing them if i'm being honest i think that they are pretty fun but the problem is i also think they get dated quite quickly because obviously you you are talking about the show that you're watching but a lot of people want to talk about things that are happening at the time as well so you know, like right now, if we was to do one today, the conversation undoubtedly would at some point, if not quite a lot, uh, would turn to the white rabbit stuff. And obviously that's going to get dated, isn't it? Because we will find out eventually who is behind that. And so if you was to go back and watch some old ones, you know, there's every chance that we're watching, I don't know, WrestleMania 5. But yet the conversation at times will be, who do you think is going to win? the main event of WrestleMania 35, because that might have been what we were building towards at the time. So I, they're, they're kind of fun things to do there and then in the moment, but they don't have much value after the fact. To be honest, not, a, not many streams do. No, a lot of live streams don't have much value after the fact. I don't, I, you know, no one goes back and watches like my old Raw or SmackDown or NXT streams or uh, UFC streams or anything like this channel, I suppose, in a way is very much here and now it lives in the moment, which is kind of cool. But it would be nice if some of those videos like did a bit of work and actually had people like go into them uh, rather than just like, you know, constantly the here and now. So uh, I must admit, like uh, that kind of makes me go, oh, man, if I'm going to have some spare time, I would rather uh, put my time into some videos that people are, you know, going to go back to or going to enjoy and maybe want to rewatch. And you, you just don't get that with streams. You don't get that with streams at all. Essamon uh, swinging away, wrestling with Andy. Shout out to you. Talking about uh, content that people enjoy rewatching. Wrestling with Andy, one of the biggest and best at uh, doing like review videos, uh, years in review, recap videos, if you want to, uh, biographies, um, if you uh, haven't checked him out. Who doesn't know Wrestle With Andy by now? Uh, do you think there's a chance Floyd could ever get beat at this point if he keeps doing these fights? Well, uh, to be honest, these uh, exhibition uh, fights, I don't think get scored. So... <laughs> He can't lose, to be honest, unless he gets knocked out like three times or whatever. I'm, I'm sure that's how it works. I think it's like 
if you get knocked out three times, then it gets ended. But even then, I, I, I mean, like, I suppose in the eyes of the public opinion, in the eyes of public opinion, he's lost. But I don't know if it counts as an actual loss. And it certainly doesn't go on his professional record. So that's that's wild, isn't it? Mayweather fights tonight. If if he loses, he'll still be 50, you know. Here we go. Uh, final round. So, uh, yes, I do think there is a chance that someone could get the better of him eventually. But he cannot lose. Literally, I don't think he can lose. It's kind of like how when he faced Logan Paul, he was miles away, the better fighter, uh, Floyd. But um, it just went the distance and that was it. There was no judges. There was no official decision. And that's why Logan Paul can walk around going, I went the distance with Floyd. Had there have been judges, he would have lost. Logan would have lost quite comfortably, very comfortably. But um, there wasn't. It was just, you know, an exhibition. That's that. On to the next one. So, yeah, uh, if you needed another reason to not bother tuning in later, there we go. Uh, James said only stalkers would go back and watch old streams. Uh, yeah, I, d I don't know. I, I, there's not really much point. Is that I mean, the only the only reason that I think it would be good to go back and watch old streams is if you were, say, new to the channel and you wanted to look and see how like the reactions were and the community's reactions were cuz that's that's what's great about having like the chat on screen is it's not just my reactions to things it's your reactions to things as well so you can kind of go back and go oh, what was it like when Cody arrived at WrestleMania well the reactions there isn't it what was it like when Edge was in the Rumble you can go back to that what was the reaction to, I don't know, there might be some random segment on a random Raw. Well, it'll be there on the channel. So it's good for that. But no one ever does that. And I can't say I blame them. Uh, right, uh, referee coming in, separating, and we've got 50-odd uh, seconds to go. Uh, Hoff said, I go back to watch some reactions to the moments like Cody at Mania. That's interesting. Shout out to you. I can tell you you're in the minority. Those uh, streams, certainly. Um, I think actually, in all fairness, like the pay-per-view streams, I think they get revisited sometimes, but Raws and Smackdowns never. Once they're done, they're done pretty much. But uh, appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Appreciate everyone joining us tonight as well. As I said, normally we would be here doing UFC. No UFC this week, so uh, we're doing boxing. Really pleased we can do this boxing. This is this is definitely a boxing uh, uh, contest I was hoping I would get a chance to watch. So really pleased to be here doing it. There we go. End of the fight. And uh, I must admit, this one sort of lost me towards the end. I think when it became apparent that Esterman had won it on the judges' scorecards then it just comes down to can um, and we get a finish and he never looked like getting it. Uh, Summit said, I watched your UFC 279 stream again and again. It's unforgettable. Uh, there's a score to settle. You remember right. Uh, Summit, shout out to you. I remember uh, you uh, uh, lacking a profile picture. I do remember that. It's something the community still talk about a lot, actually. The disappointment and how it stings. Uh, Ronaldo just got horribly injured. He busted his nose open and is bleeding. Bleeding useless. <laughs> That's probably not true. Uh, our next fight is coming up uh, soon. Michael Magnesi. Kakachi. So uh, Magnesi against Kakachi for the IBO Super Featherweight Championship of the World. The uh, from Belfast, Ireland, Kakachi taking on Magnesi from uh, Italy. I don't know where in Italy, but he's Italian. The Italian Stallion. 
Well, we are waiting a long time here. Here we go. Why are we waiting so long for this? How hard is it to say yes and one? Oh, Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Judges score can't. 115. 114. 117, 112, that's better. 116, 113. Still! Esselman gets it done. Unanimous decision. Some of them were closer again. Some of these have been really close tonight. Really close. Esselman gets it done, and uh, Frank Warren is on his feet applauding. I think he's uh, really pleased with that one. So uh, there we go. Esselman gets the job done. Uh, Edward said, I go back and watch your streams. Guys, you don't have to rewatch the streams. That's not what we were saying. I'm just saying that uh, if I do get any spare time, I do uh, like to try and find... Uh, things that can go onto the channel that people will uh, want to revisit. Because I do know that the streams have only got limited revisitability. <laughs> I've gone with it. It's the word I've gone with. Uh, Dortnight said, Days, what if Bray Wyatt got Triple H to edit his head? Edit his head? I don't know what that means. And QR... Dort Knight, are you drunk today? I just find a lot of your comments today make even less sense than they normally make. And it's not even normally a high bar, in all fairness. It's normally a low bar. But um, I don't know. Is everything all right? Is everything all right, mate? Let's have, I'm going to I'm gonna see. Like, I've got it here. Days, what if Bray Wyatt got Triple H to edit his head? Not a clue. And QR codes into old wrestling events in the crowd from years gone by with no clue so that we've got to research and investigate. So what if they have been like putting QR codes in old ones, old shows? I mean, someone would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. I don't know. And unless they've um, put them in retrospectively. Is that what you mean by edit? I like, had gone back in and edited them in. I mean, I don't think that's happened. I could do that maybe with my old stream. No, I can't. I can't because there's no way of me taking them down and putting them back up again without having to, like, literally re-upload them uh, and start from zero again. So, uh, yeah, I can't do that. Uh, Kelly said, are you going to do streams for England's World Cup matches or have you stopped doing football? No, we are going to do England's World Cup matches. I wanted to try and do all of the matches, but to be honest, I'm starting to look at it now thinking, do we need to be doing Iran against Wales? Like, I don't know. Do we need to be doing Ghana against whoever's in Ghana's group? So, um, I mean, I've, got, I've still got an interest in watching them personally because there's every chance that I'll have players for... Uh, my fantasy team because I'm sure there will be like a fantasy World Cup game. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm a bit torn on it as to how much we do, but undoubtedly we're going to do the England games. I mean, look, we've got to because England are going to win the World Cup, aren't they? So um, I want to be here for that. Uh, Dort Knight said, Hayden, why are you attacking me? Uh, that's because Hayden is a legend and I fully support Hayden uh, attacking. Uh, Hayden said, uh, I've only just got here and they said you're drunk is something all right. Go on, hey, go on, Hayden. Stick it into him. Go on, Hayden. Go on, go on. Get him, Hayden. Pop, 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 pop. Give him the old one too. Tell him he looks fat. Tell him he looks fat, Hayden. 
Hayden go, uh, Dot Knight, I just need you to know you look fat today. Yeah! Pop, 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 pop. Give him the old... Knockout blow. Knockout blow. Your mum's ugly. Ah! Uh, Margo said, Joyce is a bad boxer. Uh, you can tell when he goes to jab just by watching his foot. Yeah, I mean, look, his actual boxing skill is not the greatest in the world, but his chin is, and um, his conditioning in is as well. So he's definitely uh, got the ability to get a uh, victory tonight. It's just, what's Parker going to look like? He's been training with Tyson Fury, hasn't he? So I don't know. I, the unknown of uh, Joseph Parker, uh, the unknown, like, is he going to be able to put it all together? I, I feel like Parker has got some real skill. It's just that his balance of his conditioning and his striking ability and his defense and his footwork and his head movement, like balancing all of that and putting it together in the perfect package, that that to me is what he struggles with. So if he can, like, you know, come in, get his shots off, get out there, have good fight IQ, maybe that's maybe that's maybe that's it. Maybe Parker has got the skills. He just doesn't have the world class fight IQ to put it all together during a fight. And if he's been helped with that by Tyson Fury, then we could see something special. Yeah, we could see something quite good. Uh, la la la. We've got a match in the chat. Yeah. Uh, James said we are petrified of Hayden. Listen, I'll set him on you next, James. Yeah. Hayden's 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 uh, going to go around and deal with problems in the chat for me now. If anyone steps out of line, I'm going to send Hayden after him. Yeah. Uh, so it said Day's been putting the beef aside. Uh, I've watched every stream at least twice with my friends uh, and I show them your reactions, thoughts, and I love watching those moments. That's very kind, Summit. That's very kind. I really appreciate that, dude. It is a real shame that you couldn't find it within your heart to get a profile picture when we added you to that game. But as you said, we're putting that aside. Um, and I think it's probably at the point now where we really should not speak about it. Just because, like, you know, it brings up a lot of bad memories, but it's a pretty easy thing to do, isn't it? Get a profile picture. I mean, any image, any image really would have done. Just something, you know. I mean, I've moved on from it. I've moved on. And it's good to hear that you have as well, Summit. So shout out to you, buddy. I appreciate the support. Uh, Bradley said, I've changed my mind about who wins this every five minutes. Uh, well, I can tell you that we are sneaking our way to nearly 700 votes. We're two votes away. Come on, people. Two votes away. We're one vote away. We can do this. We can do this. One vote away. One vote. I'm not going to look until we get to 700. There we go. Boom. 701 and, uh, oh my God, it's get look at this. It's getting uh, closer and closer and closer. So um, Joyce, 52%. Parker, 42%. And a draw, 6%. So 10% in it. You lot think that, um, you lot think that Joyce is going to uh, be victorious. And uh, I do as well. So there we go. Uh, Joyce said, Jamie, uh, Days is stirring the pot for Halloween. Oh, no, uh, if anything, I think what you just witnessed there was me building bridges. That's what I was doing. Uh, Days, you never introduced us to your new state-of-the-art microphone. Can you do a show and tell? To be honest, uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's a bit annoying because the old microphone I used to be able to have here and I could move around and talk and it would pick it up. I don't know what these, I don't know what they're called, right? One's like a dynamic microphone. The other's a cardinoid microphone. I don't understand any of that. But basically this one, you've got to be relatively close to it and right in front of it for it to pick it up. But it does pick it up a lot nicer. 
But the problem is that when you make P sounds, not peeing, actually peeing, but like, you know, Peter picked a pile of peppers or whatever. Um, this this microphone tends to like not appreciate that. Uh, plosives, I believe they're called. Uh, it doesn't deal with it very well. So I've had to buy a new cover and it doesn't look, I don't think it looks very good. This is the old one and it's like, it looks a lot nicer. This one just looks like you've picked it up off a market stall. Doesn't even look like the right shape. It's all at like a weird angle and everything. And it just looks, it looks cheap. And in all fairness, it was cheap. It was only $9.99. But I think it's doing, actually, it's doing a bit of a better job. If I say like Peter picked peppers on a pier. P P P P P. It's uh it it's not clipping as much as uh this one does. So yeah, that's if you wanted uh, a microphone update, that's the latest microphone update. This arrived today, so uh, we haven't used this before. So uh, if you if you have sat sat there going, wow, the microphone sounds so much better than yesterday. That's why. That's why. Um, but you didn't think I'd go into that level of detail, did you? But then you have to remember there is nothing else going on in my life. You have to remember that right now, getting a new microphone cover is one of the biggest things that can happen to me. So you're welcome. Yeah. If you're going to ask, I'm going to answer. Uh, British Soundboard Pranks says uh, you need to hook up an XLR cable to the bad boy mic for the full experience. You don't. Rookie mistake there, British Soundboard Pranks, and I'm disappointed in you because you've got soundboard in your name. But I actually watched uh, a YouTube video, so that makes me an expert. And what they did is they uh, tried the microphone with XLR and they tried it through USB and the... Um, the difference in sound that came out was negligible. There was nothing in it. It was, uh, this thing works really well through USB or through XLR. Maybe if you XLR it, put it into um, a mixer or an audio interface, like you can maybe change levels a lot more. But there's a lot of like digital stuff you can do with this. Oh, I mean, look, guys, we could sit here talking about microphones all night long. I know that's why you've clicked on this stream. Uh, welcome to microphone days. Um, but instead, I think it's probably best we focused on uh, Magnesi against Kakachi in the IBO Super Featherweight or for the IBO Super Featherweight Championship. Uh, we are getting closer. We are now less than two hours away. We've got one hour, 45 minutes to go. Big time Charlie Potatoes has fallen asleep. Absolutely. I don't blame you. I'm on the verge myself. Um, you replied on my kind lines makes you remember Connor's lines. When you disrespect someone's kindness, you are going to learn, says Summit. Listen, I, I've got a whole life of disrespecting people's kindness and I haven't learned anything yet. So, uh, Rich Bush said, can you tell us the brand name of the microphone uh, showing on the front, please? It's Shaw. Sure, that name again. Sure. Uh, this microphone's actually built for live streaming, and that's why they've got their brand right down because they know that it, this this microphone will be on quite a few cameras. So yeah, not cheap, couple of hundred pound, but it is nice. It's a nice sound. Um, but 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 just Nick, don't be nice to Days. Was just Nick nice to me? That's nice. Shout out to you, Just Nick. Wow. Not only do you take your time to write out people's names, you also give mic updates. What a legend. I'm, I'm, listen, Just Nick, I am so giving. I am so giving. That's all I'm here for, just to give, 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 give. That's all I do every day of my life for hours and hours and hours. I just give, give, give. I'm a flipping hero. I don't know if they do like the St. George's Cross or uh, the Medal of Honor for, like, YouTubers. But how I've not received that yet is beyond me. I just keep suffering in silence. Right. Here we go. Uh, Soul Star said, please, no more mic talk. I hear you. Message received. How ironic 
that I'm the one with the microphone, but Soul Star, I heard your message louder. Loud and clear, as loud and as clear as this short MV7 microphone. And and you don't even have one, but message. Well, you might have one, but my point is you're not using it right now. Maybe you are. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, right, here we go. Round number one. Uh, Magnesi, uh, 21 wins, 13 knockouts. Uh, he is the slightly smaller boxer, and uh, he's got good punching power. Uh, can lack a little bit in the way of defense. Um, likes to do lots of work in the pocket. Gets in quite close. What we'd be in the smaller fighter. Um, I, I, I actually believe that he is the underdog, believe it or not. He's undefeated. And he's the underdog Magnesi at plus 145. Kakachi coming in at minus 175. So uh, this is one to definitely keep an eye on. And as we said, we've got about uh, one hour, 45 minutes now till we get to the main event. Summit said, UFC India, you're going to learn for the first time. Bob said, give this man a medal of honor. Absolutely. Absolutely, you're right. Even if it's just a video, copy of the video game, I'd be happy with that. Uh, we've got uh, Kakachi on the outside at the moment. Uh, Magnesi is the one standing his ground in the center. It's a lovely uh, right hand there by uh, Kakachi. I love the furry sides of uh, Magnesi's shorts. He's got some lovely furry shorts. Love that uh, right hand there by uh, Kakachi, who's uh, backing up a little bit. Hands, uh, good hand speeds. Oof. These two uh, breaking apart. Kakachi, again, just trying to get his shots off. Uppercut misses. A couple of jabs coming in there. Uh, Magnesi is uh, coming forward, getting clipped. As we said, Magnesi likes to fight in the pocket, and he is keeping it kind of close, working the body. Hook shot coming in. Lovely head movement there by Kakachi into the clinch. These two breaking apart. Jab coming in there by Kakachi. Couple of uh, left-hand jabs, doubling them up. This can go 12 rounds, 12 rounds. I don't know how many more fights we've got after this, actually. I don't know how many more fights we've got. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Well, there's got to be more. There's got to be more than just Serrano, hasn't there? Body shot coming in there by uh, Magnesi. 25 uh, seconds left to go. I, this might be Magnesi. Quite close, this. Magnesi definitely more the aggressor, but some lovely counter shots here by Kikachi. Magnesi. Uh, Going into the body. Got Kikachi up against the uh, ropes. Oh, wow. 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 That was brilliant by Kikachi. That was great. Like jab, jab. Sent in a right hand as well. And back to it. There's about four or five shots in a row where Magnesi at the end was like pop, 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 pop. Just getting like smashed. Straight down the middle. Pop, 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 pop. That was really good. Mm. Uh, if you ask, is if you ask, is his chair from PC World or Office Depot? I am off, says Sir Talk Knight. Oh, is that all it takes? Right, round number two coming up soon. Uh, Dallo has put Portugal at one nil. Who are they? Who's Portugal playing? Uh, Gabriella said, "Go, Magnesi." Uh, Ernest said, if they ever give out a golden beanie, you would be at the top of the list. That's very kind. I really appreciate that. And uh, you're absolutely right as well. Uh, right. Here we go. Uh, Junior said, I went to school with Joe. He was a bad person. Uh, do you think this fight will be even or one-sided? Which fight? This fight or the main event? Um, I think this fight is going to be quite close. I have to, I think both will be close. 
I think both will be close, and I think the odds reflect that. I think the main event will be close. But I just think that uh, Parker's never been knocked out. Um, and I think that Joe Joyce has uh, never lost. So it's difficult to see someone get in a finish. If there is to be a finish, I think it'll be Joyce late. But I'm thinking um, the distance is looking quite good. Decisions looking quite good. Right, uh, these two being uh, broken apart. Jab coming in. Oh, good, good hands. Oh, lovely uppercut there by uh, Kakachi. A couple of uh, jabs again there by Kakachi. Shot coming into the body. First round was quite close in this one. These two uh, breaking apart. Seeing uh, Big John, Big John Fury at ringside, chatting with uh, Frank Warren. Nice uh, shot to the body there by Kakachi. Kakachi uh, trying to get an uppercut through on uh, Magnesi. Feel like Kakachi is looking the better in this round. He's getting his shots off and then getting out of there. Good uh, lateral movement by Kakachi. Again, nice. The uppercut's causing uh, real damage. Uppercut coming back now there by Magnesi. Into uh, the clinch. Kakachi uh, driving Magnesi back. Couple of little shots getting through there. He's trying to keep him at uh, distance, Kakachi. He's trying to make sure that he's uh, keeping him back. He could use that jab as a bit more of a range finder. He is starting to do that, actually. We are, we are starting to see him just putting it out there a little bit more, just trying to keep uh, Magnesi back a bit. Yeah, looking for a big hook shot there. That was such a big hook shot. It kind of went all the way around the uh, AO arena. A couple of uh, little hooks coming in by Magnesi, who uh, loves getting in close, as we said. Work in the body when we can. That's where he does a lot of his damage. Getting in close in the pocket. Pop, pop, pop. Just really digging into the ribs. End of the second round. Uh, these are close rounds. I do like Kakachi, though. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Kakachi. Close, though. Uh, Parker is getting knocked out tonight, says uh, Arsenal Life. Edward said, if YouTube ever did a royal thing like a king and queen, you would be voted for king after KSI. That's nice. Thank you. Um, shout out to the greatest of all time. Uh, resting days. Hope you are well. Rick, shout out to you, dudes. Appreciate the uh, uh, kind support, kind words. Michelle, hello, hello, hello. Says, uh, hello, everyone in the chat. I'm not doing very well. What's up, Michelle? What is up? Let us know. Let us, we might be able to fix it. Quite good at that. Is it women issues? Because I'm good at that as well. I'm just a fountain of knowledge. I know more about women than women know about women, so... I can, whatever, whatever your problem is, mate. Is it boys? Is it guys? Is it boy problems? I know all about that. Girl problems, know about that as well. This community is like a supercomputer. We can pretty much solve anything. I'm amazed that we haven't dealt with world hunger yet. Uh, we are underway with uh, round number three, and uh, we are seeing Kakachi uh, letting his hands go a little bit. Uh, we've had 800 votes. 800 votes is what we've had so far. Uh, Summit said, probably the funniest moment of you I remember is when you did Dewdrop's theme, when I said Days and Dewdrop would be a perfect tag team. I've still got dreams of that tag team coming to fruition, so never forget. Never forget. Uh, Retribution said, Michelle, I hope you feel better with whatever is bothering you. I am, I would like to second that as well, Michelle. I would like to second that. 
Uh, Hayden said last night I put the clocks forward because today is daylight savings in New Zealand. When does UFC start? I, I don't think there is. Uh, U- I don't think there's UFC this week. I think it's just this, unfortunately. I say unfortunate only because UFC's uh, great fun. Uh, Days knows so much about women. That is why his single, uh, that's a choice. And also the amount of streaming we do, I'd literally have to be playing out my relationship live on stream because I don't get any spare time to do anything else. It'd be like the flipping Truman show. Uh, Magnesi uh, digging into uh, the Bodzy. Uh, just Nick said, pretty sure half the chat know about boy problems. Dork Knight said, I know we have got underlying beef. Uh, you are the boss and I am the chat's heel, but I believe we can coexist. There's an unspoken respect that we shall never speak about. I like that, Dork Knight. I like that a lot. I agree. We will never speak about it, but uh, I do confirm that it is there. So, Kakachi uh, in the center as uh, Magnesi is coming forwards. Referee coming in and separating these two. I like Kakachi here. I, I've got Kakachi uh, leading for anyone interested. For anyone interested in the boxing we're watching, uh, I think Kakachi's in the lead. Uh, I think it's quite close. It might be like two rounds to one. Uh, LJ said UFC cancelled because the Parker-Joyce fight is so big. No point having UFC when the world will be watching these two juggernauts going at it. Uh, What time is Nathan uh, Heaney coming out? That could be next, actually, against uh, uh, Jack Flatley. That could be coming up next. I don't know. uh, I'm kind of all at sea as to how many more fights we've got coming up. Um, They haven't actually given us like a rundown. There was one earlier, but they haven't showed it since. Right, here we go. We are uh, back underway. Let's get the flipping clock going. Round number four. So uh, Magnesi is onto the front foot. Yes, so there are, is there three fights left? Three, potentially three fights left. I think there are three fights left after this, including the main event. So Nathan Heaney against uh, Jack Flatley will be next for the IBO International Middleweight title. Then we get Amanda Serrano taking on uh, Sarah Nafut. Then it is our main event for the interim WBO World Heavyweight Championship. Joe Joyce takes on Joseph Parker. So um, I think there's three fights to go, uh, including our co-main event and main event. Uh, Days, are you getting an OnlyFans? I uh, had to shut it down. It was too popular. Yeah, I had to shut it down. It wasn't fair. There was no one was subscribing to the other channels on there. So they asked me to leave. So I just do this now. Uh, The Juggernaut says, uh, good fella. Joe Joyce. Joe, the Juggernaut Joyce. Referee coming in and separating these two apart. Crowd, as we said, uh, building up. We are about an hour and a half. Do you remember when there was like three hours to go? We're at an hour and a half now away from uh, the ring walks for the main event. So we are uh, getting closer. Nocto, hello, hello. Hope you are well. Hey, everyone, let's go, said Nocto. Excitement's building. This is good. Seeing more people jumping in and joining us as we're getting closer Uh, to that main event. Uh, I can tell you we're at the dizzying heights. I mean, honestly, we're so high. I I feel like we've got a nosebleed Um, of 146 likes. 
So, uh, wow. 146 likes. What a time to be alive. If you are watching and you uh, haven't left a like, leave a like. Uh, I mean, I don't know what more I need to do. We had a great conversation about microphones. Um, we went we went really in depth. And uh, if that didn't do it, I don't know what will. Magnesi with some uh, digs to the body and Kikacha standing in the center. Lovely little uppercuts coming in. Can see some damage uh, on the face of Magnesi. Just, uh, it was uh, good. Both guys really going at it. Uh, we are backstage with Amanda Serrano. There is Serrano. Getting ready. Still got a uh, little bit of time before her uh, co-main event fight coming up. Um, if Days had OnlyFans, it would just be pictures and videos of him with no hat on. Maybe me with just a hat on. There is Sarah Mafut. That looks like a fun game, doesn't it? She's got these... Uh, I've never seen him do that before. In a warm-up, have these lights on a table, and when it lights up, pop, 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 pop. She's uh, keeping the brain sharp, keeping the reflexes sharp. Right, we've got uh, Magnesi uh, coming forward. It's got uh, Kakachi back up against the ropes. That was a lovely uh, left hand to the body there by uh, Magnesi. That was nice. Uh, Days, I would put my ego and anger aside and say, please sing the Do Drop theme song once again. Well, uh, I, I can see that happening, but I can't see it happening on this boxing stream, to be honest. I feel like many people joining us right now are joining us for uh, very professional uh, boxing coverage, and that is what we cater for. I don't know if singing the Dewdrop uh, theme song is going to tally with that. So uh, uh, I, I'm going to say uh, not right now. But never say never. And actually, uh, Summit, disappointing you is one of my favorite things to do. So just all works for me, really, to be honest. Uh, Parker is going to win, said uh, Umi Kual. Umi Kual. Uh, Reg Buston said, I don't think William would be opposed to the idea of you playing out your relationship online. Okay. No, no I agree. Uh, we are uh, halfway through round five. Oh, that was a lovely shot there by uh, Magnesi. Lovely shot by Magnesi. These two, uh, again, in the clinch. And uh, little digs into the body. Referee coming in. Lovely uh, body shots there by Magnesi as uh, Kakachi is trying to get some right hands through. Oh, and he does. Snaps back the head of Magnesi there. Swinging away into the body. Referee coming in, looking to separate these two apart. Referee just having a word. Jab coming in there by Kakachi. And, um, yeah, commentators saying that Magnesi seems like he might be slowing. He's not closing the gap down as aggressively as he was in the early stages. But uh, he is still closing the gap because we see these two in the clinch. Little dig to the body there by uh, Magnesi. Few uh, strikes coming in there by uh, Kikachi. Referee coming in and separating these two apart. Um, the hat and the microphone cover, yes. Swing and a miss. There we go. Close. There's some close uh, rounds in this one, you know. There's damage on the face of Kakachi now. Blood coming down from the left hand, uh, the left eye. So, uh, yeah, this is close. Feel like after six, it might be like four, two. 
to uh, Kakachi, but some people might have it 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Retribution said, I was wondering, would you invite us to your... Would you invite us to your... I mean, I can almost certainly answer that. Uh, wedding, if not in person, then virtually at least. Well, that's not something that needs to be considered at this stage in my life, to be honest. So... Um, would I invite you to a wedding if I was to get married? I would have to say almost certainly no. Almost certainly no. Um, but who knows? Uh, right, we've got uh, Magnesi uh, coming forwards. Um, but, but, but has AJ lost his pen? I feel something will be announced one way or another on Monday. AJ Anthony Joshua. I I don't know what the latest is, to be honest on that. It's funny because, like, the contracts were sent through, weren't they? Uh, and I haven't heard Eddie Hearn actually saying anything about it. Just having a look right now. See if there is anything, but I, I don't think there is. I think the last I heard was that contracts contracts had come through. Um, terms were all agreed, and it, it was looking like it was just going to be signed, and that was that. Uh, lots of these rounds are close. Yeah, no, nothing. Can't see uh, any news. I, you, you are absolutely right. There is going to need to be an announcement soon. There's going to need to be an announcement soon. Uh, Kikachi uh, backing up. Um, Days, can we get a full review of your streaming equipment? I, I feel like we uh, did microphone on this stream, so. Uh, I'm sure we can do a, a, a different item on each stream and uh, eventually you'll get the full picture. Uh, in many ways, I'm teasing you just like the White Rabbit. Uh, you know, why give everything out uh, all at once? That's what Mama said. Uh, what's with all the talk about days and settling down, said Hoff Sports Media. And what's with all this talk that's not boxing related? That's my thoughts. Guys, this is a hardcore boxing channel. Can we stop talking about weddings? Uh, lovely hands by uh, Kikachi. Referee coming in, separating these two. Magnesi coming in, letting his hands go. Kikachi on the outside. Nice uh, shots going straight down the middle there by Kikachi. They were getting through some lovely jabs. Ringside is pretty full now. There are, there are a few empty seats, but uh, as we said, constantly filling up. We're around about, we think, one hour, 20 minutes from the main event ring walks. Again, it really does depend how long these fights are going for. This one in particular feels like it could be going the distance. I don't think Amanda Serrano's fight is going to go the distance, uh, in all fairness. So uh, I don't think that's going to need the full allocation of time. Uh, Retribute said, I saw a video of Tyson Fury swearing at Joshua, saying he's delayed the signing of the contract, which is why it's taken so long. But Fury said he will be fighting on December 3rd regardless. Uh, right now, Carl Frampton has got Kakachi up by one. He's got Kakachi up by one. Uh, so I've got Kikachi leading. I think it's close as well. So, uh, yeah, Cole Frampton has got it up by one. Okay, here we go. Round number seven is underway. This is a nice little contest now. Uh, really not much between these two. Oh, 
here we go. I found some up from Manchester Evening News. Tyson Fury has given Anthony Joshua an ultimatum saying the contract which has been sent needs to be signed by Monday or the fight will be off. Uh, we'll know by Monday, because if it's not been done by Monday, I will be moving on. I'm not waiting around for some guy who has lost three of his last five fights. He's lucky that I am giving him this world title uh, shot. I don't mind chucking him a bone, but I don't want them to start dictating stuff to me. He is an invited guest at my party, so it is my rules. If you want to play the game, Come to the banquet and take your seat. There we go. Monday. Monday, Monday. Uh, do boxing or MMA girls smell as good when they fight as they do in the wild? I don't think anything smells better than a wild girl, to be honest. They're still uh, top tier. So, um, no, I'd have to say they, they probably don't smell as great. But um, I think finding yourself um, a, a wild girl in this modern age is a very difficult thing to do. So you just have to take what you can get sometimes. Uh, swinging away, uh, Magnesi in there. Again, close quarters as uh, Kakachi pushes him away. Lovely uh, left-hand jab. Magnesi coming forward and uh, into the clinch. Referee just having a word as uh, Kakachi pushes him back. We're uh, into the final minute of round number seven. Nice uh, shots coming in. We are uh, approaching 1,000 votes. We do still need 95 uh, votes, but uh, keep your votes coming in. Keep on liking, keep on voting. Uh, it really is uh, appreciated. As we said, this stream is kind of having to be a UFC stream this week, which is fine. Nice uh, hook shot there by uh, Magnesi. Kakachi up against the ropes, digging into the body by uh, Magnesi. A lot of these strikes just whisk missing and uh, referee coming in. End of the round. Just listening to the Kakachi corner. Uh, Days, are you going to cover all World Cup games or just England? Um, I wanted to be. I wanted to be all over the World Cup, but. I'm starting to think that just doing England games might make more sense. We don't really, I mean, we have to be, I have to be honest, we do not have a community that I think is going to really be too bothered about watching much of the World Cup, sadly. I think we was building something quite nice in regards over on the football channel. But I think on this channel, I think most people are subscribed to this channel for wrestling and UFC. And so football is, you know, quite low down on people's uh, priority list. So I don't know, trying to do too much of the World Cup might not be the wisest thing for me to do on this channel. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be watching England games. So, uh, yeah, we'll definitely do those, but we'll have a look. We'll see. I don't know. But, uh, I can see, uh, England games, all both semifinals and final as uh, a guarantee minimum guarantee minimum. And then I wouldn't be surprised if there was more that were dropped in as well. I love the world cup. I want to watch as much of it as possible. But I have to be, have to, you know, think about it. Should it, should that come at the expense of other things, you know? Referee having a word with uh, Magnesi. Now he's having a word with uh, Kikachi. Nice uh, right down the middle there by uh, Magnesi. Straight down the middle. 
We've got uh, one minute 40 as uh, Magnesi uh, steps in. Let's his uh, hands go swinging around. We've got uh, Kakachi on the outside into the clinch. Those look like back of the head shots. Those shots by Magnesi uh, uh, did look like they were going around the back of the head. Kakachi uh, certainly not complaining of it, though. Kakachi letting his hands go. Nice uh, head movement into the clinch as the referee comes in, separates them apart. As we said, this one really feels like it's going to go the distance and it really feels like it's going to be quite close. It's quite a scrappy little affair. So, uh, Nocto said the World Cup is one of those where people that don't watch football usually watch. So it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's just hard to know, like, how, what to do, how much to do. Um, yeah, it's hard to know. Uh, did you watch the Sidemen charity match? I didn't know. I don't watch the Sidemen, to be honest. I, I, I mean, like, I watch um, the boxing stuff. But that's that's all. Uh, uh, this show, I've set myself a target of watching every minute of every game of this show's World Cup, says Retribution. Uh, I can see that uh, Simon Jordan is at ringside. He uh, works for Talk Sports. Uh, nice uh, shots. Um, I, it looks to me like Kakachi is... Uh, t oh, nice. That was good by Kakachi. Just as I was saying, that uh, looks like... Looks like he was uh, tiring. Yeah, Kakachi was over by the ropes. He had his hands down. Magnesi was like right in front of him. And out of nowhere, Kakachi was like bang, bang, bang. Just really started going through the gears. I think that took uh, Magnesi by surprise. He seemed to be tiring. I think he was playing. I think there was a bit of possum that was being played there. That was nice. That was right at the end of the round as well. Very good. Uh, Jonah said, doing the USA games isn't a bad idea. That's that's not a bad idea. No, it's not. I mean, one of the USA games is against England. The only problem is, the only problem is, I don't know if there might be some USA games on at the same time as England games, but they do try to have them at different times, don't they? I, I've got a feeling that the final group games tend to be at the same times. But, um... Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh the scorecards right now have got Kakachi in the lead by about two or three rounds. So that's where we are at the moment. I I like Kakachi. I think that he is still maintaining that slight lead. So uh I can definitely go with that. Uh, no one loves football days more than me. It was my wheelhouse, and I respected your decision. Uh, do what's time for you. No limit. Burning your time out. Show are gone regardless. It's it's not so much about um, it's not so much about burning myself out. It's more to do with the fact that um, if I do the World Cup, there will not be time for anything else. I mean, I will obviously try and fit in Raw SmackDown, but uh, there's every chance NXT would be dropped. There might even be a chance AEW would be dropped. Um, just for the World Cup the reviews would likely have to be dropped. Like, it would literally be we go down to bare bones because the World Cup would be, what, two, three games a day, uh, which is potentially going to be six hours a day, probably longer than that, actually. You could easily say nine hours, and that might be in the daytime. And then if you've got things like wrestling happening at nighttime, the question does need to be asked, when do I sleep? Uh, and to be honest, I haven't done any of that work yet in trying to figure out a schedule. I think if I was to look at it and have some sort of schedule, then I'd feel a bit better about it. But I haven't, haven't done that yet. But it's a good point. It's good questions. And I do need to do it. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Nothing is off the table at this stage. Let's put it that way. But it is, I mean... Um, 
Fury Joshua is on the 3rd of December. I don't know. I don't even know when it all starts. I mean, Crawford Spence, Survivor Series, Fury Joshua, all of those are happening around the same time as the World Cup. So, got to just bear that in mind. Um, You got that. You disappointed me. I am going to watch your old do drop one, says Summit. Forever Red said, I thought you'd have a stream for Qatar versus Ecuador. That is going to be game of the tournament. Oh, we'll do that one, Forever Red. We're not going to miss that. That flipping dream match. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll probably do that and skip the England games. Uh, against uh, both these guys in the centre swinging away. And um, we're about to go into uh, round number 10. Uh, commentators saying they feel that was another round for Kakachi. So uh, looks like we are uh, building up quite the lead now. Obviously, you can't be uh, overly confident, but I think there is a good chance that he is at least two, three rounds ahead at this point. Uh, David said, I love the Football Days channel. I miss it. It is it is a, a shame that it's gone. It is a shame. Uh, I hope Days changes his mind. What I'm doing every game. Yeah, the, the only problem is that it's like, I think this white rabbit stuff has kind of shown me that if, uh, I need to focus on one thing. <laughs> I need to really focus on wrestling, really, because there's so much going on. I mean, look at everything that's been going on with like the AEW altercation, the White Rabbit stuff, Vince retiring, Sasha walking out. It's just like it's there's been so much stuff that's been happening that it's kind of like, oh man, is this the right time to just drop wrestling for a month or so and just concentrate on a World Cup? I don't know. Shots coming into the uh, side of the head. I mean, in retrospect, we wouldn't have started the football channel, to be honest. If I was uh, to go back, I wouldn't do the football channel now. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. And it's really great that you lot enjoyed it as well. But um, the lessons learned from it mean that uh, it was probably better that we never, never did it. But you live and learn, don't you? You live and learn. Right, round number 10. Uh, big shout out to anyone that's uh, joining us. We are uh, we are sneaking our way to 1,000 votes. We'll have a look at the poll once we get to 1,000 votes. But uh, we have been talking about Joe Joyce and uh, Joseph Parker quite a bit. Quite a bit tonight. Uh, we've been talking a bit about Amanda Serrano as well. She is heavy favorite in her fight. She comes in as a minus 2,100 favorite. Uh, taking on Sarah Mafood, who is about plus 1,000 underdog. It is worth mentioning that Sarah Mafood is undefeated, but uh, she is pretty low level as well. Wild, because she's actually a champion, but um, even so, pretty low level. Certainly compared to some of the opponents that Serrano has faced. Uh, we are seeing Magnesi uh, looking a little bit tired now. Uh, leaning on Kakachi. Leaning his weight onto him. And uh, we're just not seeing much uh, output from either guy now. Kakachi uh, on the outside. Uh, Summit said if Chandler loses to Poirier, the most sensible match would be Chandler against uh, Fiziev, and it would be a banger. Uh, what are you going to do after Joyce Parker till Mayweather starts? Probably sleep, to be honest, because um, uh, I only managed to get three hours since yesterday. I don't know why. I just couldn't sleep. I did all the White Rabbit stuff, did all the videos I needed to do. Went to bed, woke up about three hours later, and then I just couldn't get back to sleep. So um, I might try and get another couple of hours. I don't, I think, I think I should be able to get a couple of hours, actually. So um, 
Something to eat because I haven't, uh, haven't had dinner uh, and a couple of hours sleep, and that will do me lovely, let me tell you. I'll be very happy with that. I need to check on uh, the dog as well, of course, because uh, she has been locked up since six. Well, when we started. So as soon as we started, I brought her in. So she's just upstairs. So, uh, you know, need to check on her, see if she wants to go to the toilet. She's already had dinner and everything, so that's all done. But um, it's just a shame, isn't it? She's up there on her own, so give her a bit of fuss. So, yeah, do uh, – so give the dog some fuss, have something to eat, couple of hours sleep, come back refreshed for uh, the absolute diabolical shambles that's going to be the Floyd Mayweather fight. Uh, I would have never found wrestling days and got into wrestling after 20 years and met all of these people if there was no football days. It's just another negative, really, to be honest, of the channel is that it did bring you into the community, don't night, Yeah. Uh, has Nathan Haney fought yet? Nathan Haney fights next, I believe. So uh, we are uh, getting to the end of this one. I think we're at the point where it's Kakachi. Coming up next is Nathan Haney against uh, Jack uh, Flatley. Then after that, it's Amanda Serrano against Sarah Mafoods. And then after that, it is Joe Joyce, Joseph Parker. It is worth mentioning this fight is almost done. Um, I don't know how long Haney and uh, Flatley goes for. It's not the widest in odds. I mean, it's about minus 500. Um, I think Nathan Haney should be able to get it done. He is undefeated 15-0 with six knockouts, taking on Jack Flatley, who is 19-2 with four knockouts. So I do think Haney should be able to get the victory there. Uh, Serrano should destroy Sarah Mahfoud, so that shouldn't take too long. So, yeah, uh, main event ring walk's meant to be in about an hour. Might be a bit delayed. Might be a bit delayed. Uh, what's the score? Um, I think you can... Pro well, I mean, no one knows for certain, but I've got Kakachi up by about three rounds. I think Kakachi is ahead, but some of these rounds have been very, very close. So I don't know how confident uh, Kakachi can feel. So um, definitely needs to make sure that he ends the fight well. But uh, it's all a bit scrappy now. Uh, I think both guys are a bit gassed. So Fred says, Savage. I'm a savage. Strikes coming in. Hayden said, when Daddy Days and Mama Days will return. Oh, uh, from Spain. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah, they've been in Spain. So they're back tomorrow. And that will be a big help because uh, it's just been me and the dog uh, since, for the past 10 days. Which is fine because she's amazing. She's lovely and she's no trouble. But, I mean, it's just one of them, isn't it? I mean, you, you can be asleep and she will come up to you and I like to sleep downstairs as well when it's just me and her because you know I like to I like her to know that I'm around she's a people's dog she likes to have people around her you know but the problem is she then comes up to you and moans and uh you know like I want food or I want a treat or I want to go out or so trying to get sleep can be a little tricky so it'll be good to uh have some other people in the house that means that I can get some proper sleep and we can, you know, start doing a bit more again. We've actually been uh, running a bit of a, not a reduced schedule, but just been having to do a lot of other things. The dog, it's, ma it's mainly the dog. The dog's been the problem. Uh, Summit said, if Oliveira loses, Poirier wins. It would be great to have Poirier Oliveira too. Do you remember Poirier is undefeated in rematches? It would be damn close, says Summit. Uh, Shane says, Haney, Haney, Haney. <laughs> There's a lot of people waiting for this uh, Nathan Haney fight, which is great to see. Great to see. Undefeated, got a lot of supporters, fight coming up next. And uh, we have got the uh, final round right now. 
Um, commentator says Magnesi probably is going to need the knockout here for this one. So uh, we are underway and Magnesi is coming out uh, hot in this final round. We are patiently waiting for uh, these next fights. Lots of people in the chat excited for Nathan Haney. Not too much excitement for Amanda Serrano, which is a bit of a shame. I like Serrano. Plenty of excitement for Joe Joyce and Parker. And we have got over a thousand votes now. Over a thousand votes. So uh, we will take a look at uh, the poll in a sec. We're just going to see this fight out first. As Magnesi is the one putting the pressure on uh, Kakachi. Oh, look at that. Digs into the body. You can see how red the body of Kakachi is. He's really taken some shots there. Lovely uh, shots coming in by Kakachi and into a uh, clinch. Referee coming in, separating these two apart. We've got uh, Magnesi coming forwards. Kakachi on the outside, jabbing away. Magnesi uh, trying to get his uh, shots through. Little dig to the body again. Uh, I never bought a pay-per-view before, said Kitson, because I have the network, but I was surprised how easy it is to buy. Uh, Moldy said, what do you remember of Yokozuna? What do I remember? Uh, is there anything in particular? Any qu what, what, what do you mean? What do I remember of him? I remember that he used to compete in the AWA. I can't remember what his name was. It wasn't Yokozuna. Um, but he competed in AWA and he was, uh, pretty big, but not as big. Um, then he joined WWF in, I want to say 92 and went on a hell of a run. They booked him really well. They booked him the way that you would expect the way that they're booking Gunther, really just like this unstoppable monster picking up some good wins squashing jobbers and, you know, beating good talented names. And then uh, 93, obviously, that's when he uh, becomes champion. And uh, for me, he killed Hulkamania. Hulkamania was killed by Yokozuna because at King of the Ring in 93, that's when we get Yokozuna Hulk Hogan and that's when a cameraman jumps up on the edge of the uh, ring and the camera flashes. Hogan's blinded. And that's when Yokozuna, like, beats him. I think he leg drops him, bonsai drops him as well. And that's it. I mean, we don't see Hogan after that. Next time we see Hogan is when he comes back with the NWO. Like, he's gone for about nine years. So And I didn't watch WCW. So to me, that is nine years without Hulk Hogan. And when he comes back, he comes back as Hollywood Hogan. He comes back as something different. Obviously, that changes. But um, yeah, uh, I, for me, that first run is ended by Yokozuna. So Yokozuna, you could credit as killing Hulkamania. Obviously, it lived on in WCW for a while, but I never watched it. I was a different company. So, uh, yeah, I think um, he did a lot. And then, like, he, he was over, he was obviously overweight. They wanted him to lose a bit of weight. They put him in with a tag team. He obviously teams with Owen Hart for a bit, but it all kind of fizzled out, didn't it? I mean, I feel like 93, 94 is when Yokozuna's at his peak. And then by the time you get into, like, 96, 90, I can't remember what year he goes. But, um, yeah, I think it's 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 health concerns, isn't it? I mean, he needed to lose weight. And they were saying, like, you need to lose weight. Otherwise, we basically can't clear, clear you. I mean, he was getting to, like, 650 pounds. He's a monster. He was a monster. And they were so worried about his health that it was like, you've got to lose weight. Otherwise, we, we're done. And they were done. And then he passes away in, what, 2000? in a hotel in Liverpool. So I remember a bit. Kakachi, uh, celebrate him. Uh, I am going to live alone for two months. 
my parents going on holiday, says Retribution. Oh. Uh, right, we're just waiting for these uh, results. If you are just uh, joining us, um, we've had a few fights that have gone the distance. Here we go. The results are in. Magnesi and Kakachi. Which way have they gone on this one? If you are just joining us, coming up next is Nathan Haney against uh, Jack Flatley. <gasps> Split decision. One sixteen, one twelve, Kikachi. One sixteen, one twelve for Magnesi. One seventeen, one eleven. So it is and new. How crazy is that? Isn't it mental that uh, two judges saw it quite heavily one-sided for Kakachi? Two judges gave Kakachi about five rounds or so. And for some reason, one judge saw about five rounds advantage for uh, Magnesi, so... New IBO Super Featherweight Champion is uh, Kakachi. There's uh, good sportsmanship here as uh, Magnesi is uh, congratulating him. Uh, there we go. New, uh, new champion. New champion. Uh, who goes on holiday for two months and leaves their son? Uh, Summit said shooting bum press by Yokozuna. Hub said days. Do you think anything big will happen on the next SmackDown? Uh, probably another clue. I don't think we'll see anything until we get to Extreme Rules. So, I mean, something big might happen, but I don't think anything in relation to White Rabbit. I think that will pay off at Extreme Rules or maybe Crown Jewel. Uh, Joe Joyce for the knockout says Laggy I don't need you around Laggy I've got enough lag of my own uh, Michael said I saw a report that Bray was released Because Because They couldn't clear him For action uh, Yeah I have heard I've heard that he had mental issues or mental health issues. And I don't know if, if it was that. Um, I know they wanted him to lose weight as well. And they kept out banging on about that, but I don't, I don't know that there was any issue there. So I don't know uh, if, if, if there is a report that's doing the rounds, where did you see it? Let me know. I'd be, uh, if it's a new one, I'd be, uh, I'd like to have a look at it. Uh, Moldy said, obviously you as a kid when he came in, was you in awe of his size? He was before my time. Was I in awe of his size? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think just like uh, he, he always felt like a big star. Uh, he was an attraction. I think that when you saw Yokozuna, you, you knew that he was going to be a world champion or compete for a world championship. And... They always did a great job of building him up and like, you know, making out that he was this monster who could stop him. No one could stop him. Um, he was with Mr. Fuji as well, which gave him credibility. Uh, yeah, I mean, every, everything around him, the whole presentation. I mean, there was even like women that would like, before the match started, like hand him flowers sometimes. And of course he would grab the salt and chuck it out into and do like the ceremonial stuff. And before he even fought, like, he would, you know, put his arms out. And he did all these, like, gestures. It, it wasn't as if he just came down to the ring, ran down to the ring and had a match or anything. Like, it was all, you know, ceremonial and uh, stuff that you just hadn't really seen before. But everything was designed to make him feel like a big star. And so, yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, definitely something that um, I don't know if I, I don't, I can't say I was in awe. I don't know. How I was sat there like just stunned into silence, but it was. Um, you knew you was watching someone special. You knew you was watching something significant. And um, oh, here's Tyson Fury. We'll know more on Monday," said Tyson. And we'll know from there. They either want this fight or they don't. It, they they uh, can want to do it or they don't. You want Joshua. Yes. Yuri says, I do want the fight. Oh, Fury said he's not optimistic today that him against Joshua will happen. Fury said, I don't care who it will be on December 3rd. I'll knock them all out. So he's going to fight someone and he doesn't care who it is. But he wants it to be Joshua. So. Uh, Michael said, WWE reached out to contracted AEW wrestlers FTR, Swerve, and Malachi. Reportedly, a lot of AEW stars that were contracted by WWE have asked for their release. Man, I'd love it if WWE got FTR. I don't care about Swerve. But um, I'd love it if they got FTR. Oh, God. Could you imagine FTR being booked right in WWE? Oof. Uh, I saw that Deontay Wilder's manager has said he could beat Usyk. I don't think Deontay Wilder's manager can beat Usyk. No, I'm not buying that. Uh, Medieval Peasant said, listen here and listen, listen carefully. I will fight any man in this chat. Bare knuckle, Tesco car park. Who wants it? That's, ah, oh, I love that kind of attitude. That's the kind of energy that I uh, really appreciate. So, Medieval peasant, shout out to you. Just for that, I will be in your corner with the magic sponge, cheering you on, helping you get through, finding a way. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Fury says that uh, he's not massively optimistic about him and Joshua. But uh, uh, I said I'd go to the uh, poll as well. And uh, Richards, uh, really appreciate the support, dudes. Really appreciate the support. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, we will get to your uh, comment in a second. But I promised the people that we would uh, look at the poll once we got to 1,000 votes. Uh, Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce, 52%. Joseph Parker, 43%. And a draw. 5%. That's where we are right now. 9% in it. 9%. Quite close. Considering we've had over a 1,000 votes, that's quite close. Richard said, uh, I know it's a little bit off topic, and this is boxing. That's all right. We're, we're, we're going all over the road here. It, it's all right. I th to be honest, I think most people are only interested in um, Parker and Joyce. So obviously, when we get to that, we will be very dialed in. Uh, and Serrano, I'm looking forward to Serrano. Right now, we've got uh, entrances. We uh, are moving to our next match. It's going to be Nathan Haney against uh, Jack Flatley. So uh, it is uh, some entrances for uh, Haney. Crowds uh, into this one. So, uh, right, let's read this. Uh, I think Bray will return at Crown Jewel and attack Roman. Logan will win by DQ. So Roman keeps the belts and sets up a feud with Bray. Do you think he returns before? I think either Extreme Rules or Crown Jewel. I mean, I can make an argument for either. I mean, Extreme Rules is first. So it feels like we could be building to that. Um, but Crown Jewel is bigger. 
It's just, can they stretch out this white rabbit thing till Crown Jewel? I don't actually know when Crown Jewel is. It might, it might not be that hard to get to Crown Jewel. It might only be like another week or two. Okay, uh, so Nathan Haney making his way down, singing uh, Delilah. Tune, banger. Steps uh, inside. So we are November 5th. Oh, can we get through to November 5th for White Rabbit stuff? Maybe. The venue is the MR Sul Park. It's only got a capacity of 25,000, you know. It's the King Syed University Stadium. 25,000. I mean, it is a stadium. It is outside. You can make it feel big. You can certainly make it feel bigger than I think you can an arena. So I think it will still feel bigger. But it's not the biggest venue, actually, for Crown Jewel. It's not the biggest venue. I don't know what they're doing with this Saudi thing. Do the Saudi fans just not really care that much or something? We've gone from pretty big stadiums to now 25,000 stadiums. And perhaps there's not that many Logan Paul fans in uh, Saudi Arabia. So, uh, yeah, I, either, to be honest, um, either, Richards. Uh, John said uh, 10 o'clock should be the main, main ring walk. Yeah, we're about 40 odd minutes away from that. I mean, we do have this fight and the Serrano fight. So it's it's hard to say, to be honest. Uh, Medieval Pleasant said, I've been training hard. Nutrition is dialed in. Steak and porridge every day. Uh, I'm the man in this chat, says Medieval Peasant. I love it. I love that attitude. You stick it to them. There's people in this chat that's had it too easy for too long. Uh, Last Border said, I'm watching from Thailand. How long before Joyce fight starts? Um, we are, well, hard to say. My guess would be about an hour, to be honest. It's meant to be 40 minutes, but we've still got two fights to go till we get to the main event. And uh, I've got to think that Serrano and um, uh, Mafford would have entrances. So, uh, yeah, I think we're probably... Depends how long this fight goes. Depends how long uh, co-main event goes. But um, guesstimate would be about an hour. Right, here we go then. Both of these guys getting their uh, introductions. It is for the IBO International Middleweights. Uh, championship. Nathan Haney is in the ring. Jack Flatley in there as well. And we're going to be underway with this one very, very soon. Both guys looking super, super focused. Um, Deontay could beat Usyk. Yeah, I, 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 I was only joking, dude. I was only joking. I know you meant that. Uh, Heaney sold a thousand tickets, so uh, a thousand people are there for uh, Nathan Heaney. He got a great reaction when uh, when he came out, and we are uh, underway with this one. Nice little uh, shot to the body there by uh, Heaney. Jab coming in by Heaney as well. One, two, straight down the middle by uh, Heaney. We've got uh, Flatley trying to come forward, but at the moment, Heaney is being the more active. Lovely uh, left hand straight down the center. Flatley trying to go to the body, but lovely hand speed there by Heaney. Heaney getting uh, one, two, straight down the middle. Lovely uh, right to the body there by Flatley. Crowd uh, starting to uh, enjoy themselves now. Lovely, lovely little uppercut getting through there. Right hand uppercut by Heaney. Jabbing away, left hand jab. We've got Big John uh, at ringside. We've got Frank Warren at ringside. Can't see Tyson Fury right now. I think he's popped 
uh, out back to be with uh, Joseph Parker. Lovely uh, shot there by uh, Heaney. So some good work here, really getting through the defenses. Trying to get uh, to the body, hook to the body. No joy there. Head movement by Flatley. Heaney in the center. As uh, Flatley uh, edges forwards. Good head movement there by uh, Flatley. Nice little uppercut coming in as well as their inner clinch. Flatley being uh, driven back against the ropes. And again, Flatley just digging into the body. Heaney uh, letting his hands go. Yeah, it's very, it's very even, but it is Heaney that is uh, dictating things at the moment. This can go 10 rounds. 10 rounds for this one. Nice uh, shots coming in. Good head movement there by uh, Heaney. Feels to me like this is going to be a Heaney round. Heaney is uh, edging forwards. Crowd singing away. Crowds uh, in fine voice. Uh, lovely uh, footwork by Flatley, said Lee. He's about to go into river dance mode. Lovely uh, head movement as well. Very evasive by Flatley. Flatley's done well. He's done very well. But um, I, I would be giving uh, Heaney the advantage in this opening round. Both have had moments, though. And that is uh, the end of round one. So uh, I'm going to give that uh, Heaney. Feel free to tell me if you've gone a different way. I told you, you're going to be too sharp for him. That's what they're saying to Heaney. Uh, White dropped Parker. Imagine what Joe Joyce is going to do, said Arsenal Life. Uh, when will you wake up for the Floyd Mayweather fights? I, have no, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. Um, there's not going to be too much that's going to need to be set up for it. I've got all my uh, notes uh, for that already done. Um, so... I don't know. Half an hour before, something like that. 40 minutes before. A couple of rounds in and you'll be nice and relaxed. That's what they say to uh, Flatley. Both corners seeming uh, to be quite confident right now as we are underway with uh, round number two. Uh, Joyce win by knockout, please, says John. Right, we're seeing uh, Flatley coming forward, charging into uh, Heaney. Heaney letting his hands go. And uh, I think Flatley uh, definitely felt that. Good defense, though, by Flatley. He's taking uh, some punishment here by Heaney, but, uh, yeah, that was all right. There was uh, lesser men could have been put into uh, quite a bit of trouble there. But uh, Flatley uh, weathering that storm. Heaney, again, uh, jabbing forwards. Flatley uh, trying to go to the body, but uh, no joy. That's a lovely right hand there by Flatley, though, and a lovely right hand coming back by Heaney. Flatley uh, coming forward, lovely hook shot there, left hook. Body shot coming in by Heaney. Couldn't find a way through. It's really high-level stuff between these two. A great contest. Straight down the middle. The crowd are really adding to this as well. Crowd uh, singing along and uh, really enjoying this one. I know quite a few of you in the chat were uh, asking about uh, Nathan Haney and uh, when he was going to be fighting. So uh, I think this is one that's definitely got a few eyes on it. Of course, the next fight after this is Amanda Serrano. Upcut there by Nathan Haney. Head movement by uh, Flatley, avoiding a jab that came in. But uh, we've got just over a minute to go in round number two. As we said, this can go 10 rounds. Uh, Haney is uh, just having to weather a little storm. Shot coming in there by uh, Haney. Flatley, lovely hook shot. Love that by uh, Flatley. That was nice. That was nice. 
Caught him right on the side of the head. Coming in, stepping in. Lovely left hand there by Flatley. And again, some good stuff here by Flatley. Some good stuff. He seems to be in a nice rhythm. Nice uh, shot coming in there by Nathan Haney. Body shot coming in by Flatley. As we said, I don't think the Amanda Serrano fight's going to go very long. I I'm certainly not expecting that to, you know, go, go really into the later stages. I think she should be able to get a finish in that quite early doors. Uh, where does the loser of Joyce Park go? Some real killers in that division. Yeah, we was talking about that earlier, um, about where they go. I mean, uh, Wallin is someone that's around. Um, uh, you've got uh, Andy Ruiz, who's around. Who knows about Joshua as well? I mean, uh, the Joshua Fury fight might not happen. And uh, we might be looking at Joshua... Joyce, I mean, if Joshua, if say Joshua Fury happens and Joshua loses and say Joyce loses tonight, they could be on a collision course. Uh, I mean, I feel like Wilder and Joshua is definitely a fight that needs to be made. But um, I don't know. Do you make that straight away? Do you make that now? Uh, I've got to think that if Joshua loses to Fury, then uh, I think you know, you probably want some easier fights than Wilder. Wilder is not an easy fight at all. So Joshua might need to pick up some easier fights. <laughs> is is Joe Joyce an easier fight? I, I don't know. I'd say it's probably easier than Wilder. I'd say it's easier than Wilder. So, yeah, I mean, there's some great names in the heavyweight division at the moment. Uh, Right. The Battle of the Joes is basically Hayes versus Dog, Usyk and Fury are two top quality. Uh, AJ is mid. Uh, I would like to see the loser fight uh, Makhmadov. Bella is a killer, but unpolished. Uh, Summit said, Days, according to Connor's performance, Connor's performance, What's that going to say? The poll is in the way, so I can't see it. Uh, I will read the rest of it as soon as your comment jumps up. But uh, at the moment, we're seeing some lovely work here by uh, Flatley. I reckon this could be 1-1, one, one, you know. It's really close, this fight. Really close. Upcut there by uh, Nathan Haney. Oh, getting clipped, though. Definitely uh, uh, taking some punishment in this one. Coming forward with a lovely uh, jab. Over the top there by uh, Flatley. Both guys in the center. They're really working in the pocket at the moment. Flatley uh, throwing in a left hand to the body. Into uh, the clinch. Uh, according to Connor's performance and rankings, the logical match for him would be Dan Hooker or RDA. What do you think? It depends what you want to do, to be honest. I mean, if you want to put him in a fight against someone that is kind of roughly where he is, then yes. But Connor is money, so Connor could fight Oliveira. You could do Connor against Oliveira. The the hardcore fans will moan because they'll be like, how did he earn that? But um, the pay-per-view buys would be undeniable. So, I, I, yeah. Yeah, is the answer. Or uh, Ferguson. I mean, I feel I, it's hard to know where Connor is right now. You know, he's uh, coming off a couple of uh, defeats to Poirier, and there is no shame in that whatsoever. Losing to Poirier, there is no shame in that. But, it, so it's, but it's hard to know exactly where Connor is. Like, has he declined? I think he has. Well, how far has he declined? Uh, Nathan Haney. Going over uh, the, to the end of that round. Um
They're saying the eye of uh, Haney is marking up. I wasn't massively impressed with uh, Haney in that round. Is in front of you. You're better than that. That was sloppy. You're better than that. So uh, Haney's corner, not impressed with what they're seeing so far. I must admit, I, I think it might be 2-1 to uh, Flatley at the moment. Right, here we go then. Yeah, uh, commentators just said they gave that round to Flatley as well. Okay, this is quite interesting. This is quite interesting. A lot of support for uh, Nathan Haney, and uh, he seems to be struggling a bit. Jab coming in there by Haney. Uh, yeah, or convincing Diaz, making Diaz Connor three if it's a welterweight, says Summit. Um, I don't know. I don't think Connor has any plans about returning anytime soon. Mayweather is trying to get another back boxing uh, match with him, but Connor denied it. Umar said uh, Makachev would eat them all. Uh, Manuel said, has Serrano fought yet? She's up next. Serrano is up next. Right now, we're watching uh, Nathan Haney against Jack Flatley. I think we've got Flatley leading 2-1 uh, at the moment. Just keeping eyes on uh, Haney that's doing much better in this round, actually. Jab's uh, coming into the body, though. Uh, lunging uh, shots. Big hook shot there by Flatley. Seems to miss. It's very tentative. Um, both guys uh, seemingly... Just jabbing away at each other. Heaney fans are very quiet. Yeah, considering uh, he sold like a thousand tickets and uh, there was quite a reaction when he came out and the crowd were chanting away. It does. Uh, it is certainly more muted right now. Heaney needs to give uh, Flatley something to think about. It'd be really good if he could get something significant through. It's been a while since I've seen him land anything of uh, note apart from like some jabs. Flatly uh, again covering up, eating uh, these shots. Yeah, Heaney uh, getting some uh, bits through, but nothing significant. It's just jabs. 50 odd seconds left in this round. I feel like Heaney might still have uh, outvolumed uh, Flatly though. Yeah, I think this is a Heaney round. I mean, uh, I can't really give you too many reasons as to why you would score it for Flatley. It was a lovely little hook shot there by Flatley, though. Flatley uh, on the outside. Heaney standing his ground in the center. Heaney needs a good final 20-odd seconds here just to cement this round. I think it is a Heaney round. And uh, Flatley uh, moving forwards. Referee coming in, separating these two apart. Nathan Heaney having a little look coming forwards. And again, lovely uh, check hooks. End of the round. And uh, I think that probably makes it 2-2 for me. I think that's 2-2. So 2-2 as we go into round number five. This one feels like it could be going the distance uh, for anyone that's desperately waiting for the main event. Uh, Pickle Chip said, who is the better test for Usyk, Joyce or Parker? Um, I think the better test would be. I don't think it would matter. I think Usyk dominates both. To be honest, um, Joyce just keeps moving forward, but he's a bit predictable in his movement. And he's got a great chin. Usyk wouldn't knock him out, of course. But he could hit and move all day long. Pop, pop, pop. Out he goes. Pop, pop, pop. Out he goes. Just constantly coming in, getting his shots off, getting out of range. Um, just avoiding shots. Great head movement, footwork. I mean, it, he's very evasive, Usyk. Hard to hit. And I just don't think that Joyce would be a problem at all. 
Parker. Parker is not as robotic, and I think he is a, uh, a better mover. And but the problem is his cardio can gas out. I think if he, uh, I think if Usyk faces Joyce, I think it goes the distance, and Usyk wins maybe every round. If he faces Parker, there's maybe a chance he gets a finish just because Parker can slow later on. And I think we saw that Usyk had Joshua in trouble late. And I think if he's got Joshua in trouble, I think he could have Parker in trouble. So I think both would be relatively straightforward, maybe just different, different in different ways. Heaney uh, getting some uh, shots through. Uh, did Amanda Serrano fight? She's fighting next. Is Tyson Fury the best ever, in your opinion? I wouldn't say he's the best ever, no. You can make an argument for him being heavyweight-wise top. Top 20. Maybe 15. I don't think 10. I don't think 10. I think you could find 10 better heavyweights than Tyson Fury. I mean, does a prime... Tyson Fury beat a prime Mike Tyson. Does a prime Mike uh, uh, Tyson Fury beat a prime Evander Holyfield? I don't know. I I, I think like for me, uh, Tyson Fury might just be outside the top ten, but I, I probably have him within my top twenty, and as I said, maybe top fifteen. We've got a timeout at the moment in this one. Timeout at the moment in this one. Um, Clash of heads. There's a clash of heads and, uh, oh, it's a nasty cut, that. It's been waved off. The fight has been stopped. Clash of heads. That's nasty. Oh, it's right above the eye. That cut is uh, going to need some stitches. It's going to go to the scorecards. Now, we're in round five. I had it two rounds each. Damn, 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 damn. What are we going to get here? What are we going to get here? We're just showing a, a, a replay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's so unfortunate. They both just lunge in at the same time. They clash heads. It's all accidental. Nothing on purpose. Really, really unfortunate. I don't think there's anything deliberate in that, but um, it proper rips it open just above his eye. Referee and doctor uh, are like, yeah, we can't continue with that. So it's gone to the scorecards. Wow. How's this going to go? How is this going to go? I had it 2-2 going into this fifth round. 2-2 two, two going into this fifth round. It, it, it's not a great cut. It's really not a great. Right, Serrano against Matt Foods is coming up next. Obviously, we're just waiting to see what's happening here. It shouldn't take that long. You uh, work this out. Uh, what time is the Mayweather stream so I can set an alarm? Uh, it should be set up on the channel. I can't remember off the top of my head, to be honest. But if you have a look on the channel, then that that's the start time. I think I've set it to start at the same time the coverage starts on um, Fight TV. I've got a feeling it's like 3 a.m. So it's it's quite a late one. So I think 3 a.m. Which, I don't know, Eastern time would be about 10 p.m., I think. Uh, right, we're still waiting here. We're still waiting. Who got cut? Uh, it, Nathan Heaney got cut. 
Okay, here we go. We're about to get uh, the uh, scores. Is this going to be a draw? Is this going to be a draw? I add it 2-2. Two, two. I don't know if they score the fifth round because we didn't get that far into it. Here we go, then. We go to the judges. Wow, it's really one-sided. And still, wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And still, the judges pretty much giving every round to Nathan uh, Haney. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a mixed response from the crowd. I think uh, a lot of the crowd feel like they've just been robbed of uh, a proper fight, which you can understand. I think the scorecards are a, a bit questionable as well. I think that Flatley looked, looked really good at times. Nathan Heaney gets uh, the win. What I would say is I, I think it would be a bigger injustice if Flatley had just be won't become champion because of that. I don't think Flatley deserved to be champion. So I've got no problems with uh, Nathan Haney uh, getting the victory. But um, those scorecards seem wide. I, I think that that's worth bearing in mind for Joe Joyce as well. I think Joe Joyce has got a real advantage, what with this being in Manchester, because I think we are looking at... I think we are looking at uh, biased judges, unfortunately. Uh, Retribution said, I've got a bet that you might be interested in. Joyce to win by knockout, technical knockout, or DQ boosted from nine to four to four to one. Uh, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. There's only one bet I'm interested in. And that's putting money on Liv Morgan. Because I think she's going to beat Ronda Rousey, and she's a plus three hundred underdog. So uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely putting at least fifty pounds on that. Definitely. I'm a big spender, guys. I am a big spender. Kevin said, "Top ten of all time: uh, Mike Tyson, Ali, uh, Marciano, Foreman, Jake Paul." Liston, Lennox, Sugar Ray, Joe Lewis, and Pacquiao. No cap. No cap. I can't see any cap there. I can't see any cap. Last border said, what were the points? It was like 50, 45, 49, 46, and 49, 46, or something like that. It's quite wide. I mean, it was like every round was pretty much given to Nathan Heaney. Um, but, but, but right, uh, Serrano against uh, Mahfoud is coming up next. So Serrano is the reigning WBO, WBC, IBO uh, champion. She is a seven weight world champion. She has held seven world titles uh, in her uh, time, in her career. Uh, well, at seven different weights, I should say. Uh, smooth movement. She is probably at her best at this weight. Big puncher. She caused Katie Taylor problems. Uh, I think it was like two weight divisions above where we are today. Uh, uses her jab to really unlock her opponents and then starts going to the body. She's got 42 wins. And of those 42 wins, she's got 30 knockouts. She's taken on Sarah Mahfoud, who is the IBF champion. This is for the unification of the women's featherweight division. She likes to move forwards. She um, has, she's, she's not for anyone as good as Serrano. She is uh, a little bit stiff at times. She needs to uh, kind of 
I don't know, flow a little better, get into a bit of better movement. Uh, she, I just don't, she don't stand a chance, to be honest. I cannot see her getting anything against Amanda Serrano. Uh, of the 11 wins that Sarah Mahfoud has uh, got, only five of her opponents had a winning record. All the others had more losses than wins. So this, this just seems easy work for uh, Amanda Serrano. I mean, look, this is another title. This is a unification. This is, you know, exciting for Amanda Serrano. Uh, Sarah Mahfoud, the IBF featherweight champion, is 11-0, but... Man, she's never she's never faced this quality before. Serrano said she's the undefeated champion. I know she won't make this easy for me. I love wars, says uh, Serrano. Uh, Days, if Gamrot beats Dariush and Poirier wins, then maybe Gamrot Poirier could be really good. Yeah. Uh, I reckon she will beat Ronda. She will embrace the cheating heel. Uh, thanks for that Liv Morgan tip. Yeah, I, I really like it. I really like it because I think Triple H feels a bit guilty about what happened at SummerSlam and the what and you know the reaction Liv got. I think that they are gonna want Liv to fit. Why would you take the belt off Ronda to then put it back onto her like a couple of months later? I feel like I feel like Ronda doesn't need the belt. And I think that uh yeah, I think Liv's winning. I, I, I really think Liv's winning to the point where I am going to put some money on this. But gambling is gambling, yeah. And gambling on something that's flipping scripted is, uh, you know, a risky. The risk is heightened even more because if WWE want to change their mind, go in a different direction, they can, they can absolutely do that with a with a a stroke of a pen uh you could lose your money uh on uh WWE betting so it's not something that I tend to do but um I do quite fancy those odds i think it's plus 300 uh just nick said don't break the bank too much all right or listen it's a good lesson to you all only bet what you're happy to lose and i'm not happy to lose 50 pounds to be honest but um you know, I will. Uh, uh, I, I believe in this one. This is one that I, I quite fancy. Sometimes you got to just go with your gut. You know what I mean? You got to go with your gut. Um, but, but, but might stick three fifty on Liv Morgan. That gets a thousand back. Not sure if I've got that kind of confidence though. Oh God, is that true? Three fifty on Liv gets you a grand back. Oh. I mean, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. But it does sound nice, though, doesn't it? That does sound nice. Uh, uh, Flat Earthers, next thing you'll say is that the sun is a cornflake, said Mr. HRP. What time is the main fight? Uh, well, it was meant to be ring walks in 10 minutes, but we haven't had our co-main event yet, and that is coming up next. Hakan said, my bet is Parker on points. Uh, Dort Knight said, I love all of my flat earth friends all around the globe. Uh, Summit said, it's around 2.30 in India and I've been killing my sleep for hours. I need to sleep now, says Summit. Summit, you rest, my friend, you rest. I, uh, I appreciate you joining us and uh, chatting away. Uh, if you are watching, guys, keep smashing those uh, likes. It does make a big, big difference as we continue to head towards the main event. We are getting closer and closer 
towards Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker. And um, Parker on a six-fight win streak, former WBO heavyweight champion. Joe Joyce, undefeated, Olympic finalist. Um, It's a great main event. It's a high-stakes main event. Here we go. We're uh, going over to our co-main. And so the ladies are about to get their intros. I do not expect this to go decision. I think this is going to be Amanda Serrano adding to her KO count. So Sarah Mahfoud is uh, getting her intro. It's coming out. It's like this really slow song. I'll see you again. I can't remember who sings that one. Wasn't that in like Fast and Furious or something? Till I see you again. It's all a bit nice, isn't it? Okay, brilliant. If I came out to this ring walk music, I'd be asleep by the time I got to the ring. Okay, here we go. We got so we got a bit of a beat that's kicking in now. Here we go. Uh, a big star in Denmark, uh, Sarah Mafood, taking her time. Uh, Ronda two five live seven four. I don't know fractions. I don't know. Uh, I'm so used to the American way of doing it now. I I can't deal with anything else. I need the minus and the plus. What does that What does that translate as? Okay, here we go. Sarah Mafood is uh, inside. Charlie Puth sings it. Good knowledge. Uh, what time is the fight? Uh, well. Uh, Serrano is now. This is our co-main event. Here is Amanda Serrano then. Serrano getting her uh, introduction. There is uh, Amanda Serrano. That's a cool jacket she's got on. Dancing uh, as she makes her way uh, down. Looks cool. We've got the uh, light in the background. Yeah, this jacket she's wearing is like white and uh, red. And uh, it's got uh, Puerto Rican uh, flag on. Is that LaRue? I think she's coming out to uh, a, a trap by LaRue. So uh, this is Serrano's uh, return since losing to Katie Taylor in a very, very close fight. Still my fight of the year. Absolutely flipping. Loved it. Smile on Serrano's face. She could not be more relaxed if she tried. She could not be more relaxed. Uh, uh, seven, four is you win seven pound for every four that you put on. So if you bet 400, you make 700. You win seven pound for every four that you put on. God, that's horrible, isn't it? How am I meant to work that out? Right, here we go. She's, uh, stepping up. Into uh, the ring. It's not the longest ring walk, but they're taking forever. So there we go, Serrano inside. Uh, Not a great reaction for her. It's not like the crowd are going crazy. I feel like she deserves more respect than that. I'd be uh, applauding and cheering. I'd love to go and see Serrano fight. 
She, I've said before, she feels like a big star to me now. Like, that fight against Katie Taylor was amazing, but because we've been watching Jake Paul cards, like, she fights on his undercards quite a lot. So we've actually seen quite a lot of Amanda Serrano. Uh, she's great. She's great. Uh, the Rock is ten to one to win the Rumble. Uh, Summit, see you around, dudes. Trenton, shout out to you. Right, I wouldn't blink on this one. I really don't think it's uh, sticking around too long. I expect Serrano to get the win. I expect her to get a finish. I think it'll be in the first half of the fight. I think there's levels to this game, and I think uh, Sarah Mafood's about to find that out. And then it will be the main event. It will be Joe Joyce against Joseph Parker. Uh, Days, £50 on live would get you one fifty back. I'm tempted. Uh, 50 gets you one fifty. Mm. I can't remember what the uh, what I saw. Plus 300. Plus 300. Oh, I think that's about the same. Yeah, I think that's the same. So 50 would get you 150, but then you get your 50 back. So would that be 200 with your the money that you put down? Turning 50 pound into 200 pounds. I'm down for that. I just don't know if I can bring myself to cheer for Liv Morgan. Then that's the only problem. That's the downside uh, the only worry I have is disqualifications in wrestling. Does that count as a win with bookies? Yeah, a win's a win, surely. Surely it doesn't matter, does it? If, and there's no DQ here because it's Extreme Rules match, so there won't be a DQ. There won't be a DQ in this one. There's got to be a winner. Uh, watch after this stream. Daze is going to go to sleep and forget about the boxing. I'm not going to lie. There is a risk of that. There is a definite risk of that. Uh, the only worry I've got, Squat, oh, we answered that one. No UFC tonight. So you'll be eating all of that alone. E eating all of what? Uh, right, Serrano getting her uh, intro. Serrano getting her intro. There we go. Now the crowd are giving her uh, the respect she deserves. She's fired up. She's ready to go. Serrano coming into uh, the center. She's got great power. This feels like a big fight, you know. I think it's because none of the other fights have had entrances. Nathan Heaney got an entrance, but he's the only one. Both of these girls have had uh, entrances. This is for the unification of the featherweight division. Here we go then. Uh, round number one. Serrano comes straight out into uh, the center. Tries to go to the body, but we're seeing uh, Sarah just keeping out of range. A couple of jabs coming in there by Sarah. Fast hands by Serrano. Ooh, Sarah catching. Uh, Serrano, she is, uh, she landed on her. Serrano, uh, good head movement, swing and a miss there by uh, Serrano. Serrano uh, edging forward. Uh, Sarah Mafood is uh, the one that's being pressured, as you would imagine. Body shots coming in there by uh, Serrano, constantly uh, throwing left hands to the body. Couple of jabs up top, another left to the body. So, it's really interesting. She'll work the jab and, you know, if she lands or doesn't land, it's irrelevant. Always finishing with a hook to the body. So it's like pop, pop, bang. Pop, 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 bang. Constantly uh, throwing in those uh, body shots. Nice jab there by uh, Sarah Mafoot. She's getting, uh, again, look at that body shot. Sarah Mafoot trying to come in, trying to get uh, one, two straight down the middle. 
Serrano uh, off. Heavy uh, left hand again, looking for that body shot. She is uh, in control. Those body shots have been um, really uh, the big difference maker. Hook shot there to the side of the head. And again, nothing that's uh, really troubled uh, Sarah at this stage. Sarah's uh, trying to get some shots off. Again, uh, that body shot she goes back to it. Serrano just constantly moving forward, putting the pressure on. Yeah, it is quite quiet. It is quite tidy at the moment. Nothing, no dramas in there at this stage. So, uh, Serrano, deep breaths, being told deep breaths. She's just running. So they said to Serrano, she's just running. She did catch Serrano with a few things, though. This isn't uh, as one-sided yet that uh, uh, we were expecting. I thought she would have caused her a bit more pain, had her a bit more uncomfortable. Certainly, uh, Sarah Mafood was uh, throwing some stuff. She was looking all right. What time's the park fight? It is next. It is next. Right, we've got uh, Sarah Mafood up and uh, we're about to get uh, underway with round number two. Is Serrano going to go through the gears? Didn't feel like she got out of uh, first gear in that first round. Oh, fast hands there. Again, lovely hook shot to the body. Couple of uh, shots to the side of the head. Serrano again going to the body. Sarah Mafu trying to double up on the jabs. Yeah, Serrano's hand speed is uh, very, very impressive. Sarah Mafu again getting caught to the body, bounces back, oh, and again to the body by Serrano. Sarah Mafu is uh, trying to get the jabs uh, working, but. And trying to get some shots through, but she's just getting smashed a bit, to be honest. Those uh, hooks to the body, uh, they're going to add up, aren't they? Uh, the, this can only go 10 rounds. It's uh, 10 two-minute rounds. There's a bit of damage on the uh, forehead. Oh, it's, is it blood that's coming from Sarah Mafood, is it? I think there's blood coming from the uh, hairline of Sarah Mafood's. Yeah, there's a cut. There's a cut. There's a cut on the uh, head of Sarah. She's just getting smashed, man. She is now getting smashed. I feel, I still feel like uh, Serrano is maybe at uh, second gear now. She's got Sarah Mafood up against the ropes. It was a clash of heads, apparently, that caused it. Body shots, these heavy, heavy body shots. Looking great by uh, Serrano. Oh, Sarah Mafood is catching Serrano. If Sarah Mafood had more power in her hands, she could really cause uh, Serrano problems. God, this 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 left hook to the body is devastating, man. It's devastating. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be taking uh, air out of the tires. That is. Yeah, Mafood is cut. There's blood, but we don't know where the blood's coming from. They just uh, wiped it off, and uh, Serrano is not cut. So uh, this is a bad situation, getting worse for uh, Sarah Mafoods. There's uh, been a clash of heads, and she is uh, busted open. Wasn't even that bad of a clash of the heads by the looks of it. Yeah, all accidental, nothing, uh, nothing in there. Certainly not as bad as the clash of heads we just saw with uh, Nathan Haney. Um, b -b -b um, as they can say, his beaten Parker and Fury fights when AJ drops out. Joyce wins. Right, here we go. Round number three. Round number three. Uh, Serrano taking those first two rounds. Maybe just going through the gears a little bit, but uh, Sarah Mafood has come out and uh, she's trying to 
yeah, be a bit more positive, but uh, obviously Serrano can match her output. Sarah so Mahfoud uh, in the center, trying to get some uh, shots through Serrano. Again, has just opened that cut up. Hook to the body. Shots falling short here by uh, Sarah Mahfoud. Uh, another hook to the body there by Serrano. Yeah, that was nice by Sarah Mahfoud. Overhand just misses there. Nice uh, shot to the side of the head. I gotta say that um, I can't. I can't quite tell if it's. Uh, I, th I think it's Serrano just really uh, operating at quite a laboured pace. Uh, I, I feel like she could easily let her hands go a bit more and really cause Sarah Mahfoud problems. I, it feels like she's just sort of toying with her in a way. She's just kind of coming forward, letting the hands go, easily winning rounds. Serrano, good head movement. It's a pleasure to watch, actually. This is the kind of fight that's a real treat to watch. Certainly if you was there live. I mean, you are watching Amanda Serrano. Just go about her work. It's not perfect. She's definitely getting caught with some stuff. But um, she's looking the better fighter, picking up the rounds. Uh, those big body shots are absolutely beautiful. A little bit scrappy, though. Uh, Sarah Mafu definitely making a contest of this one. Jab coming in there by Sarah. Nice defense there by Serrano, though. Body shot coming in there by uh, Serrano. Serrano was dictating. Sarah Mahfoud, though, doing herself proud. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't really know why we're not seeing more from Serrano. She just seems to be enjoying herself a little bit, just out there, just showing off her skills, really. Uh, Eddie Hearn says to Fury this for Godin AJ after... Later, Fury's cuz dead. Um, I don't know. We're going to find out Monday about Fury and Joshua. We'll find out Monday where we are with uh, with that fight. Hopefully, we still get it. Yep. Big uh, shot to the body there by uh, Serrano. Uh, Sarah Mahfoud, though, she's doing all that. Well, she doesn't look to be in uh, any pain. But... Uh, Commentator scorecards got it 3-0 uh, Serrano, and I would agree with that. Again, Serrano coming out, driving uh, Sarah Mahfoud back. Jab coming in. Yeah, oh my God. Lovely jab and following it up with a great right hand. Hooked to the body there by Serrano. Letting her uh, hands go. Sarah Mahfoud is uh, backing up. Serrano uh, overhand coming in. Shot to the body as well. Lovely work so far by uh, Serrano. Uh, tidy stuff. Straight down the middle. Sarah Mahfoud constantly in retreat mode. Trying to counter punch, but uh, just getting smashed with some big, big shots. It's just constantly. Serrano just constantly coming forward. Deep breath there by uh, Sarah Mahfoud. She is starting to uh, uh, look like this fight is uh, wearing on her. It's just constant, isn't it? It's just, she's not going away. She's just constant output, uppercuts, shots to the body. This is the kind of thing that will uh, break a fighter, demoralize her. It's kind of like, what do I need to do to stop this woman? She's just constantly coming forward. Yeah, nice uh, shot to the body as well. Jab coming in. Serrano is just constantly moving forward. Hook shot. Tried to get an uppercut through, but couldn't get it through. Trying to get a uh, straight left, lovely right shot. Right hand, uppercut to the body. Yeah, the only thing is that we're not we're not seeing like these shots, like really even getting a grimace on the face of uh, Sarah Mahfoud's. It's great work by Serrano, but I'd love to see something that really gives Sarah something to think about. Uh, so far, it is uh, all, I mean, everything is uh, going in the direction 
of Bert Serrano. One way, absolute one way traffic right now. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Wasn't the ring walk supposed to be at 10? It was, but uh, things are uh, a bit delayed. Some of these uh, undercard fights have gone a little bit long. We are seeing uh, Joe Joyce in his uh, dressing room. He doesn't doesn't have his uh, gloves on. I don't know if these are live pictures, but uh, his hands are wrapped, but uh, doesn't have his gloves on yet. We are getting uh, closer and closer, of course, to the uh, main event. This is a co-main event of the evening. Right, here we go. Round number five. Round number five. And uh, we've got Serrano uh, well in control, constantly moving forward, driving uh, Sarah Mahfoud back. He's doing well. Constantly in control. It's more of the same. I, I would really like to see Serrano go through the gears. A couple of uh, shots coming in by uh, Sarah Mahfoud's. Big, uh, heavy uh, hooks coming into the body again. Sarah Mahfoud getting backed up against the ropes. Serrano just, uh, I, I don't know, it's just really tidy, going about her work. Big power shots, big hook shots to the body. Uh, jabbing upstairs. Again, trying to uh, get that big jab through. Lovely uh, left gets through there by Serrano. Looks for an uppercut. One, two, straight down the middle. Shot to the body there by Serrano. And another uh, body shot. Sarah, Sarah's just getting tagged, man. It must be so demoralizing. She's just constantly having to try and block shots. She's constantly on the back foot. Lovely uh, straight right there by Serrano. Yeah, nothing, nothing stopping Serrano, but nothing stopping Sarah Mafood either. So, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, I mean, this feels like it is now. Sarah Mafood's going to need a stoppage. That's all five rounds to Amanda Serrano. Nice uh, shot there to end it from Serrano straight to the body. And uh, we are done with round number five. I mean, I just don't know. I don't, what do you say to her? What do you say to Sarah Mahfoud? What, how do you give her encouragement? I mean, I should imagine she's just totally demoralized. She goes out there and she gets driven back. She has to like eat a load of shots, try and defend what she can, try and get some stuff back. What she does manage to land is nowhere near enough. Keep that jab going, they're saying. Keep the jab going. Um, seems that way, says John. My food is tough, says Nocto. Well, she's definitely eating some uh, shots. Paul said uh, my food has got a chin. I completely agree. We do have to give her credit for that. We do have to give her credit for that. She hasn't flinched. Serrano is well in control. But uh, Mahfoud hasn't uh, flinched, hasn't grimaced, hasn't seemed to be in any kind of uh, discomfort or pain. And we know the power that Serrano has got. So uh, Mahfoud standing her ground in the center, trying to uh, throw some jabs in. Serrano uh, stepping over to the side. We're not seeing much uh, out of Serrano yet in this round. Is she looking for a kill shot or something? Head movement there by uh, Serrano. Serrano again just uh, edging forwards. Again trying to get uh, a jab through. Nice uh, shot to the body. I tell you, if you give Sarah Mahfoud, uh like time and a little bit of space, like, she uh, she seems to, like, grow into the fight and, like, she doesn't back down or anything. She's trying to find uh, a way through here and Serrano is not uh, throwing the volume that she was in those first five rounds. 
Maybe the strategy is get those first five rounds in the in the bank and now try and pick your shots a little bit more. Body shots uh, again there by Serrano. Quite even uh, the first minute of this one, but now we're seeing Serrano uh, driving uh, Sarah back a bit more. Body shot comes in there. Yeah, a couple of jabs up top there by Serrano. Sarah Mafood getting uh, driven back again. A couple of jabs coming in by uh, Sarah. Body shot there. Yeah, I, I would say this was a, a much, much better round by Sarah Mafood. I don't know if she wins it. I don't know. I feel like that round was quite close, you know. I feel like that round was quite close. It's only because for some reason Serrano wasn't really throwing all that much. Much more uh, reserved with her volume. Uh, it'll end up Fury and Joyce for the belts. The world will decide who the hardest family is once and finally, said Cy Walker. Uh, Sarah, my boobs, says David. Got him. Serrano has not got knockout power, said Jake. She has, she has got 30 knockouts to her name. But um, certainly here she seems to be struggling to put uh, Sarah Mafood away. And actually, yes, look at that. We've just seen Richie Woodall's scorecard. He gave that last round to Sarah Mafood. He's given every round to Serrano. And that last round he went with Sarah. I think I would agree with that, you know. I think I would agree with that. Mm, she slowed down. I don't know why she slowed down. I mean, it's not it's not a big problem. She's well ahead. But um, she could really do with, uh, you know, not uh, allowing Sarah Mafood to uh, get too many rounds back. Nice uh, shots to the body. This looks better by Serrano. Serrano coming forward and uh, throwing... Uh, those big body shots uh, again. Sarah Mafood, though, uh, still trying to uh, throw in some counters. Going upstairs with big left hands as uh, we've got Serrano. Just spamming those body shots, man. Serrano coming in, swinging a miss there by Serrano. They're saying uh, that, oh, my God, that was a lovely left hand by Serrano. That was a lovely left hand, but uh, Sarah Mafu just uh, takes it. Serrano uh, coming forward and uh, Sarah on the outside. Hook shot comes in. Sarah covering up, up against the ropes. Yeah, Serrano uh, looking uh, better in this round. Still not, st she still doesn't feel like she's out of first gear. There might have been times in this fight where we've got to second gear, but nothing more than that. Shot coming in. I don't know if she's just being really, really respectful. Big uh, shots coming in. Uh, I'm going to order my food now, said uh, Retribution. Very good. Very good. Getting closer to the main event. We've been made to wait for it. It's been a long night. It's been a long road. But, um, yeah, we are getting closer. Uh, Joe Joyce has got his gloves on right now. Just seeing him uh, practicing on the pads. So uh, we will be uh, going to our main event very, very soon. All right, round... Uh, Round eight coming up. This one could go the distance. You know, I wasn't expecting it. We are backstage with uh, Joseph Parker. Fury's back there. Fury's back there with Parker. Okay, here we go. Round number eight in our co-main event. Serrano is well ahead. Could be 5-2, uh, more likely to be 6-1. 
But Serrano edging forward. We got uh, Sarah backing up. But uh, she's still trying to uh, get her counters off. She's still trying to get a jab straight down the middle. And a Serrano big left hook there by Serrano. Serrano uh, again trying to move forward, uh, throw out those uh, shots straight down the middle. That's a lovely left straight. Lovely uh, straight. Coming in and uh, Sarah, big body shot again. Yeah, this uh, Serrano uh, looking good here. Serrano looking good. Jabbing away. Sarah getting backed up. Doubling upper jabs there, Serrano. Good head movement by uh, Serrano into a uh, clinch, but they break apart. Both uh, women in the center at the moment. Good head movement there by Serrano. Again, uh, jab coming in. Shot to the body, Sarah. Getting backed up a little. Jab coming in again there by uh, Serrano. Oh, just heavy blows by Serrano. Big hook shots coming in. It's it's just more of the same all the time. More of the same. Uh, crowds are really quiet on this. Crowd aren't making much noise at all. How many rounds are they doing? Uh, it can go 10 rounds. So uh, rounds, uh, this is round number eight. Two more rounds to go. Joe Joyce, Joseph Parker on the way. We are getting closer and closer. Uh, uh, Stephen, shout out to you, my friends. Yeah, I must admit this is uh, quite a flat fight. Uh, I would say that it's quite flat because we're just not seeing them go through the gears. It's all very pedestrian. It's uh, Serrano taking the fight to Sarah. Sarah definitely trying to counter. But, um, yeah, it's just, um, it, I don't know. You, you know that Serrano could, has got, like, at least five more gears that she could go through. Round number nine coming up. Um, how many rounds is this? We're at round nine. So they've actually scored uh, at the moment. They've scored every round for Serrano apart from one. And two rounds to go. So, uh, yeah, I think at this stage, like, Sarah's going to need a finish. So four minutes left in this fight for Sarah to find a finish. Serrano has uh, been good. I would say not great. I would say that she hasn't needed to be great. Um, there could be some concern about the power, but I mean, we saw uh, her power on full display against Katie Taylor. She had, she had Taylor in a whole world of trouble at the end of uh, their fight at Madison Square Garden back in April. Serrano uh, coming forward, jabbing away, and Sarah just jabbing back. Uh, I agree. Throw in the towel. Dort Knight said, if you came into a lot of money, maybe win the lottery, how would you spend your days? Would you invest or travel the world or go to the UFC or watch wrestling events? Uh, if I win a lot of money, what would I do? Do you know what? I I wouldn't quit YouTube. I I might not stream as much, um, but I mean, a lot of the things that we watch, we watch because I love them. So I would still watch them. And to be honest, like uh, you know, I I love chatting with you guys. So I think a lot of this would still carry on. To be honest, even if I won the lottery, and that's a nice position to be in, isn't it? To say that you would still do something even if you won the lottery. But I think that's the truth. Yeah, I think that's the truth. But uh, I would buy a house. I would buy a car. I would go on holiday. Do you know, they say that when you're at your happiest, it's when you um, can cover your bills and afford to go out for a meal like once a month or something. If you can do, if you can go on holiday once a year, cover your bills and go for the occasional meal, that is peak happiness. Anything after that is just 
diminishing returns, basically. If you can't cover the bills and you've got those kind of headaches, that's, you know, that's when life's hard. If you're having to work like loads of jobs to cover the bills, that's when life's hard. But if you've got a job that you enjoy and you can cover the bills and afford to go, on not, not even like an around the world holiday, just on holiday, you know, pop to, you know, vacation somewhere in America. If you're in America, go to Spain if you're here in the UK, as long as you can do that. So to be honest, I mean, that's the goal. <laughs> And <laughs> get to that level. That's my goal. I don't even need to win the lottery. So, uh, yeah. Lots of money. It's, it's overrated. I saw Mayweather, like, buying million-dollar necklaces. He, I mean, like, he's got all the money in the world. He doesn't know what to do with it. Right, here we go then. Round number 10. Round number 10. Uh, Bunker said, you thought Serrano would get the knockout. I did. I did. Uh, she's dominated. And to be honest, she's not left first gear. And I can't tell you why she hasn't left first gear. She's just, she's looked very pedestrian. She's she's chased um, Sarah Mahfoud around the ring and thrown big body shots. And Sarah Mahfoud has just took all of that that punishment She's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why she's not, like, really let the hands go, really put the pressure on, really got uh, Sarah Mahfoud backed up. I mean, we have to remember that Sarah Mahfoud is 11 and 0, and we have to remember that she is a champion. She is the uh, IBF champion. 45 seconds left to go. Uh, I would move next door to Days and I would never say hello, says William. It's good to have a dream. Uh, Arsenal Life, shout out to you. Uh, big up Days with the inspiring speech. It's uh, it's true. <laughs> it's actually true. I read that. The, uh, they say that that is peak happiness. As if you can, if you can get to that level, you've, you've, you've completed life. Both these win in the uh, centre then as they're swinging away. Fair play to Sarah Mahfoud. I mean, w w fair play. Done herself proud here. She's gone 10 rounds. She's been battered. She took a lot of punishment. She's going to feel it tomorrow, I'm sure. Yeah. And that's what the commentators just said. Like, Mahfoud comes out of this with some real credit. Uh, same band that sings White Rabbit, Jefferson Airplane. I've got an album called Take Off. One of the title tracks uh, is Let Me In. Interesting. TJMW 2007. Uh, John said, KOs have become very rare in the heavyweight division recently. Will Parker Joyce be any different? Can uh, see a KO in this one. I don't think Parker's knocking out Joyce. So if there is going to be a knockout, I think it's going to be Joyce. Uh, Kevin said, uh, Tyson Fury says Parker is going to win. Just Nick said, if I had lots of money, I would buy my mother's house and pretend that I have no money. Uh, interesting facts. Days used to be a shareholder for Toys R Us, says Matt. Uh, I am going to put money on Ronda, said Edward. Fair play. Is this a six rounder? Main event. Main event will be 12 rounds. Co main event's done. Uh, Serrano surely won it. And uh, sadly, it didn't live up to my expectation. I was hoping for better. Here we go, then. Here's the result. After 10 rounds.
There we go. Amanda Serrano gets it by unanimous decision. So no surprise. She is now the um, unified featherweight uh, champion of the world. She's got uh, belts everywhere. So many belts. Look at all these belts. They can't even put all the belts on her. <laughs> She's got one on this shoulder, one on this shoulder, one in this arm, one over there. Mm. An incredible achievement. So there we go. Smile on her face as uh, she poses. And we are at the main event of the evening. It's been a long road. It's been a long road. It's been uh, four and a half hours, actually, four hours, 45. Um, so it has been a long road getting to uh, the main event. In all fairness, on a Saturday night, we do tend to do quite long UFC streams. Uh, if you are new to the channel, uh, we do pro wrestling pretty much all throughout the week. Um, and then we've got big, big boxing and UFC uh, streams on the way. Uh, there's a lot coming up. There's a lot, lot, lot coming up. We've got the likes of uh, uh, Mayweather. Well, Mayweather later tonight. We've got uh, Eubank Ben. We've got Wilder. We've got maybe Cambosis uh, against... Um, uh, Devin Haney, but I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that because it might collide with Wilder. Uh, Jake Paul against Anderson Silva. Bivol is going to be in action. Ricky Hatton is in action. Crawford Spence. Fury Joshua. There's a lot coming up. They're just interviewing Serrano as we're uh, waiting to go to our main event. Uh, can someone answer me this? Did Katie not take the belts from Amanda? No, that was at a different weight class. So uh, her featherweight belts weren't on the line. So uh, she talks about doing the rematch with Katie Taylor. The fans were so welcoming. Amanda Serrano said that she enjoyed every minute being in Manchester. So, uh, yeah, they're just interviewing Serrano and uh, she's just thanking uh, people. Uh, Parker, up to 45% now in the poll. Smash the like button. That's true, guys. If you think that Joe Joyce is going to win, smash that like button. If you think it is Parker, then hit the like button and uh, we'll look at the likes after and see uh, who it is that you think is going to win. Um, but in the chat, I can tell you it's 50% for Joe Joyce, 45% for Parker, 5% for a draw, over 2,000 votes. That's pretty good, isn't it? That's pretty good. Over 2,000 votes. We have had uh, votes and polls that have done over 50,000. That is for pretty big UFC shows, though. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, for this, uh, I didn't know quite what to expect from this fight. 
I knew I was interested in it. I knew there was people interested in it, but a lot of our community is based in the US and then I didn't know how this would play to a US crowd. But uh seems like there's people that are definitely interested in it. It's got big repercussions in the heavyweight division. I think that's always exciting. Joseph Parker is uh, 30 and 2. His uh, losses come into Joshua and Dillian White. He's on a six-fight winning streak. Former uh, WBO heavyweight champion. Taking on Joe Joyce. And as we said, Joe Joyce is a lump of a man. Monster of a man. He's a jab machine. He's got amazing chin, amazing stamina. Just keeps moving forwards. A uh, little bit awkward. Very unconventional. Bit of a slow starter, comes through in the later rounds. I've got Joe Joyce winning. But uh, it is going to be close. Average guy said Parker is a gatekeeper for the top heavyweights. Kevin said Parker wins on points. Uh, Stephen Paddy said Parker domination. Uh, 800 uh, watching, let's spike the likes, said uh, Rodzilla. Shout out to everyone that's uh, joining us. It's been a long road, but uh, we are finally now at our main event. And uh, we should be getting the uh, ring walks and announcements very, very soon. So uh, we've just got a little uh, video package at the moment. We're just looking at some interviews. As we said, Joe Joyce, he is a big, big guy. 14 wins. 13 knockouts for uh, Joe Joyce. I think if if there is going to be a knockout, I think it will be Joe Joyce that gets it. Uh, Lee said, this AJ Fury on-off nonsense is boring. Drop the egos, sign the contracts. Uh, Joe Joyce, you are dreaming, says uh, NZ Bricky. David said, he's got a chin like a bulldog, just like Tessa Blanchard. <laughs> Uh, John said, if Parker doesn't concentrate on the body and the uppercuts, that would be a big mistake. No point hitting Joyce in the head. Scott has got Joyce all day. Joyce all day. Right, we're just seeing this video package. I can tell you the bookers have got Joe Joyce, uh, minus 200 favorite. Joseph Parker at plus 160. Um, plenty of uh, Parker fans in the chat. Shout out to you. Nothing but love for Parker. Uh, he's such a nice guy. I, I really like him. I really like Parker. If he wins, no problems. Yep. Class, composure. in the shape of his life. And he's got Tyson Fury in his corner as well. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat which way do you think this is going to go? Who do you think is going to win? Let us know. Uh, I would only sell lizard window stickers and used condoms, says William. Used condoms, it's uh, a business that, uh, you know, someone could really uh, get a monopoly with. So go for it. I don't recommend playing Monopoly with them, but um, yeah, I, I don't see too many people selling used condoms. So go for it, William. It could be your calling. Uh, average guy said Parker is a gatekeeper. He is good, but sadly not top heavyweight material. Uh, a long, boring slugfest. A points win for Joyce. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. Thanks, uh, uh, SJ. That's got the that's got the blood pumping. That's got the spirits uh, arisen there. We're in for a long slugfest. Hopefully, it's going to be a bit of a banger. Hopefully, they're going to uh, go for it. Here we go. Parker steps out. Parker is, uh, he's got Fury in his entourage. There's a dude next to him that looks like a old, broken Triple H.
saying that uh, Joe Joyce is uh, most vulnerable in the first few rounds. He, it, he is a slow starter. It's a, it's a good point, you know, can Parker capitalize on those early rounds? Parker wins by uh, TKO round three. Average guy said Francis and Garnu by knockout round eight. Uh, Parker by knockout in 10. SJ, shout out to you. Don't see why Parker doesn't win, says uh, Euphoria. Uh, Parker for the win. If I had tangible money, I would bet it all on Parker, said Daniel. Uh, lots of support for Parker. Chipsy Queen? Gypsy Queen? Is that what Parker is? If uh, Fury is the Gypsy King, is this the Gypsy Queen? Oh, I like that. That's good. That's good. Gypsy Queen. Gypsy Queen. Gypsy Queen. Here's uh, Parker then. Is, uh, we're seeing him backstage slowly making his way uh, down to the entranceway. We're seeing in the bowels of the Manchester A.O. Arena. Uh, Parker has never come close to being KO'd. He's faster and a great counterpuncher. I can't see in any way why anyone would favor Joyce, says John. Joyce will win, says uh, uh, a different John. Right, here we go. Fury is... Uh, Fury is uh, in the ring. Yeah, this is going to be good, man. Uh, this has got a big, big fight feel to it. Big fight feel for this one. Uh, Parker is a cut above. Joyce and Joshua are Nigerian. Uh, Parker needs to get inside because he is smaller, said uh, Rick and Blaze. Round four for Parker, says Seb. Andrew said, fan of both. Interesting to see if we see Joyce hurt. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Parker has got a P Peter Griffin body. <laughs> that might be one of my favorite. Uh, comments of the night. I like that. Joseph Parker then uh, getting his uh, intro. Here he is. Joseph Parker making his uh, ring walk right now. So it is time for the main event of the evening. I don't know the track that he's coming out to. It's one of those hip hop tracks. It's one of those recent hip hop tracks. He's only 30. He's cooler than me. In fairness, he could be 82 and he'd still be cooler than me. Yeah, it's amazing. It is amazing that he's only 30. Whenever I think of Joseph Parker, I always think he's at least in his mid 30s, maybe even late 30s. He's 30 years old, but he's had 32 fights. I mean, he's took a lot of punishment. I think that's his mommy comes down and uh, gives an old woman uh, a kiss. I uh, hope the fight lives up to the £20 price tag, said Retribution. Parker's a very technical fighter. He will test Joyce's technical ability, said Kiwi CCTV. Uh, please explain why Joyce is good. I just see a robot boxing. Uh, Joyce is good because he has got fantastic conditioning. Joyce uh, will be still throwing and um, moving forward and pressuring in round 12. Um, as he is in the early stages. He is very robotic. He is not the most technical of uh, fighters, but he has got heavy hands. 
He's got uh, big clubbing blows and uh, he's got a hell of a chin on him as well. So what tends to happen is you tend to see uh, Joyce getting um, uh, kind of smashed in the early stages. I would expect Parker, I expect Parker to look good. Rounds one, rounds two, mount rounds three. By the time we get into about round four, uh, I would imagine that Parker will start slowing a little bit, but you, you won't see any decline out of Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce just takes that punishment, eats it up, doesn't give a flip, and, uh, you know, can land shots that can cause problems as well. So the problem Joyce is going to have is that, you know, is when when is Parker going to start to tire? When is Parker going to start to tire? Can he uh, and can he find a shot that's going to uh, put Parker down? And if he can't put Parker down, is he going to be able to not lose too many rounds at the start? Because I think certainly Joyce is going to win the later rounds. But how many of the early rounds will Parker have in the bag before Joyce really starts getting going, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting. And obviously, Parker's got a massive experience advantage. 30 wins for Parker, 21 knockouts, decent power. But uh, he is going up against someone that is undefeated. Joe Joyce, 14 fights, 14 wins, 13 knockouts. Let's see. It's a big main event. Uh, Joyce by dodgy decision. I do not put that past him. Do not put it past him. Uh, quiet crowd. The crowd are quite quiet, yeah. Okay, so uh, both fighters are inside uh, the ring. So we are going to be underway with this one very, very soon. We've had nearly uh, 2,500 votes. So uh, a big shout out to everyone that's voted. If you are joining us, um, you know, make sure that you leave a like. We're at 267. It'd be great if we could get to 268. That's the dream. Uh, biggest win for Joyce, uh, probably against Dubois. Probably against Daniel Dubois. Undeniable that this is his biggest fight. Undeniable. Certainly not a foregone conclusion. By any means. Uh, Daniel said, don't forget there is still the rematch, says uh, Daniel. Right. Uh, introductions. Uh, get your final thoughts in. Uh, Parker is decent, but Joyce can bang, said uh, Enrico. I agree with that. I agree with that. Parker in five rounds. Uh, Adam said Parker by knockout in round 12. Dirtman said uh, Joyce has been dropped, if not stopped, in the amateurs. He's definitely getting dropped here, said Dirtman. Euphoria said this is a 50-50 fight. Uh, Hayden said five hour stream, five hour stream, live in the dream, five hour stream. Uh, Hunter MC said Parker's got this. Retribution said the crowd are quiet because they're all nervous. I think it's exciting. I'm excited. I, uh, I like both guys. I really like Parker. Um, of course I, uh, like Joe Joyce. As well, I think he's a fairly nice guy, Joe Joyce, but also obviously representing Britain. So, um, you know, I'd like Joe Joyce to do it, to be honest. But um, I really like Parker. So if Parker wins, great. I don't think either of these are beating Usyk. I don't think either beat Usyk, so... Uh, Robert, shout out to you, my friend. Robert's... Uh, uh, Waller, appreciate it. Is Bobby Davro there? God, I hope so. 
I think he sat next to uh, Timmy Mallet in the front row. Okay, here we go. Joe Joyce getting his uh, intro, and we really should be underway now. Just waiting for people to uh, get out the ring. Both guys have had their introductions. Referee calling both fighters into the uh, center. Final instructions. Joe Joyce, the bigger fighter. A big guy, isn't he? He's a big, big guy. Here we go, then. I think he weighed in at, uh, what was it, 271? 271 pounds, Joe Joyce. 255 for uh, Joseph Parker. So uh, 16 pounds difference between these two. About two inches in height. Four-inch reach advantage for Joe Joyce. And we are underway. Joe Joyce coming uh, into the center with Parker. So uh, here we go. We are underway. Main events. Joe Joyce in white shorts. Parker in black. And uh, we are seeing... Uh, both guys uh, just feeling each other out. A couple of jabs coming in there by Joe Joyce. Again, trying to get uh, jab through. It's all a little bit stiff at the moment, but uh, he's trying to get these jabs through, and he lands a couple of jabs there, Joe Joyce. Saying that Joyce needs to box with a bit of respect here because uh, Parker definitely has got uh, great skills. Parker on the back foot. Couple of jabs coming in there by Parker. Joyce uh, edging forwards. And again, uh, Parker looking to go to uh, the body. He tries to double up on his jabs there, Parker. Joe Joyce again uh, standing in the center. Tries to uh, throw a jab in. Quite uh, even in these early stages. Couple of jabs coming into the body there by Parker. Joyce uh, getting a left shot through, but Parker trying to get some body shots in. Again, not much in the way of hand speed from uh, Joe Joyce. Parker doubling up on the jab and getting it through. So uh, I feel like this might be, it might be Parker at the moment, but if he is ahead, it's not by much. Again, uh, a couple of hook shots coming in there by uh, Parker, but uh, well defended by Joyce. Clinching up, referee coming in, separating them. The optics of that would have looked good. Big shot there, but Joe Joyce gets a couple of shots through. Parker backed up against the ropes. Joyce uh, again backing up Parker and into uh, the clinch. So quite interesting in the early stages of this one. Coming forwards, uh, we've got Joe Joyce. Is looking very uh, robotic, very rigid. Parker getting uh, backed up. <laughs> Big heavy shot to the side of the head there by Parker. Parker again getting caught in the corner. But uh, good counters coming back. I feel like this is a Parker round. There we go. End of the round. I think that's a Parker round. I think that's a park around personally. Let me know uh, how you're uh, seeing it and scoring it. Nothing uh, much in there that I think really swings it uh, one way. Uh, judges could go either way with that first round, but I would say that was a park around. Uh, Joyce Android. Yeah, he is, man. He does just, like, lumber forward with his arms up. Yeah, it's true. Not, not much in it. 
commentators saying you can make an argument one way or the other, but um, I, I always call it as I see it. And uh, for me, that's Parker. Here we go then. Round number two. A couple of jabs, uh, quick jabs coming in there by Parker. Joe Joyce edging forwards. Parker backing up against the ropes a little bit. Joe Joyce again trying to get his uh, jab through. He's doing a good job of uh, backing Parker up. But Parker is uh, seemingly able to get out of the corner. He's constantly getting backed into the corner, but Joe Joyce seemingly letting him get out a bit too easily. Nice body shots there by Parker, though. Joyce uh, trying to uh, come forward. Parker up against the ropes again. Oh, nice uh, hook to the body there by Joe Joyce. Trying to get a uh, jab through, but uh, body shots come back. Jabs come back by Parker. And uh, into uh, the clinch. Shot to the side of the body there by Joe Joyce. Breaking apart. Shot straight down the middle. This awkward style, it looks awkward. It looks clumsy. It looks robotic. But it does work for Joe Joyce. He knows how to make this style work. Oh, that was a lovely right hand by Joe Joyce. Body shots there by Joyce. Bit of success here by Joyce. Jabs coming in straight down the middle. Hooks to the body. Shots coming back by uh, Parker. Parker with a lovely right hand. Great left hand jab straight down the middle by Parker. Doubling up on the jab as well. Parker going to the body. Joe Joyce has got Parker backed in the corner. He's looking for some body shots of his own. Both guys getting some moments in this uh, contest. Big right hand coming in, but a lovely hook shot comes back by Joe Joyce. These two exchanging some lovely blows. Nice body shots coming in there by Parker into uh, the clinch. Referee coming in, separating these two. Uh, nice uh, right hand. And again, Parker's just got to make sure that he's not getting caught in the corners. He's just constantly going into the corners. And then it's just like, it's hard for him to find a way out. He explodes forward there. Explodes forward with a big left hand. Again, he's just going from one corner to the next corner. Joyce, uh, again, just getting some uh, shots into the body. I feel like the volume is with Parker. There's been some lovely moments in this round for both fighters, though. <clears throat> Parker in the corner. Again, we're into the dying seconds of this one. Juggernaut is too much for Parker. There we go. End of the round. Joyce, Joyce was looking a bit better there, and there's quite a bit of damage on the face of uh, Parker. Yeah, I'm going to say that's a Joyce round. I'm going to say it's a Joyce round. I feel like volume might have just been with Parker, but if it was, it wasn't by much. And I think there were some heavy blows in there by Joyce. This feels like a very, very even fight at the moment. So I feel like 1-1 one, one is very fair. Very close, though. Very close. Retribution has got it 2-0 to uh, Joyce. Let me know in the chat how you are seeing it. Uh, Enrico said Joyce is warming up nicely. Dancing Brave has got it 19-19. Uh, Roman Soldier said uh, round three already. Round three. Uh, Arsenal Live said uh, Joyce 2-0 uh, all day. Here we go then. Joyce coming forward and uh, we got Parker in the corner. We're seeing Joyce uh, jabbing away to the body. Again, uh, coming forward, Parker backing up into that corner. We're seeing uh, Parker trying to get jabs straight down the middle. There, nice uh, shot to the body there by Parker. Ooh, hook shots coming in here by Joyce. Little digs to the body. Joyce looking uh, quite good now. 
Nice little moment in this uh, round, but couldn't capitalize. And Parker not allowing a bad situation to get worse. Oh, big body shot there. He's up against the ropes. Parker looks to be in a bit of trouble. Trouble. Yep, he sinks back to the ropes. Big digs to the body. Big body shots here by Joyce. Yeah, I think Parker has felt has felt the power of Joe Joyce. So uh, Parker is uh, trying to avoid. I think he's eaten some big body shots. He's coming back with some shots of his own, though. You can see damage on the face of Parker. Bit of damage on the face of Joe Joyce. There was a moment there. There was a real moment where it felt like Parker was in big, big trouble. But uh, he seems to have weathered that storm. He's throwing uh, some stuff back now. Oh, heavy body shot there by uh, Parker. Joe Joyce is just eating all of this. And this is what he does. He just eats it all. It just doesn't phase him. And he just keeps coming. Now he's got Parker caught in another corner again. Jab coming in by Joe Joyce. Another jab coming in. He's keeping him trapped in the corner. Body shot coming in there by uh, Parker. Yeah, Joyce, uh, Joyce having a really good round here. This is a Joyce round all day long. I think uh, Parker got the first round. Joyce got the second. Joyce is going to get this round. Obviously, we've still got 20-odd seconds to go. Oh, that was a lovely uh, shot to the body. Little uh, stumble to the side there by Parker. Joyce is after him. Joyce has got Parker over by the ropes, but Parker is swinging away. They're uh, in a clinch at the moment. Joyce putting all of his weight onto Parker. Referee coming in and uh, separating them. I tell you, he did well at the end of that round, you know. Yeah, Parker did well at the end of that round, but I still think it's a Joyce round. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good contest. This. This is two guys swinging and going at it, man. Good fight. Two one Joyce, no doubt. Said Billy. I've got two one Joyce. Let me know in the chat how you're seeing it. Let's get rid of this. Uh, let's get rid of that pole. Don't need that pole anymore. Three nil Joyce. So uh, you lot have said fifty percent think that Joyce is going to win. Forty four percent said Parker. Uh, four said a draw. It's a good contest, this. Good contest. Uh, Euphoria said Joyce 2-1, but this is a fight. It's good, isn't it? It's a good contest. Here we go. Round number four. Joyce comes out into the center. Again, more of the same. We're seeing Parker getting uh, backed up. Joyce uh, jabbing away, getting his uh, shot straight down the middle. Uh, so far, the commentary team have got it 2-1 as well to Joyce. Not much in it, though. Oh, overhand connects there by Parker. Parker getting uh, backed up into the corners again. Joyce has done a really good job of doing that. Constantly getting uh, Parker back into the corner. There's a lot of respect there, though. He doesn't he doesn't really capitalize on those positions as well as I would like to see. Oh, that's a lovely right hand by uh, Parker to the body, though. Oh, lovely dig to the body there by Parker again. I wonder if he is feeling the effects of these, Joyce, because some of these shots look great. Some of these shots by Parker look really good, really effective. Joyce uh, not getting really through with anything at the moment. Shots coming back by uh, Parker. I'm waiting to see Joyce land something significant in this round. I feel like this round at the moment is with Parker, you know. I think Parker's landed the better, more eye-catching shots in this fourth round. But we are seeing some decent output by uh, Joe Joyce. Joyce again trying to uh, land a jab into uh, clinch. 
Referee coming in and separating these two apart. Joyce uh, moving forward. Parker in the center as well. Both of these guys in the center of the ring. Up against the ropes is uh, Parker. In the corner again is Parker. Joyce just backing up, though. Not looking to capitalize. This can be the frustrating thing with Joyce. You just want to see him go through the gears. He doesn't. Very robotic. Very going through the motions. Shot coming in there by uh, Joyce. Couple of uh, jabs up top. These two just jabbing away. Oh, that's a lovely, lovely shot there by uh, Parker. Mm, brilliant. Some of these, sh uh, some of these shots that Parker have been thrown has been absolutely brilliant. I really like this round. I, I think this is a Parker round. Couple of jabs coming in there by Parker. Oh, tries to throw a big right hand. Oh, big overhand right by Parker again. I, I'm going to say that's a part. I think the eye-catching stuff there was coming by Parker. I've got this 2-2. Two -two. I've got this 2-2. Two -two. Joe Joyce's chin is absolutely crazy. Some of these shots, some of these shots that uh, Joe Joyce has taken have been uh, absolutely plum. They've been absolutely beautiful. And he just keeps moving forwards. And that's what he does. And that's what he'll continue to do. Mm, that was a lovely right hand. Lovely right hand. Bang! Look at that overhand right at the end. Mm. Oh, beautiful. That's a lovely shot. Lovely shot. Uh, Roman Nomad said agreed 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Lots of people with it 2-2 uh, two, two at the moment. Here we go. Round number five. What a great fight. Really enjoyable stuff. Couple of jabs coming in here by uh, Joe Joyce. Oh, uh, the commentator's got it two rounds apiece as well. Body shots coming in there by Parker. Joe Joyce uh, not able to really land anything. Couple of jabs coming in. Doubling up on those jabs. Big body shots. This is good by Joe Joyce. That was good. He seemed to have uh, Parker in a bit of trouble there. When he does let his hands go, certainly to the body, that's when we see Joe Joyce getting real success. I would like to see him do more of that. Like when he goes to the body, really try and get a couple of those big, big body shots through. I mean, he does rely on his chin. He knows that he's going to be hit. And if you're going to be hit, at least dish something significant out. Here's uh, Joyce moving forward. Parker with his uh, hands down over in the corner. This can go 12 rounds, of course. At the moment, we are in round five. And this round is quite close at the moment. I would say that uh, Joyce is probably just edging this round. But uh, not much in it. Nice uh, hook shot there by Joyce, uh, referee. Just having a word with both fighters. Joyce coming in. Parker in there. Hook shot there by Joyce. Hook shot again by Joyce. Shot comes back, but it's blocked. Joyce moving forwards. Parker backing up in a corner again. Into a clinch. Referee coming over, looking to uh, separate these two. And uh, we're seeing... Uh, oh, lovely shot there by Joyce. Hook shot, that got through. That was nice. No, uh, no issue, though. Parker uh, ate it. I don't know if Joyce got all of it, but uh, he did get it through. And uh, again, he's just stalking him, putting pressure on him. Body shots coming in there by Parker. Parker trying to respond, but some lovely hook shots coming back. Oh, that was, God, that was great. Beautiful right hand there by Parker. Right in the center of the ring as uh, Joyce continues to put the pressure on. Parker up back against the ropes. 18 seconds in the uh, dying stages. 
of round number five. Parker up against the ropes. Joe Joyce just uh, is, is in a good position, but not, uh, not really offering anything. Close, close round, this one. Close round. I'm going to go uh, Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce for that one. I think some of the big moments were with Joe Joyce, but I, I, I really wouldn't argue if people went with Parker on that one. Yeah, I, I wouldn't argue um, if you went either way on that one. I've got it 3-2, Joe Joyce. Super close. Super close. Oscar's got it 5-0, Parker. Uh, Parker is winning, but must be careful, said one in a billion. Uh, Billy said 3-2, Joyce. Parker acknowledged Joe's power and chin. He knows what he's dealing with now. Uh, Tony's got it 3-2, Joyce. Euphoria's got it 3-2, Joyce. Retribution has got it 4-1, Joyce. Uh, Jack's got it 3-2, Joyce. Here we go. Round number six. Round six. Here we go. Joyce comes out. Joyce comes out. Working the body. Joyce uh, seems to have uh, got a bit more intensity here. Joyce looking good. Letting the hands go. Driving Parker back. Parker in the corner, that's better. And he's working the body. Joe Joyce is going for it. This is much better by Joyce. Overhand. Oh, lovely shots here by Joyce. Joyce has got Parker in a bit of trouble. Parker trying to cover up. He's up against the ropes. And again, hooks to the body by Joyce. Parker, I think, is definitely feeling these. Great first minute of this round for uh, Joyce. And uh, into the clinch. Referee comes in. Separates them. Joyce with a big lead in this round. And again, he's got Parker up against the ropes. Parker trying to get some body shots coming back. Joyce, uh, good head movement. Lovely jab there by Joyce. Oh, big shots. Big round this for Joyce. Big round. Good round. It is relentless by Joe Joyce. He's got Parker in the corner. Oh, lovely hook shot there by Parker, though. Left hand hook shot, but a jab comes in by Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce has built up quite a lead in this round. That's all he needs to do, in all fairness. Just come out and just, you know, big lead at the start. And then he doesn't need to really force too much for the rest of the round. Right now, we're not seeing the volume. He came out, he unloaded. We're seeing them exchanging jabs. Yeah, Parker getting some shots through. Both of these guys just uh, letting the other person know what they've got. But Joe Joyce with a big lead in this round for me. And, uh, and he's still throwing on Parker. Parker backed up against the ropes. Yeah, Joyce looking uh, good in this round. Joyce looking really good. He's got Parker backed up against the ropes again. Even just getting your opponent up against the ropes, I think uh, is quite a good look to the judges. Both of these uh, guys exchanged, and there was a little upcut in there by Joyce. Just a little dig, and I think that gave Parker something to think about. He's got him back again against the ropes. Joyce, uh, 14 seconds or so left on the clock into the clinch. Round seven coming up. This is a definite Joyce round. Definite Joyce round. These two exchanging blows in the center. And there we go. End of the round. Parker being punished, said GSV. Uh, Joyce uh, working his jab really, really well. Really, really well. He's just been working the jab. And um, I think the body shots as well. There's been some big, big body shots. The jab has driven Parker back against the ropes. Once Parker's against the ropes, he does look to go to the body. Parker's been very good at throwing in counter shots, though. And uh, a lot of these rounds have been close. I've got it 4-2 to Joyce at the moment. 
uh, JLM Shorts. Shout out to you. Welcome to the channel. Uh, is your name Days? Yes. Uh, Rope Dope. Go on, Parker, said John. Parker will knock Joyce out, said uh, All Two Faced. Here we go. We are underway with uh, round number seven. And we're seeing Joyce come out the gates quite quickly again. And again, he's got uh, Parker getting backed up. Oh, that's lovely by Parker. Lovely by Parker. There was a three-shot combo there. That was great by Parker. Lovely uh, left hook shot. There seemed to be a right and then a dig to the body as well. That was great. That was great. Yeah, I feel like Parker, that little uh, combo has uh, put Parker ahead in my mind. That looked great. Here we're seeing Joyce, though, still moving forward. He's got Parker backed up against the ropes. Joyce could really do something here. Misses with an uppercut there, Parker. Body shots coming in by Joyce. Oh, this is good. Goodbye, Joyce. And uh, they clinch up. Referee comes in, separates them apart. Uh, nice, they're exchanging blows in the center, body shots. Oh, and he's got Parker up against the ropes. I feel like the round's even now. Body shot coming back, though, by Parker. Oh, lovely hook. Jab straight down the middle. Parker getting driven back against the ropes again. Dig to the body there by Joyce. So much going on here. This is wild. Yeah, good. I feel like Joyce might have now just took the leads. There's not much in it again. I think Parker had the early part of the round. Joyce got himself back into it. We're still quite close. But uh, we're just constantly seeing Parker getting driven back against the ropes. Joyce in the middle. Oh, lovely shots to the body. Just quick one-twos there by Parker. Parker getting driven back again, though. Joyce unloading on Parker. Nice work there by Joyce. Heavy hands, though. Neither guy seems to be able to really unload. Joyce uh, trying to uh, get some shots through. I'm getting tired just watching these guys. Some of these shots are like, well, a lot of these shots are quite labored. Referee coming in, separating them apart. Oh! Joyce! Big overhand. Parker goes back against the ropes in the corner. One, two, little uppercut. Oh, Parker coming forwards. I think there's blood on the face. Yeah, blood coming down the side of the face. Oh. Joe Joyce can sense a finish. This is good by uh, Joyce. Parker looks a little bit uh, wobbly. Joyce, Joyce round again. Joyce round again. Parker with blood on the side of his face. Wow, great action, great fights. We were hoping for a great fight. We wanted a great fight. We are getting a great fight. I think that, um, I really do think that this fight um, has shown like, you know, lots of, uh, uh, like, uh, people out there that were doubting Joe Joyce, just, it's really showing him off. It's really showing what he's capable of. Yes. He's robotic. Yes. He's not the most technical boxer, but he just keeps coming forwards. He will back you up. And when he backs you up, he will get some shots through and, and he's got power. And uh, Parker, I think, has uh, tasted some of that power. And uh, I think we're getting to the point where he's starting to really struggle with it. I think he's starting to struggle with it. Now we're seeing Joyce still coming forward, jabbing away. He's got Parker backed in the corner. Body shots and, uh, again, hooks coming into the head. Joyce uh, still seems to be uh, unloading. It's not pretty. It, this is not technically beautiful stuff, but it's very effective. And Parker bleeding down from his eye. Fury is uh, looking concerned. Jab coming in there by uh, Joyce. 
These two clinch in the center. Referee coming in, separating them apart. Parker backing up as uh, Joyce is uh, moving forwards. Referee coming in, separating the fighters again. Lovely uh, right hand there by Joyce. Parker backed up against the ropes. Jabs coming in by Joyce. Joyce again back in. Uh, Parker up. Parker trying to get a jab off. Nice jab coming in there by uh, Joyce. Parker again in retreat in the corner. Shot coming in. Parker looking really wobbly on his feet. Really wobbly on his feet. He's trying to counter punch. Oh, lovely hook shot there by Joyce. He goes back against the ropes again. Dig to the body by Joyce. Over. Oh, you're just waiting for that kill shot. You're just waiting for that blow that's going to put Parker down. Joyce coming forwards. It's a great contest. It's a great fight. Lovely jab there by Joyce. We're in the final minute of this round. Body shot there. Parker in retreat mode. Parker again a body shot. That one must have stung. And again, uh, Joyce, again, he's just constantly leaning on him, leaning on him. I think he's uh, made him carry some of that weight as well. Joyce, it is relentless. This is relentless. Nice uh, shot coming in. Overhand there by uh, Joyce. Jabbing uh, Parker back in the corner. Little dig to the body there by Parker. Parker and Joyce uh, clinching up. This feels like another Joyce uh, round to me. Uh, so far, we've had eight rounds. I've given two of them to Parker. So I've got this 6-2 at the moment. 6-2 is where we are. Parker is uh, bleeding. There's blood coming down from the side of his face. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. How are you scoring it? Parker is bleeding bad now. Has there been a knockdown? There hasn't, actually. Parker showing that he can take punishment. He's looked wobbly on the feet. He has looked wobbly. Uh, Dancing Brave said, I'm surprised Parker lasted. Joe Joyce uh, went for it and he couldn't get the finish. Parker not going down without a fight. It's true. He's doing himself proud, actually. I mean, I know that he is a former champion and he wants to get the win here, but he is taking some punishment. He's taking some punishment. The referee concerned about the cut, apparently. So uh, here we go. We've got uh, jabs coming in by uh, Joyce. So uh, commentators said that Joyce on their scorecard has got a significant lead. Uh, they have got it. Yes, they've got it 6-2 as well. Jab's coming in by uh, Joyce. Joyce just uh, jabbing away at the moment. Again, getting through, driving Parker back. Yeah, again, working well. I don't expect Joyce to uh, cause any problems for Usyk if he is going to be winning this. Nice shots to the body there by Joyce. And Joyce going uh, up top. Oh, lovely hook to the body. Vicious overhand. And again, this is nasty stuff by Joyce. Referee coming in, separating them. Jabs coming in by Joyce. Driving Parker back. Swing and a miss there by uh, Joyce. Saying that that blood uh, splattered across the commentary table. Again, just jabbing away. Output is still there by uh, both guys. Joyce especially. Digs to the body. Parker trying to respond. Hook shot there by Joyce. 
uh, blood pouring down the side of the face now of Parker. Nice little digs. Parker with some great Rocky style shots, said Death Rider. Uh, Lorenzo, hello, bud. I hope you're doing well. R.I.P. Parker said uh, Arsenal Life. Nice, uh, nice flurry of shots there by Parker. Oh, lovely little uppercut there by Joyce, though. Joyce uh, is pretty much unmarked. Moving forward, jabbing away. Nice uh, shot to uh, the body. Joyce still moving forwards. Parker up against the ropes. I feel like it's going to be, uh, it might be this way, right to the end of the fight. Joyce just unloading, getting Parker into the corner. Uh, Parker looking wobbly, throwing in some counters. Oh, that was a lovely shot by Parker. That was a great right hand. Beautiful counter right. Beautiful. And uh, I think we're about to be uh, towards the end of round number nine. There we go. End of the round. I've got it 7-2. Uh, I think there was some good stuff in that last round for Parker, though. Uh, no way this is going to go 12. We're up, well, we're up to 10. We're up to 10. We're up to 10. I mean, yeah, it's a good point. I don't know if um, I don't know if Parker is going to be able to make it. I don't know if that cut, the doctor might come in or something, but there was a lovely uppercut in there. There's some lovely work by Parker. If you gave Parker that round, no complaints. Could be 6-3. Here we go then. Round number 10. Round number 10. A couple of jabs coming in. Uh, they gave that last round to Parker, so they've got Joyce ahead by three. Okay, uh, jabs coming in by uh, Joyce. Parker trying to land something big, but lovely body shot there by Joyce. Joyce jabbing away. We do expect Joyce to be the better in these final rounds. Shot coming in by uh, Parker. Body shots coming in by Parker. Joyce driving Parker back. Little digs into the body. Tony said Parker overrated. Never beat anyone decent. R.I.P. Parker. Uh, come on, Parker. Knock him out. Nice uh, shots coming in there by Joyce. But uh, Parker responding as well. Minute gone in this round. Couple of little digs in there by Joe Joyce. Shot coming in. Uh, little hook shot. A lot of work being done at uh, close range right now. Referee coming in, separating these two. Parker having to just wipe the blood away from his eyes. Yeah, Frank Warren is uh, shouting some stuff at uh, ringside. Uh, Junior, shout out to you. How's the card been? It's been all right. It's been all right. This fight has been uh, really good, though. Yeah, I think both are feeling the pace. Uh, even Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce still uh, unloading, but uh, we're seeing stuff coming out of uh, Parker as well. Parker uh, up against the ropes. Oh, that's a lovely right hand by Parker. Jabs coming in, though, by Joyce. Parker being driven back in the corner. Oh, lovely uh, shot to the body there by Joyce. And again, just digging these shots into the ribs. And uh, referee uh, separating them. Oh, that's a lovely right hand by Joe Joyce. And uh, we're seeing Parker go uh, get driven back. Referee coming in. Separating them again. Scrappy little contest now. Not as clean as what we were seeing before. Quite close this round as well, you know. Parker doubling up with uh, his shots. Gets driven back again. 
Referee coming in, separating them. Joyce coming in, tries to throw a beautiful hook shot. Left hook shot. And again. Wow. Oh, wow. There was around about three or four hook shots there by uh, Parker. Hmm. Another close round, you know. I'm going to give that one to Parker. I'm going to give that one to Parker. 7-3. I think that's fair. That was round 10. We got two more rounds to go. I think we could be going the distance on this, you know. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. How are you scoring it? What are you seeing? 6-4. Joyce. Uh, I gave that round to Parker, said War Room. Parker has been gassed since about round three, said Beast. Uh, I'm a billion, said 5-5. Five, five. It's closer than the Brits think. There are some close rounds in there. Yeah, there are some close rounds. I've got it 7-3, but uh, there are some close rounds. Here we go then. Two more, uh, two rounds to go. Nice shots here by Parker. Ooh, digs to the body there by uh, Joe Joyce. Jabbing away. Driving uh, Parker back. Yeah, Joe Joyce unloading here on Parker. Some good volume. Oh, that was a great right hand. That was a great right hand by Joe Joyce. Oh, and follows it with a big left. Parker is getting smashed in this round. This is great by Joyce. It's amazing that Parker has not buckled. It's amazing. Oh, down goes Paul. Parker's out. He's knocked him out. He's knocked him out. He's gone down. I don't know if he's going to get back up. Nine, ten, and it's caught. It's caught. It's Joe Joyce in round 11. What a beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Knocks him out. Puts him down. Parker couldn't respond. It's gone exactly the way that we thought it would go. If there was going to be a knockout, it was going to be Joe Joyce. And it was going to be in the later stages. That is beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. It's a lovely finish. It's a lovely finish. It's an eye-catching finish. Seeing someone the size of Parker go down, uh, like, go down quite hard in the corner as well. I didn't think he was going to be able to get back up and answer that. But in all fairness to him, he does get back to his feet. But uh, referee by that point was already up to nine. He counts the 10, calls it. And there's going to be disappointment there for uh, Parker. Joe Joyce has done what no other man has been able to do. And that is uh, knock out Joseph Parker who uh, gave uh, a lot of uh, great shots and took a lot of great shots, did himself proud, obviously would have wanted the victory. But Joe Joyce is now the WBO interim heavyweight champion and uh, is going to be a mandatory challenger for Usyk. I mean, the thing is, you know, there's a lot of talk about Fury retiring. There's a lot of talk about Usyk only wants a couple more fights. If you take Fury and you take Usyk out of this division, Joe Joyce is uh, a big player. Wilder, Joyce and Joshua is uh, and maybe Dubois. Look at that, man. Boom. Oh, my God. Goes down heavy and hard. 
You wouldn't want to meet Joyce in a street fight. No. They're saying it's going to take, it's going to need to take someone to beat this guy. I think the truth is that Usyk could beat Joyce. I, I, I think Usyk would get in, get his shots off and get out of there. Joyce is just too predictable, too robotic. Yeah, it's a big performance. Uh, Lorenzo said Parker, his hype stopped when he got beaten by AJ. He was ahead on the scorecards. He was ahead by uh, three, two, and five, apparently. He was ahead on all of them. So all of the cards had uh, Joe Joyce in the uh, lead. So uh, Tyson Fury giving a thumbs up to Joe Joyce. Mm, Joe Joyce was uh, definitely the better. Uh, if you are just joining us, Joe Joyce has knocked out uh, Parker in round 11. Joyce KOs Parker. Usyk doesn't have the power to stop Joyce. No, no, he, he won't stop him. But uh, I expect him to beat him by decision. But he could uh, win on points and we all die by boredom. That's what I'm predicting, yes. Uh, Wilder versus uh, Joyce would be a hell of a fight, said uh, Logan. That would be a hell of a fight. That would be a hell of a fight. Parker gassed out and lost to a better fighter. Uh, Joe, ahead on the cards. Yeah, listen, no shade on Joseph Parker. I really like Joseph Parker. I think he's a really nice guy. Nice guy. I think he's a, a great um, heavyweight. I think that um, this was going to be a close fight. I think that uh, Joseph Parker should can walk around with his head, head high. I, I don't know. I mean, look, he's 30 years old, Joseph Parker. 30 years old. Joe... Uh, Joe Joyce has got a couple of years left. I, I don't know that uh, he's going to be around in like four years or anything. Joe Joyce will have a couple of years left. Usyk's not got long left. Fury's not got long left. There's still chance. There's still a chance for Joseph Parker. By way of knockout. Uh, he's got power and he can take punishment. He is dangerous to anyone, says John. That is true. Retribution said, I won my bets. Uh, 40 profit, 50 off 10. My night just got better. Brilliant. Well done. So at some point, Joe Joyce will fight for the world title. That's a big, that's a big result for him tonight. Uh, I'm just waiting to see if we get some words from Joe Joyce, maybe Parker. Uh, Parker keeps his hands down. He will get hit. Yeah. We're just waiting to hear from uh, Joe Joyce. I suppose there's not much he can say, really. Uh, Days, will you be attending the funeral of Joseph Parker? Yeah, I feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for him. Um, mm, mm, mm. how long did White wait? Two years. Yeah, he waited a long time, didn't he? He did wait a long time. Oh, yeah, damn. He got knocked out in front of his mom. <sighs> David Hayes said, that's a conclusive a beating as you could ever want to see.
Uh, Joe Joyce is in there and we're doing the uh, interview now. So we're going to hear from Joe Joyce. Parker has gone, so uh, we won't be hearing from Parker. The juggernaut. How does it feel to be the first man to stop him? He said uh, a little bit tired, if I'm being honest. He thanks the crowd. It was a tough fight. Credit to Joseph Parker is improved and he continues to improve. He enjoyed the fight. How surprised was you at his chin? I hit him with everything I've got. He said, I hit him with everything. I tried it all. You send a big message. Great work. With that knockout, you send a big message. What's the message? He goes, I'm the juggernaut. <laughs> message received. I'm the juggernaut. It's probably not the best idea to make fun of a heavyweight boxing champion. I take that back. Um, Parker, not world level. I'm the juggernaut. Uh, I just read the Mayweather fight might not be until six or seven. Really? What's on the card? What's on the card? Frank Warren said, uh, credit to Joseph Parker uh, is a warrior, but we have got a new kid on the block. But there we go. Right, I am going to go. Uh, I think we've learned everything we need to learn. Um, a massive thank you to everyone that joined us tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this uh, fight with us. Uh, we are going to be back in just a few hours, <laughs> believe it or not. I feel like I'm saying goodbye for, uh, you know, a while, but actually we are going to be back uh, and we are going to be watching uh, the Mayweather fight. So I want to go off, grab something to eat, uh, and then we will be back for that. Um, is Frank Warren going to say anything about when we might get Usyk fight? Oh, no, they're just putting over, like, how amazing the night has been. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we'll find out when that uh, fight will be. But um, as you said, it could be as long as two years away, unfortunately. So uh, we'll have to see. It might. In fact, it might never even happen because I think Usyk said he wants to fight like Joshua Canelo and then he wants to have a fight in the Ukraine. And that's it. I read that the other day. Three fights left for Usyk. And um, I don't know, maybe that fight in the Ukraine will be against... Uh, Joe Joyce, who knows? But um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Right, I am off. Awesome. Thanks a lot for watching. Really appreciate the support. And uh, I'll see some of you in a bit for the Mayweather fight. Bye for now.